and a great welcome. So, in this particular session, as you can see flashing on your screens, we are going to start a chapter that happens to be internal reconstruction. Now, internal reconstruction is a pretty formidable chapter, no doubt about that, but not a very tough one at the same time. It's pretty easy in comparison to the earlier ones. So, as far as internal reconstruction is concerned, what exactly internal reconstruction is and why the companies actually go for internal reconstruction and how internal reconstruction scheme is implemented, adopted and implemented, what benefits it could actually face to the enterprise or the companies. So, these are the questions we would like to unfold uh, all the answers to these what we call mysteries uh, in a short while no doubt about that but first of all as usual we need to have a firm grounding over the conceptuality of internal reconstruction related to this particular chapter so in order to comprehend all the things which i just mentioned a moment ago and in order to seek what we call answers to those questions first of all just have a look over here and just listen to me it's a simply rough work right now you need to require to actually uh uh, write anything. I presume that this is the balance sheet of a particular company. This is the balance sheet of a particular company and just to make the point a little bit more simple, I am preparing it in T format, correct? Let us say this is the balance sheet of a particular company and in the balance sheet there are some items like let us say plant and machinery or in fact property plant and equipment like plant machinery, land building etc and value written in the outer column is let us say 10 lakh or let us say 100 lakhs correct 100 lakh is the value however in bracket it is written market value is just about 90 lakhs correct then besides that there are some non-current assets the, these are non-current assets and besides that there are some current assets like what we call the stock in uh, as we call them inventories nowadays, trade receivable, daters, etc., to the tune of let us say 200 lakhs. Correct? And besides that, there are some items like profit and loss account debit balance. Remember one thing nowadays, profit and loss account debit balance is not written towards the asset side, rather, it is written under the heading reserve and surplus. And moreover, nowadays, we prepare balance sheet in what we call vertical format. This is just to make the point a little bit more clear. I'm preparing the balance sheet in this fashion. Correct? Prof there is a profit or loss account debit balance, let us say, to the extent of 10 lakh. Similarly, there are some items, let us say, preliminary expenses to the extent of 5 lakh. There are some underwriting commission expenses. Underwriting commission expenses to the extent of, let us say, uh, 4 lakh. And similarly, there are some expenses in the form of discount on debentures. Discount on debentures to the extent of 1 lakh. Correct? We need not require to total up the balance sheet. This is just to actually make the point a little bit more clear. Correct? And similarly, towards the liability side, let us say there, there are equity share capital. And we have equity share capital, let us say, we have 10 lakh shares. 10 lakh shares of rupees 10 each total 100 lakhs then we have let us say 10 percent preference share capital and we presume that 10 percent preference share capital is equal to 20 lakhs or at the rate of 10 each let us say it is equal to 200 lakhs and then there are some liabilities and then there are some liabilities, let us say, to the extent of 20 lakhs. This is the balance sheet of a particular concern. And we further presume that this particular entity is operating since last 14, 15 years. Correct? Let us say current year is its 15th year of operation. Now, if anyone is going to look at this, at the position of this particular company, Suppose if I have got a bit of idea regarding accounting and if I'm going to have a look over the what we call position of this particular company, I'm going to derive a very bad image regarding this particular company. I'm not going to have very fine views regarding the performance of the company. In fact, in, in fact, because I have got a bit of knowledge, so I can conclude and infer out of this that the position of the company is extremely feeble, extremely weak and company is virtually passing through a phase of financial crisis. If I happen to be a potential investor, 
quite obviously the moment I am going to have a look over the over the what we call position of this particular company quite obviously I am not going to invest into this particular concern because of the reasons as I just told you similarly if I happen to be a financial institution quite obviously the position of this company as I told you is very weak and being a financial institution I would refrain myself I will stop myself from lending any what we call loan to this particular company are you getting my point or not similarly if I happen to be let us say any lender likewise I am not going to provide any loan to this particular company so all in all what I want to say is that when we are going to have a look over this particular company we all are deriving a very bad image correct regarding the affairs of the company but the question is why we are deriving a bad image regarding the performance of this particular company you must have seen that in the balance sheet especially towards the asset side there are some items which as a rule should not appear which as a rule should not appear for example there is profit and loss account there is preliminary expenses there are underwriting commission and there are discount on issue of debentures profit and loss account is accumulated loss and all these expenses as you know and you have been calling them as miscellaneous expenditure fictitious assets isn't it or not or expenditures yet to be written off that means these are such expenses which logically should be written off correct at least within a period of 10 years and I've already told you this particular company is operating since last what we call 14 15 years and especially if you are in the business since a long period of time and in spite of that if such items are featuring in your balance sheet quite obviously these are sending a message to the various parties whosoever is having interest in your concern that you are not having the required amount of profit to write off what we call these items correct I will simply call them in fact all these items accumulated losses and fictitious items or valueless items can be collaborated as valueless items these are valueless items these are not assets they appear towards the asset side simply because they are having the debit balances and why they are having the debit balances because company is not earning sufficient amount of profit to write them off so that is the reason why i'm telling you the moment we are going to have a look over the affairs of this particular company we will conclude that as i told you earlier that this particular company is not earning sufficient amount of profit number one number two this company is passing through a phase of virtual financial crisis and number three very drastic conclusion that would this company survive in long in long period or not so these are the questions which will get tossed up before us and as i told you the reason behind is that the existence of such items not only this not only this if we look closely when i wrote property plant and equipment we have written in the outer column 100 lakhs but their actual market value is 90 lakh logically no company should actually write its asset at a value higher than the market value in its balance sheet but this company is exactly doing that that means it is violating the normal principle of recording an item the reason being is that it means if i will look into the balance sheet i will immediately conclude that this company is not having the required amount of profits to write off what we call 10 lakh excess amount which we have written over here we have shown property plant and equipment at 100 lakh and its market value is just 90 lakh. So, again we may say that this is an overvalued item. This is an overvalued item. So, whensoever if you are going to have a look over the concern, especially the balance sheet of a concern and if you find what we call there are lots of overvalued items and there are lots of what we call valueless items appearing in the balance sheet quite obviously you will conclude on similar lines which i have already told you so many times now correct that means the overvalued items and valueless items simply reflects three important points one the position of the company is virtually in a mess that means this company is not functioning smoothly. Number one. Number two, company is passing through a phase of financial crisis. And number three, very important. This company is not earning required amount of profits. So if we will combine all scenario of these questions, we will conclude one thing. That survival of this company looks very questionable. And that is the reason if you happen to be a potential investor, if you happen to be a lending institute, 
quite obviously you will not show any interest in the functioning of this particular company as a potential investor you will never ever invest into this particular company similarly if, as i told earlier if you happen to be a financial institution you are not going to actually give them any loan so that is the reason survival of this company would become questionable now we we are analyzing the situation of this particular company after having a look over the what we call uh, over the items of this particular company which are presented below which are presented here now let, let us presume for a while if you are the director of this particular company quite obviously you are the director of a company you are a very qualified person there is no question regarding the intellectuality and there is no question regarding the what we call understandability so quite obviously what we are thinking even the director of this company might be in the know even directors know that if they are going to publish the balance sheet in the leading newspapers correct with such items quite obviously the scenario will be very drastic because they too can visualize that anyone who, are, who is going to have a look over the what we call affair, affairs of this particular company he will conclude that company is in a virtual financial mess and no financial institution would like to lend any money no potential investor would like to invest his money into our company correct so even directors also know so because directors are aware of all these particular things so more often than not when a company actually accumulates over a long period of time lots of overvalued items and lots of valueless items in its balance sheet then scenario becomes very drastic and very horrendous so in order to overcome such a scenario more often than not company go for a scheme of internal reconstruction a scheme of internal reconstruction so what is the scheme of internal reconstruction we will see later on that basic objective of scheme of internal reconstruction is to somehow somehow clear out all the overvalued portions of the asset for example in this case overvalued portion is 10 lakh difference of 90 and 100 lakh so internal reconstruction scheme is basically adopted by the enterprises in order to somehow actually clear off as i told you overvalued portion and of course to write off all the valueless items like profit and loss account debit balance preliminary expenses underwriting commission and discount on debenture that is the basically theme of internal reconstruction now the next question quite obviously is how we achieve this particular objective because right now the scenario of this particular company looks very very horrendous so somehow we want to give it a very good face at least a face saving picture so in order to give it a face saving picture we will go for scheme of internal reconstruction under the scheme of internal reconstruction we would try to somehow wipe out all these items from the balance sheet and we will try to wipe out all the overvalued portions so this is the theme of internal reconstruction scheme now the next question as i told you how this scheme and objective and aspirations are achieved see here in order to adopt and implement the scheme of internal reconstruction the directors are going to directors are going to make a request to all the parties who have invested into their concern for example who are the investors basically the equity shareholder preference shareholder there might be debentures debenture holders because they provide actually sort of loan to us correct there might be financial institutions so company will request all the parties whosoever have invested into the concern and will try to actually make a request to them that please wave a part we will use this word so often in this particular chapter wave wave means to repeat to wave a part of wave means suppose suppose if i have given you a loan of rupees 10 lakh suppose if i have given you a loan of rupees 10 lakh for a period of three years after three years you tell me sir please wave off leave off leave wave off means to leave out please wave off one lakh and we will pay you only nine lakh i accept it's okay you pay me nine lakh i will wave one lakh i hope you got the point of wave correct so wave means to remit to wave these are the words which we are going to use so often during the entire length and breadth of this particular chapter so under the scheme of internal reconstruction directors are going to actually somehow persuade all the parties whosoever has invested into their concern to waive a part of their contribution we will ask the various parties to kindly waive 
to kindly remit a part of their contribution. For example, let us say there are equity shareholders who have provided us a loan, provided us contribution of 100 lakhs. So we will ask the equity shareholder, let us say, to waive 10 lakh. Correct? That means we are telling the equity shareholders that we will pay you only 90 lakhs. So that means we are asking a waivement of 10 lakh. Correct? So in this way, company will ask the different parties to waive a part of their contribution and whatever amount these parties will waive, correct? So that will become a sort of saving for the company because if I have taken a loan from somebody, let us say worth rupees 100 lakh and that party has waived 10 lakh, that means I am supposed to pay him only 90 lakhs. So somehow that means I have saved amount 10 lakh. Similarly, let us say we have persuaded the preference shareholders to waive a part of their amount, let us say 20 lakh. So whatever amount is waived, that is a sort of savings for the company or you can in simple words say that that is a sort of gain for the company. Is it clear to you? Let us say for a while, the, we persuaded these two parties to waive 30 lakhs rupees. So whatever amount is waived by the by the contributory, contributories, contributories means equity shareholders, preference shareholders, etc., even debenture holders, even lenders. So whatever amount is waived off, that will be considered as a gain from the perspective of the company. Then this gain will be transferred to an account that is known as reconstruction account. We will use these two words, waive, remit and reconstruction and reconstruction account is also known as capital reduction account. So whatever amount company will save from the various parties that will be transferred to reconstruction account or capital reduction account and then whatever amount will get accumulated in the reconstruction and capital reduction account, that amount will be used in writing off all the valueless items and of course in in writing of overvalued portions of overvalued items. So this is a bird's eye view of what we call a scheme of internal reconstruction. Now the next question is, I told you, in order to adopt the scheme of internal reconstruction, directors of the company are going to actually, first of all, hold a meeting with the various parties. Directors are going to hold a meeting with the <coughs> Parties. When I say parties, here I mean all those parties who might have contributed to the financing of this particular concern. For example, these parties could be equity shareholder, these parties could be preference shareholders, these parties could be deventure holders, correct? Now, director will, as I told you a moment ago, director will ask these parties to waive or remit a part of their contribution. For example, let us presume for a while, let us say there are, there are 1 lakh shareholders, just forget about the previous case now, correct? Let us say there are 1 lakh shareholders, 1 lakh equity shares of this particular company, of a particular company, let us say X Limited. 1 lakh equity shares of rupees 10 each. So total amount received by the company through the equity shares is equal to 10 lakh. Now when directors are going to hold a meeting with the equity shareholder, of course in connection with the scheme of internal reconstruction where our intention is to somehow persuade the party to waive a part of their contribution or to remit a part of their contribution. Correct? So that is why we are holding a meeting with the various parties because we want to get some discount, some waivement, some remit. Is it clear to you or not? So directors are going to hold a meeting with the equity shareholder. In the meeting equity shareholders, let us say, uh, directors of the company tell to the equity shareholder that we are very thankful to you that you have purchased our 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each and no doubt you have contributed to us 10 lakh rupees. But because we are right now in a financial crunch and our position is not very good and we are passing through a phase of financial crisis and we are not earning sufficient amount of profits. So today we are holding a meeting with you with the intention that we want to get your cooperation. Now the equity shareholder says, sir, what sort of contribution you want from us? So directors say that we would like you to understand that you presume directors are telling to the equity shareholder who have purchased one, who have subscribed to one lakh shares of 10 each, correct? So directors are telling to the equity shareholder that you presume as if you haven't paid us at the rate of rupees 10. 
you presume you have paid us at the rate of rupees 3 only that mean directors of the company are trying to tell to the equity shareholders that you forget that you have paid 10 lakh directors are trying to tell indirectly to the equity shareholder that you presume as if you have paid us only 3 lakh and not 10 lakh indirectly directors are telling to the equity shareholder you forget 7 lakh it actually equity shareholder have subscribed 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each but directors are trying to tell them that now you presume as if that you have purchased 1 lakh share at the rate of rupees 3 suppose you are one of the shareholder and you have purchased 1000 share of this particular company of course one share is of rupees 10 and let us say you have already paid 10,000 rupees so what directors are trying to tell it tell you that you forget that you have paid us what we call 10,000 Directors are trying to tell you that you presume as if you have paid only 3,000 and not 10,000. That means directors are trying to tell you that you kindly waive 7,000 rupees or forget 7,000 rupees. Now the next big question is, quite obviously you would be very keen to know, would any sane person worth his salt is going to accept such a great amount of injustice? When directors of the company are telling to the equity shareholder, you forget 10 lakh and presume you have paid us only 3 lakh, no sane person, no person worth his salt is going to accept this sort of injustice. Would any? Quite obviously, no one is going to accept. Whether equity shareholders are going to accept it or not, that's a different issue. I will come to that in a short while. Don't worry about that. But just for a while, just for a while, think that equity shareholder did not show any protest. So then company will pass an entry, equity share capital and company will write in bracket old because this is company's old equity share capital. Two, equity share capital, new. Now this will become new equity share capital. And presuming that equity shareholder did not show any request, uh, it did not show any protest, correct? So this amount will be transferred to reconstruction account because this will be considered as a gain to the company because earlier company was supposed to pay to the shareholder 7 lakh and now company is supposed to pay them 3 lakh. So this amount which company will get waived off from the equity shareholder, this amount is known as waived. We will presume that equity shareholder has agreed to waive 7 lakh rupees out of their contribution of 10, 7 lakh. So this uh, out of their contribution of 10 lakh, they have waived 7 lakh and this amount will be transferred to an account that is known as reconstruction account and it is also known as capital reduction account. Correct? Whether equity shareholder are going to accept or not, I will come, that, come to that particular point, don't worry. But I am presuming for a while that equity shareholder uh, have agreed to it. Similarly, the Directors of the company will ask the preference shareholder. Let us say this company is having, X Limited is having 10% preference share capital and presume for a while that there are only 1000 share of rupees 100 each. That is equal to 1 lakh. And similarly, director asks the preference shareholders that now we are converting your share of 1000 into 100 into 1000 share of 80 only. That means directors of the company are trying to tell to the preference shareholder that you presume that you haven't subscribed 1000 share at the rate of 100. You now presume that you have subscribed 1000 share only at the rate of 80. That means you haven't paid us 1 lakh. Rather you presume that you have paid us only 80 lakh. So, in this case, the directors of the company will save how much? 1,000 into 20, that is equal to 20,000. And this amount will be transferred to reconstruction account, as I told you. This, this capital will be debited and 10% preference share capital new. This will be considered as new preference share capital. So that, that is the point. Similarly, company may actually ask the debenture holder to waive a part of their contribution. I have already told you. Now, whatever amount is... Whatever amount is waived off, that amount will be transferred to an account known as reconstruction account or capital reduction account. Now, whatever amount which will get accumulated in the reconstruction account, then we will use this item in writing of valueless item, VLI, valueless item, and overvalued portions, 
overvalued portion and then we will be able to clear off what we call our balance sheet from such items which are straining the image of the company. Is it clear to you or not? Now I come back to the question which you would like to know answer to. When I told you that there are 1 lakh shareholders of this particular company and they have subscribed 1 lakh share and they have paid 10 lakh, that means company has received 10 lakh from the equity shareholders. Now when the company will tell to the equity shareholders that we are converting your share of 10 into 3, that means we are trying to tell to the equity shareholder that you forget that you have paid us 10 lakh, you presume now you have paid us only 3 lakh, correct? and you forget directly or indirectly out of 10 lakh, 7 lakh rupees you forget. Now you presume that you have paid us only 3 lakh. And I told you that if two person in public life are going to talk in such a manner immediately from one side police and from the other side ambulance will come. If Mr. A has given a loan of 10 lakh to Mr. B and Mr. B let us say tells to Mr. A that you forget 7 lakh. So a fight will definitely break and that is the reason why these two things will be invited. So here the question is, will equity shareholder will accept such a proposition from the directors or not? The big issue and the big question is this. I have already told you, if I have given you a loan of rupees 10 lakh and you will tell me forget 7 lakh, would I agree to it? Definitely no sane person in human life are going to accept such injustice. No person, as I told earlier, worth his salt, correct, is going to what we call accept this proposition. But you will be amazed to see that equity shareholder will accept this proposition. Now, I will prove that how they are going to ex accept this proposition. But you will be surprised to see to it that in spite of such a great amount of injustice, equity shareholders will have to accept. In fact, they will have no room even to protest. They cannot show any dissent. They cannot any. They cannot do any protest. They cannot what we call raise their voice against this proposition. Now I will tell you the reason why. Suppose equity shareholder. Let us say when the meeting was held and the, and in the meeting the director told the equity shareholder, "Well, we are going to do. We are convert your share of ten into three, and you forget per share seven rupees." The equity shareholder will feel inside of their hurt very bad about it, but they have no alternative. Why? Because if they are going to, let us say, raise their voice and they start protesting, no, 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 we are not going to accept this proposition, then what will happen? If equity shareholder will not agree, then what will happen? The scheme of internal reconstruction cannot be passed. Now, if internal if internal reconstruction scheme cannot be passed, then you can visualize the scenario, future scenario of this particular company when I told about the scenario. If a scheme of internal reconstruction cannot be adopted, then sooner or later, after some time, this company will get liquidated. This company is surely going to get liquidated. Are you getting my point or not? If the scheme of internal reconstruction cannot be adopted and implemented, then what will happen? This company sooner or later will get liquidated. And if the company will get liquidated, because when a company or concern gets liquidated, then after paying off all other parties, whatever is left, that is paid to the equity shareholder. And 99, you leave alone. There are more than 100% chances that if the company will get liquidated, equity shareholder will not get any amount any penny. So that is the reason equity shareholder here, here have no alternative. They have no choice, no discretion because they know that if they are going to protest, this company is going to get liquidated and if the company will get liquidated, they will lose entire 10 lakh rupees. However, if they are not going to protest and if they agree to this proposition, then perhaps they will live in the hope that in future the prospects of the company would improve and they will at least get some recovery of their amount. 
So I hope you got the point because so often in the question you will see that equity shareholder a share of rupees 10 is converted into 1. So at that time you may wonder actually why the hell in the world equity shareholder are agreeing to this proposition. In fact that is the reason actually why equity shareholder will have to agree because they do not have any what we call choice, no discretion and in fact no alternative. Is it clear to you or not? So, in case of equity shareholder, that means when a company implements the scheme of internal reconstruction, generally no problem arises from the side of equity shareholders, from the side of equity shareholder, because equity shareholder do not have any choice. And to be very honest with you, when extraordinary general meeting is conducted for the purpose of its, for the purpose of implementation of internal reconstruction scheme in practical life even equity shareholder do not attend that particular meeting to be very honest with you because they know that they don't have any say they don't have any choice as i told you so there is no point in attending the meeting let's go ahead with whatever directors want to actually do now coming over to preference shareholder it is easier to get the cooperation of the equity shareholder because equity shareholder are not in a position to protest. But same thing is not true in respect of preference shareholder. Because preference shareholder know that even if this particular company will get liquidated, more or less they stand on a safer ground. Correct? So chances are still bright that they will get what we call recovery of their amount even if the company will get liquidated because their number is prior to the equity shareholder. So if preference shareholder do not have that sort of scare or fear that if the company will get liquidated, we will lose our amount. So that is the reason in order to seek the cooperation, in order to persuade the preference shareholder, company tries to actually attract them, company tries to lure them. Have you heard this word lure? Lure means to attract somebody, to tempt somebody correct for example as you must have seen the hunters actually when they go for hunting in in order to actually invite their target this what we call throw you can say bats or something or some eatables to lure the what we call that particular animal to come over to that particular point so similarly here in order to lure in order to attract the preference shareholder we give them a sort of greed. The greed is that we tell to the preference shareholder right now, let us say you are 10% preference shareholder. So company will tell we will converting, we will convert your share from 100 to 80. But you don't worry, we will increase your rate of dividend, let us say from 10% to 15%. So that is generally what we call done in practical life in order to what we call seek the cooperation of the preference shareholder. We lure them by increasing their rate of dividend so that they do not show any protest, correct? Similarly, with respect to deventure holder, in order to get their cooperation, what we do? We simply, what we call, put up a bait, B-A-I-T. We put up a bait, we put up a sort of incentive before them that we will increase your rate of interest from so-and-so to so-and-so, and please actually waive a part of their contribution. So whatever part then, as I have told you now several times, so whatever part is waived off, that is a sort of gain that is credited to reconstruction account. Then whatever amount gets accumulated in the reconstruction account, after that, we will then start what we call clearing off all the overvalued portion and valueless items. So this is all about a scheme of internal reconstruction. Is it clear to you or not? I hope you got a fair idea of internal reconstruction scheme. Now, and you can write some note along with me before we start attempting the practical part. Let me first wipe it out. So you pull out your pen, pencils, etc., whatever it is, and you start writing along with me. I've already told you regarding the scheme of internal reconstruction. So now we need to have a bit of what we call idea regarding the scheme of internal reconstruction through notes. Correct? It is always better to write a brief idea so that later on, whensoever you do any sort of revision, <coughs> you do not what we call have any sort of problem. Now, as far as scheme of internal reconstruction is concerned, I've already told you that presence of items like overvalued items, and what we call valueless items, they are they work against the image of the company. So we start with this point. 
presence of an item presence presence of items in the balance sheet presence of item in the balance sheet such as such as debit balance or profit and loss account or PNL debit balance deferred expenditure deferred expenditure means such expenses or expenditure which are yet to be written off deferred expenditures like preliminary expenses preliminary expenses underwriting commission underwriting commission discount on shares discount on shares and debentures any suspense account like advertisement suspense account any suspense account any suspense account etc so presence of items in the balance sheet such as profit and loss account debit balance and all these items correct works as i as i already told you works against works against the image of the company works against the image of the company image of the company So the presence of such items definitely works against the image of the company and indicates and indicates what? It indicates that company is passing through a phase of financial crisis and indicates that entity is entity is passing through a phase of financial crisis passing through a phase of financial crisis to a phase of financial crisis and not earning not earning sufficient profits so these are the two key indicators these are the two key what we call factors which presence of these items reflects I have already told you, on account of reformant reasons, <clears throat> no potential investor is going to actually invest into our company. Financial institutions are not going to lend any money and this will bring horrendous consequences. So right then, on account of, on account of, aforementioned, aforementioned on account of aforementioned reasons reasons no potential investor no potential investor no potential investor would 
लाइक टू इन्वेस्ट लाइक टू इन्वेस्ट इन टू द सेट कंसर्न सेट कंसर्न मीन्स द कंपनी विच इज राइट नाउ इज नॉट हैविंग सफिशियंट अमाउंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट इन्वेस्ट इन टू द सेट कंसर्न कंसर्न हेयर मीन्स कंपनी और एंटरप्राइज कंसर्न and similarly and similarly lenders and financial institution and financial institutions to would refrain themselves would refrain themselves means to stop themselves to to would refrain r e f r a i n refrain themselves from extending any loan extending any loan to the set concern to the set concern so in the capital market when potential investors and financial institution feel very bad about the what we call position of a particular company to be very honest with you the survival of the company becomes extremely questionable so that is the reason on account of on account of such consequences on account of such consequences on account of such consequences uh the functioning of the company the functioning of the company shall become extremely cumbersome troublesome extremely extremely cumbersome c u m b e r cumbersome and as i told you chances of survival of the company chances of survival of the company to t double o to shall become bleak shall become bleak bleak means shall become bleak b l e a k actually bleak basically means almost like fog when we cannot see something very clearly here bleak means very less very slim so that is the reason as such as such it becomes so therefore it becomes imperative imperative means utmost necessity necessity as such it becomes imperative as such it becomes imperative correct to write off to write off all the to write off at the earliest at the earliest all the 
overvalued portions, overvalued portions. Now this overvalued portion is a pretty long word. Henceforth, I will simply use OVP, overvalued portions and valueless items. Valueless items, when, uh, when we say it means accumulated losses and all deferred expenditure. Valueless items. Again, this valueless item is a pretty long word, so I'm going to use the short form VLI, correct? So it becomes imperative for us to write off, as I told you earlier, to clear off what we call balance sheet from what we call such items. So a scheme which we adopt to do so is known as scheme of internal reconstruction. So here we write the scheme, the scheme that is adopted, the scheme that is adopted to to write off to write off all such items is known as a scheme of internal reconstruction is known as a scheme of internal reconstruction IR internal reconstruction correct so in brief we may say that internal reconstruction scheme is basically adopted to achieve two important objectives as i've already told you to somehow clear out what we call overvalued portion and of course valueless items in brief in brief one may conclude one may conclude that a scheme of internal reconstruction, a scheme of internal reconstruction is adopted to a write off all the overvalued portions OVP overvalued portions and B to write off all valueless items valueless item means Profit and loss account, debit balance, and all deferred expenditure like preliminary expenses, underwriting commission, discount on issue of shares, or and any suspense account. Is it clear to you? Now, I also told you how we have to adopt the scheme of internal reconstruction. So, under the scheme of internal reconstruction, I have already told you various parties such as equity shareholders, debenture holders, preference shareholder, and if the need arises, even we try to persuade the creditors, correct, to waive a part of their contribution. So that is exactly what we are going to write next. Under the scheme of, under the scheme comma, various parties, various parties, such as such as equity shareholders equity shareholders preference shareholders Deventure holders, deventure holders, lenders, lenders, 
etc. are requested are requested to waive to waive W A I V E or remit R E M I T. Remit means to rub out, correct? To remit a part of their contribution. A part of their contribution. A part of their contribution. I have already told you amount which is waived by these party will be transferred to an account known as internal reconstruction account or what we call capital reduction account. Amount so waived, amount so waived is credited. is credited to a newly opened account newly opened account titled as titled as now this newly opened account is titled as reconstruction account reconstruction account and in short form I will write it R oblique C reconstruction account or capital reduction account capital reduction account so this is all about and I have already told you now whatever amount which will ultimately gets accumulated in the reconstruction or capital reduction account then we will utilize that in writing off all the overvalued items. This is the last point which I am going to present. Amount accumulated amount accumulated in amount accumulated in reconstruction account or capital reduction account is utilized is then utilized in writing off in writing off all the overvalued portions and valueless items. Now what happened let us say in my reconstruction account total accumulated balance is 1 lakh and let us say I have written overvalued portions to the extent of 60,000 and let us say valueless items to the extent of 30,000. So some balance will be left in this particular account. If some balance will be left, that balance will be transferred to capital reserve account because it is considered as a capital reserve. Capital profit it is considered. Any profit which a concern actually receives without selling its product or services is nothing but capital profits. So this time the profit which company is having Correct, not because of sale of the products or sale of the services. That is why it is known as capital profit and it is transferred to capital reserve. Any balance left, any balance left in the internal, re in the reconstruction account after writing off After writing off overvalued portions and valueless items is transferred to 
is transferred to is transferred to as I told you capital reserve account is transferred to capital reserve account. Correct. So this is all about a scheme of internal reconstruction. So I have given you a bird's eye view with respect to what we call scheme of internal reconstruction. In the next session when we are going to meet, obviously we will take up practicals. And as usual, we are going to do lots of practicals in this particular chapter. So shall meet you in the next session with something obviously new. Hello, it's a pretty lovely good evening once again from here and a great welcome. So in the last session, we have had a lot of discussion with respect to what we call internal reconstruction. And by now you are at least having an idea what exactly the internal reconstruction scheme is, why company actually adopts the scheme of internal reconstruction, how it is adopted and what we are supposed to do in it. So after having what we call answers to such question, now we are in a position to attempt some questions. So let's come over to the practical portion. Now open down your notes, which we have, which have been supplied by us and just have a look over the first section. As you know, each, every chapter is divided into different sections. And uh, in this case, we have section one. First of all, under section one, we are picking up 1.1. 1 .1. First question of section one. Now what is given in this particular question? Just have a look. First of all, following is the balance sheet of Struggling Limited as at 31st of 3, 2022. The name of the company itself is Struggling Limited. Company is struggling. And this is the balance sheet which is given to you. Equity and liability under the equity and liability. First of all, shareholders fund, wherein we write two things, share capital and reserve and surplus. As far as share capital of this particular company is concerned, there are 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each, uh, that is 10 lakh. And then we have 10% 5,000 preference shares, correct? And that is equal to 5 lakh, 5,000 shares of 100 each. As far as preference shares are concerned, equity shares are 1 lakh shares of 10 each. Then under reserve and surplus, we have got profit and loss account, but negative balance. Now, this is an accumulated loss, correct? Besides that, I have written here general reserve and security premium, but amount is not there. This is just to acquaint you with the format of the balance sheet. Then under the second heading, we write what we call non-current liability. Under non-current liability, generally we write under the subheading long-term borrowings, defer tax liability, other long-term liability and long-term provisions, but no such items are given in the question. And then current liability trade payables are given to you 6 lakhs. As far as liability side is concerned, only four items are given, equity share capital, preference share capital, profit or loss account, debit balance. And besides that, we have got in this particular case, trade payable. Coming over to the asset side, we have in this particular case, non-current asset, as you can see. Under the non-current asset, first of all, we have property, plant and equipment. And even under property, plant and equipment, we have tangible fixed asset in the form of freehold land. And then we have got plant and machinery and furniture. Besides under non-current asset, we write property, plant and equipment, then non-current investment, then deferred tax assets, and then long-term loans and other non-current assets. But in this case, there are no such items. It is just to, as I told you, acquaint uh, you with the format of the balance sheet. Then current assets, under the heading of current asset, we generally write current investment, but no current investment in this particular question. Only stock is there, daters is there, and cash at bank. Besides, we also write short-term loans and other uh, current assets. So as far as asset sites are concerned, there are no valueless assets. However, profit and loss account is given over here. Correct. So while doing the questions on internal reconstruction, first of all, it is very important for you to notice the accumulated losses and valueless items. Correct. Now further, it is given in the question that equity share to be reduced to rupees 4 per share. As you can see, equity share is of rupees 10 each but it has been reduced two rupees it has been reduced two rupees four it means it is reduced by six it is very important to note that it is reduced to four that means equity shares are being reduced by rupees six so six per share is the gain for the company and 10 percent preference share capital 10 percent preference share capital is reduced to 80 per share but at the same time the rate of dividend has been increased to 12 percent i told you 
and we talked a lot actually about it in the last session that in order to seek the cooperation of the preference shareholder generally we put up a bait before them in the form of higher rate of interest higher rate of dividend sorry so we have reduced their share from 100 to 80 but at the same time we have increased their rate of dividend from 10 percent to 12 percent trade claims trade payables claim are also reduced by one third in this question trade creditors claim are also reduced by one third so if the need arises company may ask even the trade creditors to waive a part of their portion so in this case trade creditors claim reduced by one third by one third further plant and machinery is to be written down to 5 lakh now it is very important to note that plant and machinery in the question is given to you at 7 lakh and now it is given in the question that plant and machinery is to be written down to 5 lakh it means plant and machinery is reflected in the balance sheet at a value which is higher than what actual value is so their actual value is 5 lakh it is written in the balance sheet at 5 lakh so we have to reduce the what we call plant and machinery by what we call 2 lakhs correct and then stock is to be revalued at 50,000. Likewise, stock in the balance sheet, as you can see, is 1,50,000. But it is reduced 2 rupees. It is to be revalued at 50,000. That means the value of the stock is just 50,000. So we have to bring it down from what we call 150 to 50,000. That means by 1 lakh. Provision for bad and doubtful debts to the extent of 20,000 to be created. So... As you can see, in this question, daters are 50,000. So we might be suspecting that 20,000 daters might not pay to us. So that's the reason that why we need to create a provision. Freehold land to be revalued at 7 lakh. It is also important to note that your freehold land earlier in the balance sheet is 5 lakh. But now its value is estimated at rupees 7 lakh. That means value of freehold land has gone up by rupees 2 lakh. Is it clear to you? Because in the balance sheet it is given at rupees 5 lakh and now it is estimated at 7 lakh. Two, three things are very important when you solve the questions on internal reconstruction. What are those two, three things? One, you need to actually note down are there any valueless item. When I say valueless item, it means I am talking about profit and loss account and I am talking about all the deferred expenditure. Deferred expenditure like preliminary expenses, underwriting, commission, discount on issue of share. So in this question, there is profit and loss account. Besides, then you have to note down the directions of the question. What I mean by directions of the question? Directions of the question, especially with respect to what we call overvalued portion. For example, in this question, direction is related to plant and machinery that we have to bring it down to the down to rupees 5 lakh similarly stock is revalued at rupees 50000 so its value has to be brought down to 50000 and similarly provision for doubtful debts need to be created at the same time freehold land need to be what we call appreciated so we have to first of all take into account the directions of the question if there are any gains in the direction you must also note them and of course, you also note what items you have to write off as per the directions. Correct? Now, regarding valueless item, whether information is given or not, you have to write off all the valueless item. Is it clear to you or not? That is how you have to solve the question. I will let you know. I will solve this question because this is the first question. So, keep the question in front of you now. Actually, towards the liability side, we have got 1 lakh equity share, just to remind you, and 10% preference share, 5,000 shares of 100 each. There is profit and loss account debit balance, and then we have trade payables. Besides that, as far as asset side is concerned, free old land is 5 lakh, plant and machinery 7 lakh, furniture is 1 lakh, then a stock, daters and cash at bank. And we have gone through the what we call directions of the question. So, past journal entry to give arrangement and also prepare the reconstruction account. This is the what we call demand of the question. So, I will solve this question for you because this is the first question and obviously I would love to actually solve this question and you too would love to see this solution. Correct. So, how to actually do the solution that is also very important. In fact, in the last session we had a bit of idea. I am keeping the question sheet in front of me so that Every time I need to require to flip through up and down and that actually distracts the flow of the class. So keep the question before you also. Correct. Now, in order to solve the question, first thing is that, of course, we have to pass the journal entries in this case. So journal entries, journal entries. This is the first thing which we need to do. 
in order to pass the journal entry my first target is to go through to the question and in the first direction in the additional information it is given that equity share to be reduced two rupees four per share so my entry will be equity share capital account debit this is my first entry for reduction in equity share capital we are passing this particular entry because we have reduced the equity share capital for reduction in equity share capital reduction in equity share capital and your entry will be equity share capital look into the balance sheet in the balance sheet, you can see equity share capital is given as 1 lakh, 1 lakh share of rupees 10 each. This is your old equity share capital and in the balance sheet, equity share capital is written under cap liability side. So that means equity share capital generally has what we call credit balance, but now I am debiting it. That means I am cancelling my existing equity share capital, correct? So you need not require to write old or new. You can simply debit equity share capital that when your existing equity share capital which is existing in the balance sheet is now cancelled. Why it is cancelled? Because now you have reduced the equity share capital from 10 to 4. That means your new equity share capital, you need not require to write actually word old or new. You simply write two equity share capital and your new equity share capital is 1 lakh into 4. Because your equity share capital is reduced to rupees 4, 2 rupees 4. So this is your, what we call new equity share capital 4 lakh. And then you have to take into account by how much equity share capital has come down. That is the gain for the company. I told you that gain is transferred to an account that is known as reconstruction account. I will write here reconstruction account. So equity share capital has come down by 6. In fact, company has saved 6 lakh, you can say so. Because now company need not require to pay to the equity shareholder 10 lakh, rather only 4 lakh. So that is why it is considered as a sort of gain. But actually it is not a gain. We may say that now directors of the company have, have saved actually 6 lakh rupee and those 6 lakh rupee is transfer, have been now transferred to reconstruction account. You can also write capital reduction account. Then in the second point it is given that 10 percent preference share capital if you look into the question has been reduced to rupees 80 now preference share capital in the balance sheet is rupees 100 if you look into the balance sheet in the balance sheet it is written 10 percent 5000 shares of 100 each so our next entry our next entry will be with respect to for reduction in preference share capital for reduction in for reduction in preference share capital now we will reduce the preference share capital. But we reduce the preference share capital by putting up a bait before them. We have now increased their rate of dividend from existing 10% to actually 12%. So first of all, we will debit the existing preference share capital. In the balance sheet, as I told you, preference share capital, as you can see, is 5,000 shares of rupees 100 each. That means your total existing preference share capital is 5 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? So when we are debiting the existing preference share capital, that means existing preference share capital has now become zero. But at the same time, we will also write to 12% preference share capital. Now, instead of 10% preference share capital is 12%, but one share is of rupees 80 now. That means new preference share capital is in the form of 12% preference share capital that is equal to 4 lakh. How much we have saved? We have saved to the construction account 5000 into 20. So 1 lakh is our gain in this particular case. That is equal to 1 lakh. Is it clear to you? That's how we have to move. Now, in point number 3, it is written that trade creditors claim is reduced by one third. Now, trade creditors claim have ha, has been... Uh, trade creditors claims have also been reduced in this particular question. So our entry in this particular case will be trade. First of all, I will write for reduction in reduction in claims of trade payable. Claims of trade payables. T oblique P means trade payables. Correct. If we will look into the balance sheet, trade payables are given under current liability that is 6 lakh rupees. So first of all, you will write trade payable account debit. Existing trade payable amount is actually 6 lakh. Now their claims have been reduced by one third. 
So what is the new claim of the trade creditor? That is two third, correct? Their claim have been reduced by actually one third. So their new claim is just two third of what it was earlier. So we will write here now two trade payables, two trade payables remaining. You can write in bracket remaining. That means out of six lakh, because we have reduced their claim by one third, that is two lakh. So the remaining trade payable are now four lakh. And the amount by which their claims have been reduced will be transferred to reconstruction account. That is one third of six lakh. One third of six lakh that is equal to two lakh. So this is the entry which you are going to pass. Correct. Now, if you will look into the next line of the question, the next line of the question states that this is the question sheet which I have kept in front of me. Plant and machinery is to be written down to five lakh. Okay, you simply note it down. You need not require to pass the entry immediately. Correct? Of course, you have to write it down. Then a stock to be revalued at 50,000. We have to bring the stock by rupees 1 lakh. We have to create a provision to the extent of 20,000. All these are losses which we have to write them. First of all, your target is to, should be, to accumulate all the possible gains. For example, in entry, in point number 6, it is given freehold land to be revalued at 7 lakh. So it is a gain. So better to incorporate the gains first. Appreciation in. Appreciation in. Freehold property. So your freehold property has jumped. Correct. From 5 lakh to 7 lakh. So it is a sort of gain for you. So your entry will be. Freehold property account debit. Freehold property account debit, which in the balance sheet it was given at 5 lakh, now estimated at 7 lakh, that means it has gone up by 2 lakh. Generally, when there is an increase in case of non current asset, generally the entry is non current asset, that is freehold premises, account, freehold property account debit, to revaluation reserve. Logically, the entry should be like this. But under internal reconstruction scheme, whatever gains from whatever sources which you are going to have, you should transfer those gains, what we call to reconstruction account. So that is the reason instead of writing revaluation reserve, I will write freehold property account debit to reconstruction account. So now all the possible gains have been recorded. We have gone through the entire length and breadth of this particular question. And now no further gains are there in the question. Once you become sure of the fact that you have accumulated all the gains, now your next target should be, should be, let me write the narration, writing of, writing of, of, writing of, of overvalued portions and accumulated losses. That is valueless items. Correct? So, your last uh, stage of the question is that you have to now write off because this is exactly what for you are adopting the scheme of internal reconstruction. Isn't it or not? So, now in order to write them off, first of all, you will have to write reconstruction account. First of all, you will have to note down how much is the balance in the reconstruction account. So, in order to know what is the amount of balance in the reconstruction account, once again, you will have to go through your entries. You have noticed that your reconstruction account here has got credited by 6 lakh. Here it has got credited by 1 lakh, total 7 lakh. Then it has again got credited by 2 lakh, 9 lakh. And finally, again here it got credited by 2 lakh. So, we may say that total credit balance in the reconstruction account is 11 lakh. Now, this credit balance is going to be utilized in writing off, as I told you, all the overvalued portions and besides that we have to write off valueless items. So that is why the credit balance now will start reducing. So that is why reconstruction account now will be debited. The total balance is 11 lakh. First of all, you must go according to the directions of the question regarding the writing off. For example, as per the direction, plant and machinery need to be brought down to 5 lakh. In the balance sheet, plant and machinery was actually 7 lakh. So, I have to reduce plant and machinery by rupees 2 lakh. Is it clear to you? 
Then in point number five, it is given that a stock to be revalued at 50,000. So I will write two stock or inventories. In the balance sheet, a stock is given at 150 and now it is estimated at 50,000. So I have to write it down by rupees 1 lakh. Then provision for doubtful debts need to be created. So two provision for doubtful debts. Two provision for doubtful debts to the extent of 20,000 we need to create. So these are the directions with respect to writing off of overvalued portions. Correct. Now you have to go through the what we call balance sheet. Try to find out whether are the, whether there are any accumulated losses items or deferred expenditure item that mean any valueless item. Yes, we saw earlier in this particular question there is profit and loss account. So profit and loss account debit balance now will be written off. Profit and loss account debit balance in the balance sheet. If we look in the balance sheet, I think it was five lakh fifty thousand. So five lakh fifty thousand. I will write here five lakh fifty thousand. If you remember in the last session, I told you after writing off all the item, if any balance will be there, that balance will be transferred to capital reserve account because that is considered as a sort of capital profit. So it is transferred to capital reserve account if there is any balance. Sometime balance may be there, sometime it may not be there. So by subtracting all these items from 11 lakh, I get 2 lakh 30,000. So I will write here 2 lakh 30,000. This is how I will have to prepare the what we call, uh, I will have to pass the entry. Although it is not asked in the question, but I will tell you, how to prepare the balance sheet also, so post reconstruction balance sheet, post reconstruction balance sheet. You can prepare it very easily as far as balance sheet is concerned. First of all, equity and liability. You must write equity and liability. In the equity and liability, the first item which we generally write is actually share capital. In fact, first of all, we will write equity First of all, we will write shareholders fund, shareholders fund. Shareholders fund, under shareholders fund, I will write share capital. Now, what is the amount of share capital if I want to know? How I will get? First of all, look into the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, your equity share capital. Let us say I want to write down here equity share capital. Correct. So it is very simple to compute the amount of equity share capital. First, look into the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, equity share capital, there is credit balance of 10 lakh because it is written towards the equity and liability side. Then we have debited that 10 lakh. That means now the equity share capital is zero. And again, we credited it. So equity share capital now is 4 lakh and nowhere else we have written equity share capital. So equity share capital, we will write in the balance sheet to the extent of 1 lakh share of rupees 4 each, 1 lakh share at the rate of 4, that is equal to 4 lakh. So your equity share capital presently now is equal to 4 lakh. Besides that, your 10% preference share capital which was given in the balance sheet at 5 lakh, you debited it in the entry. So debt capital has become zero, but you have issued now 15% preference share capital. So 15% preference share capital will now find place in the balance sheet. So you will write, there were 5,000 share and now one share is of rupees 80 each. So that is again 4 lakhs. So total share capital in the outer column, which you would write will be equal to 8 lakh. This is how you are supposed to prepare the balance sheet. Is it clear? It is not a very tough nut to crack. Under shareholders fund, we write then reserves and surplus. Reserves and surplus. As far as reserves and surplus are concerned, if we will look into the balance sheet, there was debit balance of profit and loss account. Now that balance has been written off. So profit and loss account has become zero. However, when we prepared in the last entry, when we were writing off, there was balance in the reconstruction account, correct? The balance was transferred to capital reserve. So capital reserve now will be written under reserve in surplus that is equal to 2,30,000. 
Then under the second item, I will write non-current liability. In this question, there are no non-current liability. Then I will write what we call current liability. If you remember in the current liability, there were trade payables. And trade payables were equal to 6 lakhs. However, we reduce their claim by one third, that is 2 lakh. So that is why the balance now in trade payables is equal to 4 lakh. I told you preparation of balance sheet is very, very easy. Is it clear to you or not? If you are going to tally it, 8 plus 4, uh, that is how much it will be equal to. Is there any, any more item in this particular question? No. So you will tally it of whatever balance you will get, you will get the answer. Now, we come over to the asset side. As far as asset side is concerned, asset side. Under the asset side, first of all, I will write non-current asset. Under the non-current asset, we write property, plant and equipment. Under the property, plant and equipment in this particular question, there was freehold land. Freehold property or freehold land, whatever it was. Now its value is 7 lakh. Earlier it was 5 lakh, but after appreciation, its value is 7 lakh. Then in the question, there was, there is plant and machinery. Plant and machinery as per the old balance sheet was 7 lakh. But we reduced it to 5 lakh. So the new value of plant and machinery is 5 lakh. And likewise, there are furniture, but there is no change in furniture. F oblique F, that is 1 lakh. So total becomes 13 lakh. Then generally after the non-current asset, we write current asset. Under the current asset in this particular question, we have stock, value of stock earlier was 1,50,000, but we reduced it by 1 lakh. So now the new value is 50,000. Similarly, we had daters. Daters were worth rupees 50,000. But we created a provision to the extent of 20,000. So 50 minus 20. Now the balance will be 30,000. And similarly, there is no change in cash. Cash was 50,000. Still it is 50,000. So 1,30,000. So your balance sheet total will be equal to 14,30,000. Balance sheet total will be equal to 14,30,000. Likewise, when you will tally here, 8 plus 4, 12 plus this, this is also equal to 14 lakh 30,000. So this is how you have to prepare the balance sheet. Is it clear to you or not? These are initial questions, correct? Initial questions means just concept opener question just to acquaint you how we have to move in this particular chapter. So after finishing off this particular question, now we go to the next one. In 1.2, it is given that following is the balance sheet of last stage limited. The name itself is last stage limited, correct? As at 31st of 2023, when we will look into the balance sheet, we find share capital. It is important to note 20,000 equity share and their face value, that is 2 lakh. Similarly, you have 10% preference shares of 100 each. How many shares you have, it is not given, but their value is 50,000. You can easily find out. 50,000 is the total value and one preference share is of 100 each. That means total there are 500 shares of 100 each. Besides, again in, in this particular question, there is one item of accumulated loss in the form of profit and loss account. There is no other reserves, correct? Then as far as liabilities are concerned, this time you have debentures to the extent of 1 lakh and trade creditors to the extent of 3 lakh 30,000. Then you have only, then you have bills payable also and your total of liability side is this much. As far as assets are concerned under the category of non-current asset, we have property, plant and equipment and tangible items are buildings to the extent of 2 lakh, plant and machinery to the extent of 1 lakh 30,000. Then we have patents to the extent of 40,000. Patent, copyright, trademarks, correct? Patent, copyright, trademarks, these are intangible assets, not valueless assets. Remember one thing, correct? 
So you should not write off intangible asset unless and until there is information in the question. If the question states that write off intangible asset, you write them off. If question is silent, my advice is not to write off intangible asset. However, goodwill must be written off. It is very important that all intangible assets, we can classify the intangible asset. These are intangible assets into goodwill and other intangible asset like patents, copyrights, trademarks, franchise, licenses, etc. Goodwill must be written off whether any information is given or not because the goodwill of the company has become so low, correct? It is so damaged. That is why goodwill will not fetch any return. It will be considered as a sort of valueless item. So goodwill should always be written off. However, other other intangible asset logically should be written off only if there is some direction in the question, correct? Then we have got in this particular case, Dave, inventories to the extent of 80,000 and besides that we have trade receivable to the extent of 55,000 cash and cash equivalent to the extent of 50,000. This is the question, not again tough one, but I told you these are concept opener questions. In this particular question, with a view to reconstruct the company, it is proposed that equity shares will be reduced by rupees 9 each. Now, equity share will be reduced by rupees 9 each. What was the amount of equity share capital? If you will look here, we had 20,000 shares of 10 each that is equal to this much. That means if I am going to pass this particular entry, what will be my entry? If I am going to pass entry, my entry will be equity share capital account debit. 20,000 shares are already there in the balance sheet at the rate of 10. That is equal to 2 lakh. This is old equity share capital. Now debited means cancelled. And now the equity share capital has been reduced to reduced by rupees 9 each. That means it is reduced to rupee 1. So new equity share capital is 20,000 into 1. And I told you equity shareholders are not in a position to protest anything. So, this time company has saved a lot of amount to reconstruction account. Equity share capital has been reduced by, by rupees 9 each. So, 1,80,000 will be transferred to reconstruction account. This is the first entry which you are going to pass. Is it clear to you? Coming over to 10% preference share. As far as 10% preference shares are concerned, question says that preference share has been reduced by rupees 40 each. By rupees 40 each. If we look into the balance sheet, we will see that 10% preference shares, number of shares were not given, it was given that 10% preference share of 100 each and in the outer column amount was 50,000. You divide 50 by 100, so we can say existing preference shares are 500 and face value is 100. So first of all, we are going to debit the existing preference share capital by this amount that is equal to 50,000. And now, to new preference share capital, new preference share capital, because preference share capital has been reduced by 40, so the new preference share capital is of rupees 60, 30,000. Is it clear to you? And it has been reduced by rupees, by rupees 40. So by how much it has fallen down, that is again for you 20,000. And below, in the last line, it is also written, it is also written, to raise the rate of preference dividend to 13% and the rate of interest on debenture to be raised to 9%. What does it mean? It means preference share capital earlier was 10% but the rate of dividend has now gone up to 13%. So your new preference share capital will be 13% preference share capital. Is it clear to you? Again here it is given that trade creditors claim have reduced by one third. Now trade creditors given in the question were 3,30,000. So you can manage this entry of your own, isn't it or not? The entry with respect to this one will be trade creditors account debit. That is 3,30,000. And their trade payables remaining. What is the remaining amount? If I am telling that out of 330, I have reduced their claim by one third, that means 1,10,000. So remaining amount must be equal to 2,20,000. And to reconstruction account, that is equal to 1,10,000, one third. Correct? Now, in this particular question, it is given that further machinery is to be reduced 2 rupees 
reduced to rupees seventy thousand. When later on you are going to pass your entry reconstruction account debit over there you are going to write plant and machinery now plant and machinery first of all you have to look into the balance sheet how much plant and machinery is there one lakh thirty thousand now one lakh thirty thousand worth of machinery is to be written down to written down to seventy thousand that when it is coming down by sixty thousand it is very important correct and similarly here it is written that um, inventories by rupees 10,000 that means we are reducing the inventories by rupees 10,000 so I will write here reconstruction account debit into inventories account 10,000 and then again a provision for bad debts to the extent of 15,000 to be created so I will write here two provision for doubtful debts to the extent of 15,000 I will write here 15,000 and further it is given that all intangible asset to be written off because in this particular question it is clearly stated that all intangible assets should be written off so that is why i am writing off patents because in this particular question only patents are intangible assets so all intangible assets are written off it is given in the question that is why i am writing off intangible asset that is equal to 40000 that's all it is given in the question so in this case how much is my gain first of all here i have got a gain of 1 lakh 80 thousand and then here again i got a gain of 20 thousand so 2 lakh and then 1 lakh 10 thousand i think this is our total gain correct so total gain is 3 total gain is 1 lakh 10 and uh, what is the amount just let me check with respect to preference share 10% preference share by rupees 40 it is given uh, if it is by rupees 40 so I have written here 60 oh, oh. in case of preference share it is written preference shares are to be reduced by 40 actually so I will write here 40 it is it should be 20,000 it should be 30,000 so my gain will be 180 plus 30 that is equal to 2 lakh 10 plus 1 lakh 10 uh, that comes to that comes to I think I think three lakh twenty thousand. So reconstruction account debit three lakh twenty thousand. Now if I will tally all these items, and I have to write one more item because in the balance sheet there uh, there is there is profit and loss account debit balance also. So first of all we have to note down the directions of the question. And then we have to check the balance sheet whether there are any valueless items. Valueless item must be written off whether information is there or not. So profit and loss account 195000 Now if I am going to tell you all these items that is 70, 60 plus 10, 70 that comes to 85, 85 plus 40 will be equal to 125 and 125 plus 195 is equal to 320 so that means in this particular case there is no loss or gain correct that means there is no balances there the items which we have written their amount is equal to 320000 is it clear to you now you might be wondering so is it a possibility that the amount which we are supposed to write up could it exceed the available balance of reconstruction yes it is a possibility in that case then what we are supposed to do that I will let you know when we will do a question of such what we call uh, situation so this is how you have to do this question now I have solved this question you can go through it quickly see here equity share capital 2 lakh to equity share capital 20,000 into 120,000 and in the reconstruction account we have taken 20,000 into 9 1 lakh 80,000 similarly 10% preference share capital 500 into 150,000 and new preference share capital is 500 into 60 that is 30,000 and preference share capital has been reduced by rupees reduced by rupees uh, 40 so 500 into 40 is equal to 20,000 that should be your gain and in this particular question in this particular question there is no information related to adventures it seems some other line has got printed in this particular question just allow me just just one second
okay there is it same one line is missing here so first of all we will check that line also that line is actually it is written here i did not look at this particular line sorry first one is equity share to be reduced by rupees 9 each second one is 10 percent preference share by rupees 40 each and the third one is seven percent debenture by 10 percent so in this particular question there is one more information seven percent debenture account debit i will write seven percent debenture in the balance sheet is equal to one lakh question says that there claim in fact is reducing by 10 percent that means now the remaining debentures will be equal to 90,000 because they are reducing by 10%. So 10% of 1 lakh 10,000 will be transferred to reconstruction. And as I told you in the last line, it was given that rate of interest or debenture is reduced to, sorry, raised to 9%. So your new debenture will be equal to 9% debenture account. Is it clear to you? So that is why you will pass the entry. 7% debenture account debit, first of all, 1 lakh. And now, 9% debenture will be equal to 90,000 because debentures are reducing by 10%. So the remaining amount will be equal to 1 lakh into 90%. 1 lakh into 90%. That is equal to 90,000. And their claims have reduced by 10%. 1 lakh into 10% will be transferred to reconstruction account. That is 10,000 rupees. Then you will add up all the credit balances that will come to actually it is given the question 3 lakh then one more line with respect to trade payable we have already discussed this particular line trade payable account debit 3 lakh 32 trade payable remaining 222 reconstruction 1 lakh 10 because trade creditors claim were coming down by actually one third now in, in the reconstruction balance this will be the balance and you have to write down plant and machinery to 70,000 that means you have to bring it down by 60,000 inventories are reducing by 10,000 provision is being created to the extent of 15,000 and patents you are writing off because in the in the question there is direction regarding the day regarding that and profit or loss account we have to write it off at any cost this time no capital reserve now in the balance sheet when you will prepare the balance sheet equity share capital because equity share capital is reduced to one each so 20,000 shares of one each 20,000 and 13 percent preference share capital has come down by 40 that means new preference share capital is 500 into 4 into 60 that is equal to 30,000 so total capital will be equal to 50,000 similarly debenture earlier were 1 lakh now it will be equal to 90,000 Creditors were earlier 3 lakh 30, they have come down by 1 lakh 10, so creditors will be 2 lakh 20, no change in bills payable. Total will be 2 lakh 40. Now, buildings. <clears throat> there is no change in building, but plant and machinery is now. Earlier it was 130, we have reduced it by 60,000, 60, so its value is 70, total 2 lakh 70,000. As far as stock is concerned, Inventory in the balance sheet is 80,000, but inventory is reduced by 10,000. So that is why it is written at 70,000. Is it clear to you? And similarly, debtors in the balance sheet were 55,000. We have created a provision to the extent of 15,000. We will write 40. So this is the amount which we are going to write it over here. Is it clear to you? Now we pick up 1.3. 1.3 question states that following is the summary balance sheet of Turnaround Limited as at 31st of March 2023. First of all, it is given in the question that there are 2 lakh equity shares of 10 each. That means total amount is 20 lakh. Then it is given that 6,008% preference shares of 100 each. Total amount is 6 lakh. And so many times I have told you now profit and loss account, we will have to write it off at any cost. And then we have general reserve and security premium, but no amount is given, only profit or loss account is given to you. 9% debentures are there to the extent of 12 lakh. Trade creditors are 5 lakh 92,000. Then we have in this particular case bank overdraft to the extent of 1 lakh 50,000. Plant and machinery, as far as assets are concerned, tangible, non current asset, tangible, plant and machinery, furniture and fittings. Patents and copyrights are also given in the question. And here you have to exercise caution. Investment, non-current investments, their value is written at 68,000. But in, in the bracket, it is given that their market value is 65,000. So I will have to bring this value from 68 
choose 55,000, that means I will have to reduce it by 13,000. And then we have inventories, we have trade receivables, and we have cash at bank. Correct? In this question, it is given that preference shareholders would give up 30% or 30% of their capital in exchange for allotment of 11% debentures to them. What does it mean? It means preference shareholders, if you look into the preference shareholder, preference shareholders are telling that 6, at this moment, 8% preference share capital is there, one share is of 100 each and 6 lakh is the amount. Preference shareholders are telling that we are ready to waive 30% to reconstruction account. How I came to know about that? It is given in the question that preference shareholder would give up 30% of their capital. Would give up means they will forego, they will waive, they will remit 30% of their capital. So, in the bracket you will write 30% of 6 lakh. So, 30% of 6 lakh will be equal to how much? That will be equal to 1 lakh 80,000. 1 lakh 80,000. So, out of 6 lakh, they have given up 1 lakh 80,000. So, remaining amount is 4 lakh 20. And preference shareholders, what they are telling, they are telling we will give up our 1 lakh 80,000 worth of capital. That means we will waive off 1 lakh 80. But against our 8% preference share capital, you please give us debentures. Preference shareholders give up 30% of their capital in exchange for allotment of 11% debenture to them. That means for the remaining amount of preference share capital, we have allotted them 11% debentures. So 11% debenture, 4 lakh 20. This will be your entry. Now the existing preference share capital is completely gone up. It has become zero. Now 11% debentures have been issued and in the reconstruction account we have 1,80,000 credit balance at this particular moment. Further it is given debenture holder having a charge on plant and machinery would accept plant and machinery in full settlement of their dues. Debenture holders. Now in this particular question in the balance sheet we are having 9% debenture holders. Generally, when a company issues a debenture, because generally the investors are not very much inclined to subscribe to debentures of a particular company and that's the reason actually that company often assures them that please invest into our company, your amount is completely safe and moreover we will give you a sort of guarantee that you will have a charge on a particular asset. When we say that debenture holders are having a charge on an asset, what does it mean? It means company has given them an assurity that in case if we would fail to pay your amount on the due date, then you have the right to sell off that asset and you can recover the amount. That is what we mean by charge. So this particular line, debenture holder were having a charge on plant and machinery, would accept plant and machinery in full settlement of their dues. So debenture holders were worth rupees 12 lakh and they were having a charge on plant and machinery and they have taken rupees 9, 9 lakh worth of plant and machinery in full settlement of 12 lakh. So our entry will be, our existing debenture is, that is second entry. My second entry will be, in this particular case, 9% debenture account debit, 9% debenture account debit. So 9% existing debentures are now cancelled because they are debited. And we have settled their 12 lakh worth of amount by giving them plant and machinery because they have accepted it. But the value of plant and machinery is 9 lakh. So you are able to settle the account of 12 lakh simply by imparting with an asset worth 9 lakh. That means you are having a gain. So this gain will be transferred to reconstruction account that is equal to 3 lakh. So that means your plant and machinery has also gone out of the business. In the new balance sheet, plant and machinery will not appear. Further, amount of debenture 12 lakh have also become zero. Then in the third line, it is written inventory equal to rupees 5 lakh in book value will be taken over by trade payables in full settlement of their dues. What does it mean? Inventory, actually inventory, you can see in the balance sheet is actually 4 lakh. Question is telling that out of 14 lakh, 
फाइव लैख वर्थ ऑफ इन्वेंट्री इज टेकन ओवर बाई ट्रेड पेबल योर ट्रेड पेबल इज फाइव लैख नाइंटी टू थाउजेंड सो ट्रेड पेबल हैव टेकन ओवर आउट ऑफ फोर्टीन लैख फाइव लैख वर्थ ऑफ इन्वेंट्री इन फुल सेटलमेंट अगेन इट इज अगेन टू यू वाई इट इज अगेन टू यू बिकॉज ट्रेड पेबल्स वर रुपीज फाइव लैख नाइंटी टू थाउजेंड and they have taken over inventory so you will write to inventory account to inventory account that they have taken over 5 lakh one worth of inventory in full settlement so 92000 will be gained to you this is your third entry 92000 is it clear to you or not then in here it is written investment value to be reduced to market price of course we will reduce the investment by rupees 13000 from 68000 to 55000 then question states that company will issue 11% debenture for rupees 3 lakh 3 lakh and augment its working capital requirement after the settlement of bank overdraft what does it mean it means this company is simply issuing 11% debenture for 3 lakh the purpose is that we want to augment augment means to increase correct to increase to enhance our working capital requirement and at the same time we want to pay off bank overdraft so here the entry for point number 5 will be and this is our entry number 4 in fact but this is related to entry number point number 5 the entry will be bank account debit To 11% debenture account, company simply has issued 11% debenture to raise 3 lakh worth of amount. So this will be your entry: bank account debit to 11% debenture account. But after raising this amount, you have also paid your bank overdraft. So bank overdraft account debit to bank account. Your bank overdraft in the question. Is one lakh fifty thousand as you can see. So bank overdraft is also paid off. One lakh fifty thousand. So you have raised three lakh out of that one lakh fifty thousand. You have uh, has been utilized in paying off bank overdraft. So still you are having one lakh fifty thousand worth of cash. Then, then in this particular question, nothing else is given. And now question simply says prepare capital reduction. Capital reduction means internal reconstruction account and balance sheet of the company after the internal reconstruction scheme. Correct. I have already explained the question, but still we will go through the solution. Eight percent preference share capital it is given in the balance sheet at six lakh. I have already told you that they have waived thirty percent of six lakh one lakh eighty. It will be transferred to reconstruction account, and the remaining balance they have accepted nine percent debenture or eleven percent debentures. They have accepted eleven percent debenture, not nine percent debenture. This is eleven percent debenture. In your notes, it must be eleven percent debenture. So this is equal to six lakh. Then entry number two: existing debenture holder were worth rupees twelve lakh, and they were having a charge on the plant and machinery, and they took the plant and machinery in settlement of twelve lakh, so three lakh again there is gain. Correct. And then I told you about trade payable. Trade payables were five lakh ninety two. They took over inventory worth rupees five lakh. Actually, inventory is worth fourteen lakh, but out of fourteen lakh, five lakh worth of book value of inventory they took away in full settlement. So ninety two thousand will be reconstruction account. Then eleven percent debenture again were issued in the market to raise the working capital bank account debit to eleven percent debenture account. This will be your entry which I just wrote earlier. Then after raising three lakh. You paid off bank overdraft, bank overdraft account debit to bank account, correct? And then you will compute the balance. Your balance in reconstruction account will be five lakh seventy seventy two. That is simply you have to add the credit balances. This is one lakh eighty thousand, then three lakh, and then ninety two thousand, and then. then 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 no balance. So five lakh seventy two will be your balance. we have to write off in this particular question investment as i told you we have to bring it from what we call 68 to 55 that is 13000 we have to write it off profit and loss account balance is there we have to write it off by 4 lakh 5000 so whatever balance is there this balance will be transferred to capital reserve account 
Now, how to prepare capital reduction account or reconstruction account? It is very simple. First, you open reconstruction account. Look into the first entry. What is the first entry? In the first entry, reconstruction account is getting credited by 180. It is getting credited because of preference share capital. So, in the reconstruction account, I will write here by preference share capital account 180,000. Similarly, in the second entry, reconstruction account is getting credited by 3 lakh because of debenture. So, I will write here by debenture, nine, by 9% 9 debenture, 3 lakh. Similarly, in the third entry, reconstruction is getting credited because of trade payable, so 92,000. So, total balance is 5,72,000. Out of that, you utilized in writing of investment by 13, in writing of your accumulated loss and balance transfer to capital reserve account. And this is how you are going to prepare your balance sheet. Now, your equity share capital is equal to 20 lakh. Is it clear to you? Actually, if you have gone through this particular question, in this particular question, there is no change in equity share capital, correct? So, equity share capital is this much. But your existing 12% debentures have become zero. They were 12 lakh. They were debited. However, you have issued some 11% debenture. 4 lakh 20,000 worth of debenture you have issued to the preference shareholder. And then again, you have issued some debenture to raise the what we call working capital, bank account debit to 11% debenture. So that is why total debenture will now be equal to 7,20,000. Under reserve and surplus, you will write capital reserve 1,54,000 because reconstruction balance we are having. Then as far as balance sheet is concerned, there is no change in furniture and fitting. And under patents and copyrights, in this question, we haven't written off patents and copyrights because in this question, there was no direction to write them off. So that is why 70,000 we have written here. And uh, as far as your inv investments are, uh, sorry, current assets are concerned, investment inventories earlier were 14 lakh. Out of that 5 lakh worth of inventories you have given to what we call trade payable. So you are left off with 9 lakh worth of in inventories. Correct. Cash and cash equivalent is equal to 14 lakh 39,000. And uh, see your cash, cash at bank balance. In fact, I think this figure 14,39,000 is related to something else. Let me check the question. Where is the balance sheet? Trade receivable are 14,39,000. This is some misprint. So trade receivable is equal to 14,39,000. It is fine. Now under cash and cash equivalent, what will be their balance in cash at bank account? See here. In the balance sheet, you have got, in the balance sheet, you have got cash and bank balance of 10,000. You have a balance of 10,000, correct? Now look into the entries and find out whether you have written anywhere bank or not. Yes, here you have written bank balance, 3 lakh. That means you are receiving 3 lakh rupees. So you add 3 lakh. Similarly, then you paid off 1 lakh 50,000 to bank overdraft. So, new balance will be 1,60,000. So, new balance you must write as 1,60,000 in the balance sheet. This is the balance 1,60,000. Cash at bank. And moreover, I have shown it here. 10,000 plus 3 lakh minus 1,50. So, balance is equal to 1,60,000. Not a very tough question. Now, 1.4, we come over to 1.4. Following is the balance sheet of Wana Live More Limited as at 31st 3, 2023. In this particular balance sheet, we have equity share capital 100 of rupees 100. That means 10,000 shares of 100. Similarly, preference share capital is 50 lakh and one share is of 100. That means 50,000 shares of 100 each. Profit and loss account debit balance 4 lakh is there. Then 10% debentures are there for and then creditors 50 lakh and then provision for tax 1 lakh is also given to you. And as far as balance sheet is concerned, under the non-current asset, we have property, plant and equipment under the property, plant and equipment, tangible fixed asset is straightway given to you as 125 lakh. And then non-current investments, Non-current investment we have in this case investment its market value written 950 while in the outer column we have written 10 lakhs so we have to write bring it down by 50,000 
and current assets are straightway given to you directly, that is 100 lakhs. Following a scheme of reorganization, internal scheme of internal reconstruction scheme is also known as reorganization scheme. Sometimes it is also known as rehabilitation scheme. Anyway, all the existing equity shares are reduced to rupees 40 each. All the existing equity shares are reduced to 40 each. Reduced to 40, that means they are getting reduced by 60. Correct? Then question says that all the preference share are reduced to rupees 60 each. All the preference share are reduced to 60 each means preference share are getting reduced by 40. Rate of interest on debenture is increased to 12%. Now, debentures, if we will look into the balance sheet, 40 lakh, that means 40,000 debentures of rupees 100 each, and they were having an interest of 10%, so their rate of interest has gone up to 12%. Debenture holders, debenture holders surrendered their existing debentures of rupees 100 each. The venture holders surrendered their existing debentures of 100 each. There are 40,000 debenture holders. They have given, they have given back their debenture to the company. Surrendered exactly means that. That means company is receiving back 40,000 debentures of 100 each. That is 40 lakh. So we are going to debit 40,000 into 100, 40 lakh. And exchange the same for fresh debentures of rupees 70 each for every debenture held by them. And Against those 40,000 debenture, company is giving new debenture of 40,000. Of course, the new debenture will carry interest rate of 12%. So, new debenture of 40,000 will be given, but the rate is 70. So, 240,000 into 70, this is the amount of 12% debenture. And the difference will give us, which will be equal to 12 lakh, will be reconstruction account. One of the creditors of the company to whom the company owes 20 lakh rupees. One of the creditors. If you look into the balance sheet, creditors are worth rupees 50 lakh. Out of that, there is a creditor worth rupees 20 lakh. And this creditor, what he is doing, decides to forego 40% of his claim. So he tells that he is ready to forego 40% of his claim. 40% of 20 will be equal to 8 lakh. And whatever remaining claim is there, for that he is given equity shares. As we will go through the next line, he is allotted 30,000 equity shares of 40 each. So, for the balance amount, he is given 40,000 shares. Sorry, 40,000, no, 30,000 shares. 30,000 shares of 40 each. That is equal to 12 lakh, which I told you earlier. Correct? So, in this case, there will be a gain. The taxation liability of the company is settled at 1,50,000. Now, you had estimated, you might have estimated your tax liability as 1 lakh. That is why you have created a provision of 1 lakh. But in the eyes of the law, in the eyes of the taxation authorities, your tax liability is not 1 lakh, rather 1,50,000. So, you will have to increase this provision. So, it will be a loss because increase in liability is a loss. So, reconstruction account debit to provision for tax account will be your entry. And tax liability of the company is settled at 150. Fixed assets are written down by 3 lakh. We will write them off. Current assets are to be revalued at 45 lakh. Now, current assets earlier were 100 lakhs. So, now revalued at 45 lakh. They, that means they are coming down by 55 lakh. And investment are to be brought down to the market value. Investments are to be brought down to the market value. The investments were earlier 10 lakh brought down to market value. That means it is reduced by 50,000. Is it clear to you or not? I hope you can easily manage this question. Correct. First you try to solve. I am giving you 10 minutes of time. And after 10 minutes I will continue this class. Correct. So in the meantime you try to solve this particular question. Class is not yet over.
So welcome again to this particular session. I hope you must have given it a try, but at the same time there is printer's devil also, but in your notes it must be given over there, correct? There is another item, other non-current asset. In the other non-current asset, there are preliminary expenses also. Preliminary expense underwriting commission, discount on issue of debentures, etc. are written under the heading other non-current asset. Other non-current asset are written under the subheading of non-current asset. And preliminary expenses are worth rupees 2 lakh. You have to write them off also. I will do this particular question for you. Don't worry about it. We have already gone through the question. If you have given it a try, that's fine. And if you haven't given it a try, then also it's not a big issue. Just pay attention over here. Let me position me out, first of all. And let me pick up the question sheet also. Where is the question sheet? Which is the question? Uh, this is question number, I think, 1.4, if I'm not wrong. Yes, it is 1.4, correct? So if it is 1.4, then, right, this is 1.4, it seems so. So I will keep all these sheets over here and keep the 1.4 in front of me. Below it is given that following a scheme of reconstruction has been adopted and as per the scheme, Existing equity share reduced to rupees 40 each. This is the first line and we have already explained this particular line. This is the question, correct? So 1.4 we start. And as far as 1.4 is concerned, the first one is related to reduction in equity share capital account reduction in equity share capital account for that we will have to write equity share capital we will look into the balance sheet we find that existing equity share capital there are 10,000 shares of 100 each number of shares are not given but we can easily find them out so total share capital is 10 lakh this capital is now cancelled because we debited it now we will write the new equity share capital the new equity share capital is because equity share capital is reduced to 40. So new equity share capital is 10,000 into 40. That is equal to 4 lakh. This capital will appear in the new balance sheet. Then we will write here two reconstruction account. 10,000 shares. And as we can see actually equity share capital is falling down by 6. So 6 lakh will be your gain. This will be your first entry. Under the second entry, reduction in preference share capital. As far as reduction in preference share capital is concerned, you must have noticed preference share are reduced to 60 each. First, we will look into the balance sheet. It is 12% preference share capital given to us. And amount is 50 lakh. That means 50,000 shares are there. And one share is of 100 each. We have debited this capital. Debited this capital means we have cancelled out this capital. Two 12% preference share capital. In this question, nothing is given with respect to fact whether rate of dividend has been increased or not. So we will keep the rate of dividend same as it is. Now their share capital is reduced to rupees 60 each. So 50,000 into 60 is the new preference share capital. That is equal to 30 lakh. And we will transfer to reconstruction to reconstruction account that is equal to 50,000 into 40. That must be equal to 20 lakh. Isn't it or not? Yes, it is. 20 lakh. Now we come over to the third point. The rate of interest on dimension is increased to 12%. Our First of all, let me write here reduction in claims of Deventure holders. Existing deventures are 10% deventures. And they are 40,000 deventure. We are debiting these deventures because it was written in the question that existing deventure holder has surrendered their deventure. They have surrendered their deventures means they have given back to us the deventure which were issued to them by our company. So 40 lakh. So we shall write here 40 lakh. After having written 40 lakh, now we are issuing them 12% debentures. 
it is given that for each debenture that mean every debenture is debenture holder is getting one debenture but the new debenture is of 70 each so that makes it 28 lakhs so our gain will be equal to 12 lakh as i told you earlier gain will be equal to 12 lakh is it clear to you this is how the entries will be done in point number uh, 4 regarding creditor it is given and one of the creators of the company actually total creators are worth rupees 50 lakh but out of that it is given that one of the creditors correct one of the creditors who was having 20 lakh worth of dues has agreed to what he has agreed to uh, he has agreed to waive off forego 40 percent of his claim and he is allotted 30,000 equity shares of 40 each in full satisfaction of his claim so we will write here trade payable account debit correct creditors you can write in bracket out of 50 lakh 20 lakh worth of creditor has agreed to forego 30 forego 40 percent of his claim so 40 percent of 20 lakhs that is gain to the company because he has waived off 40 percent 8 lakhs however he is being issued equity shares and he is being issued 30,000 equity shares but now the face value of equity share is 40 so 12 this is how we are going to pass the entry further in the question it is given that taxation liability of the company is settled at 1 lakh 50,000 increase in increase in liability is considered as a loss correct increase in tax liability so our entry will be reconstruction account debit because our liability in the form of provision for tax is increasing earlier it was 1 lakh but now the liability is estimated at rupees 150 so we have to increase the liability by 50,000 on account of which reconstruction account will get debit of rupees 50,000 correct after this we have to write off fixed asset by 30 percent current assets are valued at 45 lakh investment to be brought down to its value market value and it is decided to write off valueless items so now the next thing is that which we are supposed to do is to find out the reconstruction balance in order to find out the reconstruction balance we will credit the reconstruction wherever it is getting credit we will add it and wherever reconstruction will get debit we will simply subtract it for example i am going to credit 6 lakh i am going to credit 20 lakh i am going to add 12 lakh because it is credited i am going to add 8 lakh that comes to 100 lakhs and now we will debit it that means we will subtract it so the net balance in reconstruction account net balance at this moment is 99 lakh 50,000 99 lakh 50,000 is your net balance is it clear to you or not now you will start writing off first of, first of all you will write off fixed asset fixed asset to be written off by 30 percent now if you will look into the balance sheet in this particular question your tangible fixed asset were 125 lakh 125 lakh you have to write them off by 30%. That is 37 lakh 50,000. 37 lakh 50,000. Then current assets are valued at 45. Current assets were 100 lakhs. So coming down by 55 lakh. Then investments. Investment to be brought down to their market value. So investments will be written off by 50,000 by 50,000 and then we have to write off valueless item in this particular case one is accumulated loss in the balance sheet in the form of profit and loss account so I will write off profit or loss account 4 lakh and there are preliminary expenses under other non-current assets so I will write off preliminary expenses also and preliminary expenses are 2 lakhs 
if we will subtract all these amount from 19 lakh 99 lakh 50000 we will get capital reserve to the extent of 50000 is it clear to you or not now coming over to coming over to balance sheet how you are going to prepare the balance sheet let me know of that equity and liability first of all you must write the heading neatly equity and liability under equity and liability first of all write shareholders fund under shareholder funds we shall write a share capital first under share capital i will write equity share capital in the balance sheet equity share capital first of all i will look at it is 100 lakhs 100 lakhs is debited first of all in entry number one so right now equity share capital balance is zero but it got credited by four lakhs it got credited by uh, equity share capital 10,000 into 100 is 100 lakh actually not 10 lakh equity share capital given in the balance sheet as uh, so that must be equal to 1 lakh share anyway don't worry about that 1 lakh share 1 lakh share of 40 each 40 lakh 60 lakh whatever it is correct 1 lakh 1 lakh share so 1 lakh shares of 100 is 10 lakh new equity share capital is 1 lakh share of 40 40 lakh so right now your equity share capital is 40 lakh and now we will look into the entries and try to find out whether we have issued any further equity share capital. Here we have issued further capital to the extent of 12 lakh. So that means our equity share capital now is 40 lakh plus 12 lakh that is equal to 52 lakh. Correct? We will write here 52 lakh. Is it clear to you? Then next item in the balance sheet is 12% preference share capital. Now 12% preference share capital is getting debited by 50 lakhs. So it's over 50 lakh. Right now preference share capital is 30 lakh. And in the upcoming entries, nowhere we have written what we call preference share capital. So preference share capital will be 40 lakh. 10% preference share capital will be equal to, will be equal to 30 lakh. Sorry, I told 40 lakh. So your total balance in share capital will be equal to 82 lakh 82 lakh correct then we will write reserves and surplus under the reserve and surplus in this particular question there was one item in the form of profit and loss account which is written off however a new item in the form of capital reserve will appear in the balance sheet because there was balance when we pass this entry reconstruction account debit there was a final balance of 50,000 correct and then after reserve and surplus we write non-current liability under the non-current liability in this particular question we had 10% debenture of 40 lakh but in the entry we debited 40 lakh and in a state, we issued 12% new debenture, 40,000 debenture of 70,000 each. 40,000 debenture of 70,000 each we have issued. So debenture in the new balance sheet will be equal to 28 lakhs. After non-current liability in the balance sheet, there are some current liabilities. Current liabilities. One is in the form of creditors. Now, out of creditors of 50 lakh, of 50 lakh, 20 lakh worth of trade creditors has been debited, have been debited in the entry, isn't it? So, that means 30 lakh worth of creditors are is still there. And then provision for tax, which earlier was at 1 lakh, has been increased by rupees 50,000. So provision for tax in the balance sheet will be equal to 1,50,000. This is how we will have to pass the entries, uh, prepare the balance sheet. Coming over to the asset side. Now as far as asset side is concerned,
as far as asset side is concerned first of all we will write non current asset under the non current asset we will write property plant and equipment first of all under property plant and equipment there are tangible fixed asset which is given in the question at 125 lakh now you have reduced tangible fixed asset by 37 lakh 50 thousand isn't it or not so tangible fixed asset in the balance sheet will appear at 87 lakh 50 thousand besides there are in this particular case investment non-current investments non-current investment non-current investments were given in the balance sheet at 10 lakh but we wrote off 50,000 out of it so the balance now is equal to 9 lakh 50,000 9 lakh 50,000 and finally remember one thing your other non-current asset preliminary expenses have been written off and now we are left off with current assets under the current asset in this question directly value 100 lakh is given and we reduce current assets by 55 lakh because their revised value was given to us at 45 lakh at 45 lakh so this is how you will have to do the end do the question we will go through the question once again however i have done it completely and comprehensively but still correct Yes, this is our first entry in this particular case. Equity share capital of 100 each. 100 lakh is the capital. And new capital is of 40 each. That is why 40 lakh. 1 lakh shares of 40. Reduced by 60 lakh. Reduced by 60 lakh. Because per, it is given in the question that equity share is reduced to 40. That means it is reducing by 60. And then we wrote the next entry. Preference share capital account. New preference share capital is 30 lakh and preference share capital is reducing by 20 lakh then 10 percent debentures and we issued them 12 percent debenture to the extent of 28 lakh 12 lakh is the gain trade payable 20 lakh they have they have waived off 40 percent 8 lakh that is why it is transferred to reconstruction and for the balance they were issued 30,000 equity shares of 40 each so 12 lakh and then regarding provision for tax we write we have written the entry reconstruction account debit to provision for tax account. Your total net balance is 99,50,000 out of which you have written off fixed asset, current asset, investments, profit or loss account and preliminary expenses and capital reserve is this much and this is your balance sheet. Equity share capital 52 lakh, 30 lakh I've already told you and then capital reserve and then debentures and trade payable are 30 lakh total is this much. And similarly, all these items I have written over there. So you can now manage this particular question. Coming over to the next one. Following is the balance sheet of one to be good looking limited. One to be good looking limited. Interesting question. 24,000 equity shares are given of 100 each. That is equal to 24 lakh. 12,000, 12% preference shares of 100 each, 12 lakh. Profit and loss account balance you need to take care of. 10% debenture, 6 lakh, creditors and bank overdraft is given. Land and building is given, plant and machinery is given, goodwill. You will have to write it off at any cost. Goodwill must be written off. Inventory 260, daters 280 and cash balance 30,000 is given. Question doesn't look very cumbersome. Correct. The preference share are reduced to fully paid preference shares of 75 each and equity share are to be reduced to rupees 40 each. Now first, as far as point number one is concerned, entry is very simple. Now your preference share capital, which earlier was of 100, it, is, it has come down to 75. So your entry will be 12% preference share capital account. 12,000 into 100, you will debit it. And it is reduced to 75. So two preference share capital, this is your new preference share capital, 12,000 into 75. And reconstruction account will be 12,000 into 25. This is the entry you have written over here. Preference share capital is 12 lakh. 
Now, Pefrin share capital, because you were having 12,000 shares, correct? So, 12,000 shares of 75 is your new capital. That is 9 lakh. And you will transfer to reconstruction 12,000 into 25. This is your old equity share capital, old preference share capital account. Similarly, equity share capital question says that reduce 2 rupees 40. 2 rupees 40. Now, equity share capital, if we look into the question, is given to us as 24,000 shares of 100 each. 24,000 shares of 100 each. So, first of all, I will write here 24 equity share capital account debit, 24,000 shares of 100 each, that is equal to 24 lakh. Then, equity share capital, 24,000 into, it is given in the question that equity share capital is reduced to 40 each. So, 24,000 into 40 will 9 lakh 60, this is your new equity share capital. And, Reduced by 60, 24,000 into 60, 14 lakh, 40,000 is your reconstruction account. The next thing is regarding debenture. Debenture holders took over inventories and trade receivable in full satisfaction of their claim. Now, debenture are worth rupees 6 lakh and they have taken over inventories. Inventories are given to you as 2 lakh 60 and they have taken over trade receivable that is data as 2 lakh 80. In full settlement they have taken. So your entry will be debenture account debit. They have taken over inventory worth rupees 260 and trade receivable worth rupees 280. So this total comes to 540. So that means it is a gain of 60,000 to us because they have taken these two assets in full satisfaction. Further in the question it is given that land and building is appreciated by 30% and plant and machinery is depreciated by 30%. Now, in this question, first of all, value of land has gone up by 360. Correct? Appreciation, you are going to pass this entry, land and building account debit to reconstruction account. We will take care of writing off of plant and machinery later on. But we will take first expenses of reconstruction 5000. See, whenever in the question it is given reconstruction expenses or any penalty charges or any fees and fines, in that case, you will have to pass two entries simultaneously. For example, reconstruction expenses, see here. Entry number A, reconstruction expense account debit 5,000 to bank account 5,000. Because reconstruction expenses, when we pay, this item was not written in the balance sheet. So expenses is a sort of loss to you. So that is why the reconstruction expenses must be written off and that must be written off immediately. That is very important. So, after passing down this entry, reconstruction account debit to bank account, you will you will have to pass another entry, reconstruction account debit. Now, you will debit the reconstruction expenses to what we call reconstruction account. So, reconstruction expense account debit to reconstruction expenses, another entry you will have to pass. Although you can, instead of passing these two entry, you could have passed directly reconstruction account debit to bank account. You could have passed this entry also, but I will not advise you to pass direct entry, it is better to pass in this manner. First you pay the reconstruction expense and then you debit the reconstruction expense to the reconstruction account. So on account of this, your cash will also reduce and your reconstruction account will also reduce by 5000 rupees. So your net balance after adding the credit items of reconstruction and subtracting the debit items of reconstruction is this much. And after that, you will have to write off in the question, goodwill is there, you will have to write off. Profit or loss account, you must write off. Plant and machinery is coming down by 30% and balance will be considered as capital reserve. And this is the balance sheet which you can prepare in this particular question. Then 1.6 in this particular section and 1.7. These two questions, you try to do it by yourself at least. Correct? So, I hope that after having gone through today's this particular session, now you must be feeling pretty what we call good about this particular chapter. It's not very tough, it's easy and not very complicated. So on such note, we take leave of you with the promise as always to meet you again in the next session. Of course, to stretch some further discussion. Okay then, bye. Hello and welcome again to this particular session. In the last one, we finished still up to 1.5 and at the same time, I had asked you to actually try to give a, try to attempt 1.6 and 1.7. I do not know how many among you have tried it. But anyway, 
if you have tried it's fine and if you haven't then also it's very fine let's go through 1.6 quickly and try to see actually what is there in this particular question the question states that following is the scheme of reconstruction and which has been approved uh, for down and out limited now the name of the company happens to be down and out limited that's very important and uh, following a scheme of reconstruction has been approved now in this particular question it's hardly of four marks to be very honest with you now in this particular question as you can see the shareholders to receive in lieu of their present holding of one lakh shares of rupees 10 each the following now after having gone through this particular line that presently the shareholding of the company is actually this much correct presently the shareholding of the company is equal to 1 lakh into 10 that is rupees 10 lakh and in terms of number there are 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each and shareholders are to receive in lieu of in lieu of means they are against their present holding of rupees 10 lakh present holding is 1 lakh shares of rupees 10 each that happens to be 10 lakh so against their present holding, the shareholder will receive new fully paid 10 equity shares equal to three-fifths of their holdings. New fully paid 10 equity share equal to three-fifths of their holding. What does it mean? That means against 10 lakh, against their present holding, the, ex the equity shareholder will receive new equity share capital new equity share capital and new equity share capital will be equal to three-fifths of their present holding now their present holding is equal to 10 lakh if i will compute three-fifths of this that comes to rupees six lakhs that means against their present holding they are receiving one six lakh worth of new equity share capital of rupees 10 each further they are also receiving 10 percent preference share equal to one-fifth of the above new equity share these equity share existing equity share one lakh shares of 10 each one they are going to receive new equity share capital second they are going to receive 10 percent preference share capital and 10 percent preference share capital will be equal to one fifth of the new holding not 10 lakh of the new holding so one fifth of six lakh that is equal to one lakh twenty thousand so equity shareholder will receive one lakh twenty thousand worth of 10 percent preference share also and rupees 40,000 8 percent deventure and they will also receive 8 percent deventure to, and it is given to the extent of 40,000. So against their present holding they are receiving 6 lakh worth of new equity share, 1 lakh 20,000 worth of reference share capital that comes to 726 lakh plus 120 and 40,000 worth of debentures. That means all in all they are receiving against 10 lakh only 7 lakh 60,000. So the remaining amount will be considered as gain to the company and it will be transferred to the reconstruction account and it will be equal to 2 lakh 40,000. It will be equal to 2 lakh 40,000. Your entry will be existing equity share capital that is 1 lakh into 10. You will debit it and then you will write towards the credit side to new equity share capital 6 lakh to 10 percent preference share capital 120 to 8 percent eventual 40,000 and to reconstruction account 2 lakh 40,000 this will be the first entry then in point number two question simply states that company issued 1 lakh 10 percent first eventual and payment was received in cash now as far as this point is concerned second point it is very simple here you will have to write as very simple entry bank account debit to 10 percent debenture account because company is issuing 10 percent debenture to the extent of rupees 1 lakh further in the question it is given that goodwill stood in the books at 1 lakh 40 thousand so you will have to write off plant and machinery stood at 2 lakh and was written down to 1 lakh 50 thousand so plant and machinery is uh, having a value of 2 lakh as per balance sheet but it has to be brought down to 1 lakh 50 that means we will have to reduce it by 50,000 and freehold property which stood at 1 lakh 50 was written down by 5,000 so freehold property has to be brought down by 50,000 that means now we have to write off the item in the reconstruction account we have seen that we have 2 lakh 40,000 worth of balance so first of all I will write goodwill to goodwill to the extent of 1 lakh 40,000 and then 
plant and machinery is to be brought down from 2 lakh to 1 lakh 50 so i will have to write it off by 50000 rupees isn't it or not correct after this a uh, freehold property it is given that is to be brought down by 50000 so there is no balance 2 lakh 40 2 lakh 40 so these are the three entries which you will have to pass and here it is you can also have a look over the solution detailed solution equity share capital old that is 10 lakh and we have issued 6 lakh worth of equity share as i told you equal to three fifth of 10 lakh and 1 lakh 20 thousand worth of preference share capital and 40 thousand worth of debentures and 2 lakh 40 were transferred to capital reduction account or reconstruction account then second entry was bank account debit to 10 percent first debenture account that is 1 lakh 1 lakh and last entry was capital reduction account debit or reconstruction account debit 2 lakh 40 and then we wrote off goodwill 140 we wrote wrote off plant and machinery 50000 and besides that freehold property by 50000 so it's a simple question you cannot prepare any balance sheet in this particular question because balance sheet is not given to you now we move over to 1.7 past examination question also the summarized balance sheet of luckless limited as on 31st of 3 2024 is given to you luckless limited is having the balance sheet and as far as balance sheet is given you have been given authorized issued subscribed and paid up equity share capital 5000 shares of 100 each that is equal to 5 lakh then 2500 preference shares of 100 each equal to 2 lakh 50 total share capital is 750 profit and loss account is having a debit balance of 10 lakh needless to add that you will have to write it off long-term borrowings in the form of debentures 8 percent debentures are given as far as current liabilities are given one in the form of short term borrowings that is loan from directors to the extent of 3 lakh and then other current liabilities are given in the form of bank overdraft and trade payables correct this is the question and asset side fixed asset tangible fixed asset freehold property plant and machinery total 5 lakh 50 then we have got goodwill and trademarks also to the extent of 1 lakh and 50 so 1 lakh 50 thousand and then we have current asset in the form of inventory finished goods then trade receivable for goods and deferred revenue expenditure deferred revenue expenditure you will have to write off correct following a scheme of internal reconstruction was framed and approved by the court uh, all the concerned parties implemented the preference share to be written down to rupees 25 each preference share capital to be written down to rupees 25 each now your preference share capital you must have seen what 2500 shares of 100 each so what will be your entry i did not require to tell you as far as this particular case is concerned so you have to bring it down by what we call 75 and the equity share two rupees 20 each an equity share has been brought down to actually 20 each equity share capital was also of 100 so equity shareholder is coming down by 80 each Further, the question says that each class of share then converted into shares of rupees handed each. What does this particular line uh, will uh, reflect that I will uh, let you know in a short while. Then debenture holders to take over freehold property having a book value of 2 lakh at rupees 2 lakh 50 thousand in part repayment of their holding. And remaining freehold property is to be well revalued at rupees 6 lakh. What does this particular line mean? Now see here, as far as your debentures are concerned, debentures are actually 5 lakh. There are total 5 lakh worth of debenture. Debenture holder are taking over your freehold property. Now your freehold property in the question which is given to you is equal to 4 lakh. Now question says that they are not taking over the entire freehold property. Please pay attention. In this case, what is happening? Deventure amount is equal to 5 lakh. And deventure holders are taking over freehold property. And it is given in the question that freehold property, which is having a book value of 2 lakh, was taken over at 2 lakh 50,000 in part repayment of their holding. In part repayment, not in full settlement. So, freehold property no doubt about that in the question it is given to you freehold property where it is given freehold property is 4 lakh now pay attention out of 4 lakh out of 4 lakh 2 lakh worth of freehold property is being taken over by debenture 
but debenture holder are taking over 2 lakh worth of property at 2 lakh 50,000. So out of 4 lakh, 2 lakh worth of freehold property is given to the debenture holders, but at a value of 2 lakh 50,000. At a value of 2 lakh 50,000. But this payment is being given not in full settlement. Please pay attention. So there will not be any gain. Only thing is that debenture holder now will come down by 2,50,000 because we have made a payment equal to 2,50,000 because they have taken over our what we call freehold property what 2 lakh at 2,50,000. Now in this case, two, three things are happening. One, your freehold property, first of all, indirectly, it means it is increasing by 50,000. So you will have to pass an entry freehold property account debit to reconstruction account because it is a sort of gain to you because your freehold property 2 lakh has gone up to 250. That is why dimension holders are taking over them at 2 lakh 50. So first of all, you will have to write one entry for this particular transaction in this manner. Freehold property account debit to reconstruction account. Secondly, this freehold property now what rupees 2 lakh 50 is given to the debenture holder so you will write the entry your debenture or uh, 8 percent debenture your second entry will be 8 percent debenture account debit to freehold property account since you have given freehold property of 2 lakh at 2 lakh 50 so debenture will reduce by 2 lakh 50 there is no gain in this case out of 5 lakh worth of debenture, remaining debenture 2 lakh 50 will still appear in the balance sheet because you have gave them payment in, you haven't given them the payment in full settlement. You have given them the payment in part settlement. Is it clear to you? And third important point, now your remaining freehold property is 2 lakh out of 4 lakh, 2 lakh worth of freehold property is given at 2 lakh 50. Now question says that this remaining part, this remaining part, has been revalued, remaining freehold property is to be valued at 6 lakh. Remaining freehold property has been valued at 6 lakh 50,000. 6 lakh 50,000. Remaining freehold property, which is worth 2 lakh, is valued at 6 lakh, sorry, not 6 lakh, 6 lakh 50. So that means remaining freehold property has gone up by 4 lakh. So again, you will have to pass, and this will be your third entry in connection with this transaction. The entry will be freehold property account debit to reconstruction account and the amount will be equal to 4 lakh. Amount will be equal to 4 lakh. Is it clear to you? This is how you are going to pass the entry. Loan from directors were waived off in full. Now what is the loan of director? It is given that loan from director is equal to 3 lakh and they have waived off entire loan. So your entry will be director's loan account debit to reconstruction account because it is a gain to you. Entire loan has been waived off. So, directors told that, well, we are not interested in taking back our loan. So, it's a gain for your company. Now, question says that inventory of 50,000 to be written, written off. So, you will have to write off. 12,500 is to be provided for bad debts. Then, question says that profit and loss account, trademark, goodwill and deferred revenue expenditure to be written off. We will write off trademark in this particular question. All other item, profit or loss account, goodwill and deferred revenue expenditure, we shall, we will have to actually write off at any cost whether information is given or not. Now, with respect to other intangible assets, other than, with respect to intangible assets other than goodwill, like trademarks, copyright, etc., these should be written off only when direction is there in the question. So, we will write off profit or loss account, trademark, goodwill and deferred revenue expenditure. Now, I will solve this particular question for you. This is your 1.7 question. I will keep the question sheet in front of me. After having done 1.6, now we will take up 1.7. So that is 1.7. Well, in question number 1.7, in the very first line, it is written that preference share to be written down to 25 and equity share to rupees 20 each. So we start off with this one. So 1.7 question. First of all, our entry number 1, that is reduction in reduction in preference share capital brought into books or simply you can write quick narration reduction in preference share capital if you will look into the balance sheet your preference share capital eight percent preference share capital existing preference share capital is eight percent and number of shares are two thousand five two thousand five hundred 
and it is given that one share is of 100. So, your existing preference share capital is equal to 2,50,000. So, you will write here first of all 2,50. Now, as per the direction of the question, preference share to be written down to 25. However, regarding rate of dividend, nothing is mentioned. So, we will keep the same rate of dividend, 8% preference share capital. So, your new preference share capital is still 8% preference share capital, but now the share is of 2500 into 25 because now preference share capital is reduced to actually 25 so 2500 into 25 is equal to 62500 as per my calculation and then we will write here two reconstruction accounts so 2500 share came down by 75 so 2500 into 75 will be your next entry 2500 into 75 that is equal to 187500 so this is the first entry in point number one one more entry you will have to pass another entry is with respect to equity share capital reduction in equity share capital now as far as reduction in equity share capital is concerned you will write the entry first of all existing equity share capital you will jab it in the balance sheet, your existing share capital, 5,000 shares of 100 each. So, first of all, you write this 5,000 into 100 each. That is equal to 5 lakh. Your existing preference share capital is debited or cancelled. Now, we will write two equity share capital. It was given in the question that equity shares have been reduced to rupees 20 each. So, our new equity share capital will be 5,000 shares of 20 each that is equal to 1 lakh correct so again there is a gain to the extent of 5000 into 80 so i will write here 5000 into 80 5000 into 80 that comes to 4 lakh correct now again in point number one we will have to pass another entry now question states that if we have gone through the first line that each class of shares then to be converted to shares of 100 each. Logically, now, preference share is of 25 each and equity share is of 20 each. Now, question states that each class of equity share is converted into 100 each. What does it mean? See here, now your new preference share capital is 8% preference share capital and you are having 62,500 now. So, conversion of Conversion of preference shares capital into rupees hundred rupees hundred per share. What does it mean? <clears throat> what does it mean? First of all, I will write now 8% preference share capital, 8% preference share, 2,50,000 worth of preference share capital is already gone, correct, cancelled. Right now, we are having only this much of preference share capital, so 8% preference share capital. Now, problem is that 8% preference share capital right now is 2,500 share of rupees 25. That means right now, one share is of 25. And amount as we computed earlier is equal to 62,500. 62,500. Is it clear to you? Now, if I will tell you that each class of share is being converted into 100, what does it mean? Now, I will write here. That means now I have again cancelled this capital. And now my, now my present capital will be 8% preference share capital. But how many number of share now? See, I will divide 62,500. 5 rupees 100 because I want to convert each share into 100. So it means now we are having 625 shares of rupees 100 each. This is the point. So finally in the balance sheet, in case if you would prepare your preference share capital will appear at this value, 62,500. Similarly, conversion of equity share capital into 100 per share into rupees 100 per share so 
So presently your equity share capital, capital after cancellation of the existing capital 5 lakh, present capital is just 5000 into 20. So first of all you will debit your present capital 5000 share of rupees 20. That is equal to 1 lakh. 1 lakh and you have converted rupees 1 lakh worth of shares into 100 so you divide it by 100 so that means now you have decided that your number of share will be 1000 and one share will be of 100 each so two equity share capitals two equity share capital account and you will write in bracket 1000 shares of rupees 100 each. So this will be the amount of equity share capital which will appear in the balance sheet. This was all related to point number one. Now in point number two the question says that deventure holder to take over freehold property. I told you in connection with deventures we shall have to pass three entries. One. Because freehold property worth rupees 2 lakh has gone up to 2 lakh 50. So first of all I will write appreciation in freehold property. Appreciation in freehold property. So my entry will be freehold property account debit to reconstruction account. Freehold property has gone up from 2 lakh to 2 lakh 50 thousand. So 50 thousand will be transferred to reconstruction. It is a gain to you. Isn't it or not? Then you will pass the second entry because this part of freehold property of 2 lakh has gone up to 2 lakh 50 and you have given it to debenture holders. So your next entry will be a part payment, part payment of debentures. You have given them freehold property worth 2 lakh at 2 lakh 50 in part payment and not in full settlement. So your entry will be 8% debenture account debit. So 8% debenture because they are receiving 2 lakh 50 thousand worth of property their claims will come down by 250 but there will not be any gain. Remember one thing. Correct. So 2. Uh, freehold property account. So freehold property worth actually 2,50,000 you have given it to debenture holders. Now the remaining freehold property is also of 2 lakh but as we saw the remaining freehold property was valued at 6 lakh. So again appreciation in remaining freehold property, appreciation in remaining freehold property. Remaining freehold property 2 lakh gone up to actually 6 lakhs. So your entry will be freehold property remaining to reconstruction. That is 4 lakh. Remaining freehold property has gone up from 2 lakh to 6 lakh. So this will be the entry which you are going to actually write. Is it clear to you or not? This is with respect to point number 2. Then loan from director to be waived in full. So Director's loan waived. Directors had provided loan of rupees 3 lakh to us, but this loan has been waived, so it is a gain to you because your liability in the form of director's loan is now reduced to zero. Director's loan account debit. Worth rupees 3 lakh to reconstruction account. This is the entry which you are going to pass 3 lakh. Now question says that we have to write off various items. So D, reconstruction account debit. So whatever balance in the reconstruction account is there that I will compute right now. But it is given that inventory of 50,000 to be written off. So we will write off inventories that is 50,000. Inventories 50,000. We will write off inventory worth rupees 50,000. Then it is given that we have to write off 12,000. We have to provide 12,500 for bad debts. So, two provision for bad debts. Provision 
for bad debts. Now provision for bad debts is 12,500. Further in the question it is given that we have to write off profit and loss account. Now we have gone through the question, we, have, we earlier went through the question and we found that profit and loss account is having a negative balance of 10 lakhs so we shall have to write it off. It is given in the question that trademarks to be written off so I shall write off trademarks also. Trademarks in the question is actually 50,000 so I will write it off by 50,000. Also given in the question that we have to write off goodwill. We would have written off goodwill irrespective of the information. One lakh and deferred revenue expenditure are always written off. Deferred revenue expenditure means preliminary expenses, underwriting commission, discount on issue of shares, etc. So deferred revenue expenditure are worth rupees 25,000. So we shall have to write off all these items. Now let me see actually what is the total balance in the reconstruction account. So we shall have to add off all the item reconstruction. First of all, 1,87,500 in entry number one. In entry number two, we have 4 lakh worth of balance. So I will add 4 lakh. And then I am going to add, I am going to add, add, add. Again 50,000, so plus 50,000. Because of appreciation, correct? And then again 4 lakh, so plus 4 lakh. So total gain is actually 10 lakh 37,500 and then plus 3 lakh directors have also written off so 13 lakh 37,500 as per my calculation 13 lakh 37,500 and then we will subtract all these items less 50,000 less 12,500 less 10 lakh less 50,000 less 1 lakh 25,000 so still there is a balance of 1 lakh and this balance will be transferred to capital reserve this balance will be transferred to capital reserve so that is equal to 1 lakh so this is how we would do this particular question is it clear to you or not so well then with that we come to the end of section one and now we move over to section two now what is given in section two let's have a look over here first correct now section two starts with a question very interesting question the part and this question has been taken from past examinations the balance sheet of Cum Finance Hell Limited. Names are very interesting. Correct. The balance sheet of Cum Finance Hell Limited is as follows. And you can see there are 12,007% cumulative preference shares of rupees 50 each. Total amount given to you is 6 lakh. And then you have been given 15,000 equity shares of rupees 50 each. And when we were going through this particular line in the bracket, it is also mentioned that preference dividend is in area for five years. Remember one thing, actually preference dividend in area is not a liability for the company. It is never ever written in the balance sheet. If I'm going to ask you whether it is written in the balance sheet or not, perhaps you may say, yes, sir, it is written in the balance sheet. No, it is not written in the balance sheet because preference dividend amount is not put up anywhere correct this is the amount of preference share capital it is just an information so information can be provided by way of what we call note in this manner or generally notes are provided below the balance sheet first of all preference dividend is not a liability why it is not a liability you need to understand first of all what is the meaning of preference dividend in area for five years let me clear it out first of all before we go ahead and this is a very important point which you need to understand seven percent cumulative preference share Cumulative preference share means generally if we are, if we will not pay to the preference shareholder dividend in the current year, it will keep on accumulating correct till we would pay that particular uh, dividend. 
that is what we mean by cumulative preference share. In case of cumulative preference share, dividend keeps on accumulating till you would pay that particular amount. Suppose if I compute 7% of 6 lakh, that I think comes to 42,000 and dividend is in area since last 5 years. Question says, so since last 5 years, company hasn't paid any dividend to the preference shareholder. So 6 lakh into 7% into 5 that comes to 2 lakh 10,000 not 2 lakh 10,000 although our company is supposed to pay to the preference shareholder 2 lakh 10,000 but it is not a liability remember one thing what is a liability suppose if I take loan from the bank let us say I have today I have taken a loan of rupees 10 lakh from the bank where I am going to put 10 lakh the cash which I would receive of course it will appear towards the asset side and at the same time, I will have to create a liability in the form of bank load. And that liability will be written what we call in the balance sheet. That is known as recorded liability. That means whatever liability like trade payables, loans or other liabilities which we have written over here, they, these are considered as real liability. Now, as I was giving you the example with respect to the loan. We have taken a loan of rupees 10 lakh. So, we will record in the cash and at the same time, we will also record it as a liability. Point here is that if as per the stipulated date, as per the agreed date, if our enterprise or entity would fail to pay the amount of dividend, then what will happen? If fail to pay the amount of loan, then what will happen? Bank have the legal bank will have the legal right to what we call put up a case against us and recover their amount. That means liability is something for which we are bounded. We have to pay it off. And if we would uh, fail, then legal actions can be initiated against us. However, that is not true of what we call preference dividend. Why? Why preference dividend is not a liability? You may ask actually. The reason is very simple. First of all, dividend is always payable out of profit. You know better than I actually. Number one, dividend is always payable out of profits. You have already seen that under the case of internal reconstruction, we know that the position of the company is very weak, very feeble, and it is not very strong. Correct? Obviously, it also <coughs> symptomizes that company is not earning sufficient amount of profit as we have already seen. That means company right now is not earning profit. So, moreover, we are not under any pressure to pay the dividend. And now, for a moment, just forget it. I say that if the company is earning the profit, let us see, if a, if a particular enterprise is earning the profit and come director of the company decide to not to pay dividend, the shareholder will not have any right to put up a legal case against us. Are you getting my point or not? That means payment of dividend is sole discretion and choice of the director. If they want to pay, they will pay the dividend. If they won't, then no one can actually really take up any legal action against them. However, at the same time, if the company is earning the profit and if company would not pay the dividend, quite obviously, the image of the company will take a no strike. That's a different question. That's a different matter. Is it clear to you or not? But payment of dividend is not a liability. Is it clear to you or not? Now just, in this case, our enterprise is supposed to pay to the preference shareholders 2 lakh 10,000 rupees. Logically, we are supposed to pay, but we are not legally bounded to pay. So that is why it is not a liability. That is why preference dividend is always reflected by way of footnote, number one. Number two, you need to understand in this manner. Suppose today, suppose today I tell you, please pay, pay attention. Let us say today I tell you I will pay you 2 lakh 10,000 rupees. Or let us say one of my friend is asking a loan of rupees 2 lakh 10,000 from me. I tell him, okay, I will pay you 2 lakh 10,000 rupees. My friend is asking a loan of 2 lakh 10,000. And I tell him, okay, well, I will pay you after some time. But I know about the what we call nature of my friend. He has a habit of what we call expecting the amount from his so-called friends. And he has a habit of not to return them. So that is the reason I simply want to avoid this scenario. I simply tell him, okay, well, give me two, three days time. After two, three days, that fellow, correct, shamelessly again comes back to me and asks me, well, what you have decided? I tell him, well, Right now, I am having only 10,000 rupees. I can pay you at the most 10,000. Try to understand my point. My friend says, okay, you pay me 10,000. 
and he is more than happy because he simply want he is more interested in what we call extracting the money out of me but here you try to understand i was not supposed to pay him 2 lakh 10 thousand because i because i haven't what we call taken loan from my friend in fact my friend is asking a loan of 2 lakh 10 thousand from me so i was not under any legal liability to pay him 2 lakh 10 thousand but when my friend insisted succinctly continuously ultimately i churned out 10000 to him the should i feel happy that i have got a gain of rupees 2 lakh because he was asking for 2 lakh 10000 i paid him 10000 i should not feel happy over the matter rather i should feel sad about the fact that 10000 gone and i know that those those 10000 rupees will never be returned to me are you trying to understand my point so even though I am not supposed to pay to my friend anything. Still, I paid him 10,000. Logically, it is, this 10,000 is lost to me. I should not feel happy over the matter that I have saved two lakhs. Is it clear to you? Likewise, payment of dividend is not a liability for the company. And you must understand, as far as preference, that this is a very important point. Any portion of preference dividend which will be paid by company, any portion, let us say out of 2,10,000 company decides to pay 2,10,000 full amount. Let us say company decides to pay 2,10,000 full amount. Correct? So, entry will first, the, this entity will pass an entry like this. Preference dividend account debit to bank account because we have paid the dividend. Suppose company decides to pay the dividend in cash or sometime company say, well, I will, we will issue you equity share. So, whether the dividend has been paid by way of cash bank or what we call equity shares, we have made the payment. Let us say 2,10,000 worth of payment we have made. But since we were not obliged to pay and still we made the payment, that is why preference dividend is considered as a loss. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly here, we I was not obliged to pay him 2,10,000. I paid him 10,000. It is a loss to me. Similarly to the entity, pre payment of preference dividend is always considered as loss and that is why whatever amount you paid will be debited to reconstruction account and you will have to pass another entry like this. Suppose this is one scenario. Suppose the second scenario is that to out of 2,10,000, the entity decides to pay only, only 10,000 rupees. Let us say, similar to this one. Neither I nor this particular company is under any obligation to pay 2 lakh 10,000. But in spite of that, if we are making some payment, that is a loss. For example, if I will pay 10,000 in this case, my entry will be preference dividend account debit to bank account, first of all. Correct? This will be my entry. And whatever I have paid, it is a loss to me. So that is why I will have to pass another entry, reconstruction account debit to preference dividend account. Now you may think, sir, what about 2 lakh? Nothing. Because we haven't received anything, we have received preference share capital. We haven't received anything by way of 2 lakh 10,000 from preference share capital. Similar to here, I haven't received anything from the friend. So whatever I am paying, that is a loss. Whatever I am paying, I will loss. And rest amount, no treatment will be done. You should not consider it as a gain. Because sometimes student fraternity get confused. Suppose if it is given in the question that out of 2 lakh 10,000, company decide to pay actually 10,000 of dividend, you may think that 2 lakh is gain. No, no treatment will be done because this 2 lakh is nothing. Point is that you haven't received anything what we call 2 lakh 10,000 from anywhere else. So if you haven't received anything from anywhere, and in spite of that, if you are making a payment against the same, so that is considered as loss in accounts. I hope it, you got that. Uh, what we call complete uh, understanding of preference dividend. So that portion of preference dividend which is paid, that is a loss and will be written off after the payment. And regarding the what we call remaining one, we will uh, no, we will not pass any entry. Is it clear to you or not? So this is the point with respect to preference dividend and it is very important. So after having gone through this particular point, now in this particular question, uh, what else is given? Then we have in this case loans to the extent of 5,73,000 and we have trade payables and other liability to the extent of 35,000. 
and then we have got in this case buildings buildings cost less depreciation sometime again student fraternity get confused over this particular term see it is nothing new whatever item we write in the balance sheet especially the non current asset those items are always after charging the depreciation so it is not a new line for us similarly plant 268 trademarks and goodwill 318000 and inventory this time is 4 lakh and trade receivable and profit or loss account is given towards the asset side it is a loss correct the company is the company is now earning profit company is presently earning profit but short of working capital and for the same a scheme of reconstruction has been approved by both the classes of the shareholder and summary of the scheme is as follows what is point number one the equity shareholder have agreed that their 50 share rupees 50 share will be reduced to rupees 2.50 by cancellation of 47.50 per share that means out of 50 share is reduced by 47.50 correct so what will be our first entry in this particular case suppose if i am going to ask you regarding this particular entry my entry will be equity share capital account debit what is my equity share capital let me have a look over it first of all 12 15,000 equity shares of 50 each. So my present equity share capital is 15,000 shares of rupees 50 each and it is given to you as 7,50,000. 7,50,000. 7 then you are going to write here two equity share capital account because your equity share capital has been reduced to 2.50. I think it is 37,500. <coughs> 15,000 into 2.50 is equal to 37,500. So 37,500. And in this case, company is having big gain, 15,000 into 47.50. 47 47.50. So that, <coughs> that will be equal to 15,000 into 47.50 that is equal to 7,12,500. Correct? This is our first entry. And in this information, point number one, further it is written, they, they means the equity shareholder. They have also agreed to subscribe for three new equity shares of 2.50 each for each equity share held. I told you under the scheme of internal reconstruction, equity shareholder fraternity happens to be the most suffering fraternity, correct? Because they do not have any right, they do not have any room to protest, correct? I have already told you. So uh, that is the reason actually they will have to show the lot of cooperation because they want to see the company alive because they know that if the company would get liquidate, then their entire contribution will be lost. However, if the company remains alive, then at least they will live in the hope that come in future the prospects of the company would improve and perhaps they might be able to actually recover some amount. So that is the reason equity shareholder, as you can see, first of all, they willingly become ready to reduce their share from 50 to 2.50. So they have reduced their, their share by 47.50. Not only this, they have also decided under this point, the second entry, not only this, the equity shareholders, further what they have decided that we will subscribe to some no, some more share of the company. For example, presently the number of share of the company is 15. Now question says that <coughs> equity shareholder also agreed to subscribe for three new equity share of rupees 2.5 each for each equity share. That means every she every equity shareholder divided by one is willing to subscribe three more share. That means fifteen thousand into three indirectly or directly company is issuing forty five thousand more share to the existing shareholder. And because one share is now of two point five zero each, so that means equity shareholder willingly first of all actually reduce their share by forty seven point five zero. And they are also willingly actually buying more share of the company so that company has some what we call working capital to equity share capital account. This is the entry. So 15,000 divided by 1 into 3 into 2.50 that comes to 1,12,500. 1,12,500. So 
So on account of this entry, the equity share capital will increase and the bank balance too will also increase. This is regarding point number one. Regarding point number two, the preference shareholder have agreed to cancel the arrears of dividend. There will be no entry. That means preference shareholder waived off entire dividend. That means you this time the company will not pay any dividend. But it should not surprise you that we are not going to pass any entry because I have already told you that portion of the preference dividend will, which will be paid, only treatment of that particular portion will be done. And that portion which is remaining or which is waived off, correct, or which is not paid, you can say, so no treatment is there. And so cancellation of uh, preference shareholder have agreed to cancel the areas of dividend and to accept for each 50 per share, four new preference shares of rupees 10 each, plus six new equity shares of 2.50, all credited as fully paid. As far as point number two is concerned, I have already told you, first of all, no entry for cancellation of dividend. You need not require to write it in the examination. I am simply trying to tell you. No entry for cancellation of dividend. Cancellation means dividend is completely waived off. No cancellation, sorry, no entry for cancellation of preference dividend. So you need not require to pass any entry for the same. However, further it is given that preference shareholder have agreed to cancel arrears or dividend and to accept for each rupees 50. And to accept for each rupees 50, uh, four new preference shares and six new equity shares. So, in this case, first of all, let me see actually what is the amount of preference share capital. 12,000 shares and one share is of 50. Present preference shares are 6 lakh. Correct, 6 lakh. 7% preference share capital. 7% preference share capital. 12,000 shares are there. One share is of 50 each. So, we will cancel it out. Debit. 6 lakh. Now, preference shareholder, what they are telling us? Preference shareholder to accept for each 50, for each 50, remember for each share it means, because one share is of 50. If you are the preference shareholder of the company, that means one share is of 50. That means for every share, you are accepting four new 5% preference share of 10 each. So, preference shares are being allotted 5% preference share capital. There are 12,000 shareholder for each share divided by 1. They are getting 4 new preference share into 4. Each shareholder will get 4 share, but now 1 share is of 10 each. So, 12,000 into 1. Multiply it with 4, that comes to 48,000 into 10, that is equal to 4,80,000. Preference shareholders accepted 5% preference shares and besides that, they have also accepted plus 6 new equity shares. So, equity share capital is also being given to preference shareholders. 12,000 preference shareholders are there. Each share is accepting that we will get 6 equity shares and 1 equity share is of 2.50, so into 2.50. That means existing preference shareholder agree to take 5% preference share worth 480 and 12,000 share equal to 12,000 divided by 1 into 6 into 2.50. That comes to 1,80,000. So, that means in order to settle the preference shareholder, this time how much payment company is giving to the preference share? If you will add this, it will be equal to 660000 I have already told you, it is not easy to get the cooperation of the preference shareholder. So sometime in order to seek their cooperation, company incurs losses also. So you must have noticed that in this particular case, against 6 lakh, company is offering 6 lakh 60000 so that is why here reconstruction account, this time there is no gain, rather there is a loss to the extent of 60,000. So this will be the entry which you are going to pass. Now coming over to point number 3, 
lenders to the company of 150000 have agreed to convert their loan into share and for this purpose they will be allotted 12000 new preference shares of rupees 10 each and they will be allotted 12000 new equity shares of 2.5 each lenders of 150 if you look into the balance sheet there is loan to the extent of 573000 out of this loan question says that 150000 worth of lenders 150000 worth of lenders have agreed to accept preference shares and equity shares so your entry with respect to this will be entry number 3 in this case will be like this lenders account debit because in the question actually in the balance sheet it is given loan so you must debit loans you can write in bracket lenders so 150000 worth of lenders they have agreed uh, to convert their loan into shares and for this purpose they will be allotted 12000 equity shares so i will write here two equity share capital account that is 12000 and one equity share is of 2.5 each how much it will be equal to i think 30000 12000 into 2.5 that comes to 30000 right 30000 and then you are going to write here because they have accepted 12000 preference shares and equity shares so 12000 preference shares are also being given and new preference share capital is 5% preference share capital correct so 12000 shares we are giving them and new preference share capital is of 10 each so this time there is no loss or gain but at the same time we must see to it actually that loan account has reduced by 150 that mean in the balance sheet loan was 573 150 is debited so in the new balance sheet uh, i think it will be equal to 573 minus 150 that is equal to 423 so 423 worth of loan will still appear in the new balance sheet is it clear to you and further it is given in point number 4 that directors have agreed to subscribe in cash 40000 new equity shares of 2.5 each in addition to any shares subscribed by them under case a what does it mean if you must remember that even in under point number 1 directors had earlier subscribed sub shares correct because they have also subscribed three new equity share it was given so question is simply it means question is simply stating it means that company is issuing 40000 shares and these shares are being subscribed by the directors so you will have to pass a very simple entry bank account debit to equity share capital account 40000 shares of rupees 2.50 2.50 so that is equal to 40000 into 2.5 that comes to 1 lakh so this is the entry which you are going to pass further it is given of the cash received in point number 5 of the cash received by issue of new shares 2 lakh is to be used in reducing the loan due by the company how much cash company has received through issue of share you must not forget that in the very first information correct you have received you have issued some equity share so you received 112500 from here and just now you have issued some more share again 1 lakh you have received so 2 lakh 12500 you have received and question says that whatever amount you have received by way of issue of equity shares out of that 2 lakh used in reducing the loan so again the loan amount will reduce so loan account debit 2 lakh worth of loan will reduce further and you will write your two bank of course your bank account will also come down by rupees 2 lakh now and finally the question says that equity share capital cancelled is to be applied in writing of debit balance of profit or loss account and writing of 35000 from the value of the plant and further any balance remaining is to be used in writing down the value of trademarks and goodwill first of all i will check what is the balance in reconstruction account i will check it don't worry and out of that i have to write off profit and loss account in this question 
and then we have to write off plant and machinery by 35,000. And first of all, let me check the profit and loss account balance is 4,51,000. So 4,51,000 worth of profit and loss I will write off. Plant and machinery 35. And then question says that whatever balance is there, debt balance is used in writing of trademarks and goodwill. So only balancing figure will be used in writing off. Now what is the amount in the what we call reconstruction? First of all, let us check it up. In point in entry number one A, reconstruction seven lakh twelve thousand five hundred. Then in entry number two, reconstruction got debited, so I will debit sixty thousand. And then in entry number three, there is there is no gain or lo loss. In entry number 4, no gain or loss. In entry number 5, no gain or loss. So your net balance in reconstruction account is 6,52,500. So from here on, you will subtract these items and whatever balance will be there, that will be used in writing of what we call trademarks and goodwill. Is it clear to you? So this is the solution of the question also which I have put up here. Equity, I have already explained the entire question and solved it, but just to give you a better idea. Equity share capital 750 reduced by 2.5, now 37,500. New equity share capital is 7,12,500. If you want to know what will be the balance of equity share capital in the new balance sheet, correct? So right now your equity share capital is just 37,500 because your existing equity share capital is cancelled. So presently your balance is this much, correct? Then again you made an entry bank account debit to equity share capital. Because of this entry two things are happening. One equity share capital is getting credited. So you will write here 1,12,500. I am trying to tell you how to find the balance which you are going to write in the balance sheet. And your bank balance will also increase. Your bank balance in the question, there is no bank balance in the question, correct? So because of this entry, because of this entry, your bank balance has also gone up to 1,12,500. Then in entry number three, preference share capital got cancelled, correct? Reconstruction is debited and enough 5% preference share capital is there worth rupees. These are rough points. 5% preference share capital is 4,80,000. Now, your old preference share capital is cancelled. Now, your present preference share capital is actually 4,80,000. And you have issued equity share also again. So, again, your equity share capital will get credited. You will have to add it. Is it clear to you? Then, you made the entry in point number 4, loan account debit to preference share capital and to equity share capital. Because of this entry of preference share capital, 5% preference share capital will increase, increase by 1,20,000. And at the same time, equity share capital will also increase by 30,000. So this is how we can find out easily. You can do it in calculator itself. I'm giving you a sort of idea. Next entry is bank account debit to equity share capital. Because of it, two things are happening. Your bank balance is going up by 1 lakh. And secondly, your equity share capital is also moving up by 1 lakh. Correct? And then loan account debit to bank account. Because of this, your bank balance will reduce by 2 lakh. And of course, loan account will also reduce by 2 lakh. So, if you will total it up, this will be your equity share capital. This will be your bank balance. That is 12,500 after plus minus. And preference share capital will be equal to 6 lakh. This is how you can easily prepare the balance sheet. For example, when I, in this question, balance sheet is not asked. Well, we are, we were going through the entry. We have final entry. Net balance is 6,52,500. Profit and loss account written off. Plant account written off. And this is the balancing figure which you will write off. I will tell you how to prepare the balance sheet also in case if it, it would have been asked. I have already told you what will be the amount of equity share capital. And, and now what will be the amount of preference share capital? That is 6 lakh. Loan account, 5,73,000 was there. First of all, 1,50,000 loan was debited and again 2 lakh worth of loan was debited. So, finally in the new balance sheet, your loan account will be 2,23,000.
correct? Because out of 5,73,000, 1,50,000 were given preference share and equity share and 2 lakh were paid. That means out of 5,73,000, 350,000 worth of loan has debited and whatever remaining balance is there, that will appear in the balance sheet. Trade payable will appear at 2,7,000. Other liability will appear at this value. And regarding assets, you can easily write. It's not a big issue. So this is 2.1. Coming over to this particular question, 2.2. Correct? But we'll pick up this particular question as the time limit is coming to an end. Correct? So we will pick this particular question in the next session. Hello and welcome again to this particular session. After finishing 2.1, now we pick up 2.2 to start this one. Here it is given to you that as far as share capital is concerned, 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each, 10 lakh, then 4,000, 8% preference share capital, 4 lakh, as you can see, one share is of 100. Equity shares are of rupees 10 each. Of course, there is profit and loss account debit balance. We have to write it off. 8% debentures, director's loan, and then trade payables, and then areas of interest now you have to pay attention in this particular case actually the debenture amount is 4 lakh and areas of interest on debenture happens to be 24 so their total what we call claim is equal to 424 correct besides that we have got freehold property plant and machinery and trade investments and then as far as current assets are concerned stock in trade and daters First of all, it is given to us that preference share are brought down to 80 and equity share are brought down to rupees 2 each. So if I'm going to consider this particular point, in this particular point, there are two entries. One is related to preference shares. We have already seen that our preference share is 8% preference shares of 100 each. So 8% preference share, 8% preference share capital. And 8% preference share given to us is 4,000 shares of 100 each. So 4,000 into 100. That is equal to 4 lakh. And preference share capital is coming down 2 rupees 80. Regarding rate of dividend, nothing is mentioned. So we will keep the same rate of dividend. And 4,000 into 80, you are going to put up the new preference share capital and 3,20,000 and of course your gain is 4,000 into 20, 80,000, correct? As far as second entry in this particular case is concerned, equity share capital as you can see in the balance sheet equity share capital given to you 1 lakh shares of 10 each. So 1 lakh shares of 10 each. So first of all you are going to write 10 lakh and then 2 equity share capital account. Equity share capital is written down to rupees 2 rupees, written down to 2. So now equity share capital will be equal to 2 lakh. And as far as your reconstruction is concerned, reconstruction will be equal to 1 lakh into 8. That is equal to 8 lakhs. Correct? 9 point number 2. Again, this point is related to preference dividend. I told you in the last session regarding treatment of dividend, that portion of dividend which is to be paid is considered as a loss. While that part of the dividend, correct, which is not paid, no entry is passed regarding the same. Preference dividend is in area for three years and question says that to be waived by two-third. So two-third is waived. <coughs> no entry will be passed for the portion which is foregone or which is waived off or which is remit off. Correct. And for the balance one-third equity shares of rupees two to be allotted. That means out of Total dividend two-third is waived off, one-third is to be paid. So we have to pass the entry for the portion which we are paying off. For example, in this case, for, let me first of all compute total dividend. If I am going to compute the total dividend, in order to understand the next entry, point number two, I think it was. In point number two, first of all, let me show you total preference dividend in area. Total preference dividend in area is how much? Total preference dividend in area. 
Now, total preference dividend in area will be equal to this much. Your present preference share capital is 4,000 share. That is 8% preference share capital. Preference dividend in area, you must compute on your existing share capital. So, one year dividend is equal to this much and three years dividend will be equal to how much? So, 4 lakh into 8% into, into 3. That comes to 96,000. So, total preference dividend is equal to 96,000. Now, question says that out of 96,000, two-third is waived off. That means we need not require to pay two-third. Two-third is not is not to be paid at it is waived off and I told you we are not going to pass entry no entry for the same correct because we haven't received anything against this particular thing in fact we haven't received anything are you getting my point or not even though that particular thing if it would get waived off so it is not going to bring us any what we call the physical sort of gain you can say so so no entry for the portion which is waived off however the question has decided that one third portion will have to be paid off and we are making the payment this time by issuing equity share but one third will be paid off so we will have to pass the entry for this particular portion paid off portion correct and what will be the entry just a moment ago i told you when you will make the payment your entry will be preference dividend account debit Preference dividend account debit. So one third of 96,000, first of all, you compute that is equal to 32,000. So 32,000 worth of payment you will make, but this payment is being made by way of equity shares. And if you want to know how many equity share you are issuing, you have to divide it by two because one equity share now is having a value of rupees two. That means you must have issued 16,000 shares of rupees two each. To make a payment of 32,000. However, <coughs> however, preference dividend which you have paid, the portion which you have paid is considered as a loss because you, I, as I have been telling so often, we haven't received anything. Total preference dividend 96, but we haven't received anything against the same. So even if that particular thing is getting waived off, no entry will be passed but if we haven't received anything and we are paying it off so it is considered as a loss that is why it must be written off to reconstruction and it is always better to write it off immediately to preference dividend so these two entries you are going to pass as far as payment of preference dividend is concerned is it clear to you or not correct so this is with respect to point number two what is given with respect to point number three deventure holder agree to take one freehold property at its book value of three lakh one freehold property at its book value of three lakh in part payment of their holdings and balance deventure is to remain as a liability of the company similar to the one but only difference is that one part of the freehold property is being taken over. Now, total freehold property is 5,50,000. One part of it, which is having a value of 3 lakh, correct? One part of it, which is having a value of 3 lakh, is taken over at this value by the deventure holder. So, deventure holders are worth rupees 4 lakh and they have taken over freehold property for rupees 3 lakh in part payment. In part payment. You have to understand this. So, our entry will be like this, in this particular case, point number, point number 3. Point number 3, as far as is concerned, this is point number 3. Correct? Point wise, I am trying to make you understand. Point number 3. In this case, there are 8, there are debentures, what is the percentage of the debentures? 6%, so often I forget the percentage. Now, percentage in this particular case is 6%. So, 6% debenture, which are given in the question at rupees 4 lakh. They are taking over one of your freehold property, but they are taking over the freehold property at the book value. So, no appreciation. Last time, there was appreciation. Book value worth 2 lakh was taken over at 250. But this time, 3 lakh worth of property is being taken over at 3 lakh. So, we will have to pass this entry. Correct? And then, 
Balanced debenture will remain as liability, no doubt. Further, areas of debenture interest to be paid in cash. Now, in point number four, debenture interest to be paid in cash. As you know, there are what we call areas of interest on debenture. Correct? So, we are making a payment against the same areas. Now, this is a recorded liability. When you are paying a recorded liability, so this time it is not a gain. Only thing is that your liability is getting reduced. Areas of deven areas of interest on debenture. Interest on debenture account debit to cash account. This is the entry which you are going to write. Correct? Amount is 24,000. Is it clear to you? Coming over to point number 5. Point number 5 states that remaining freehold property is to be valued at 4 lakh. In order to understand this point, first of all, you need to have a look over the freehold property. In the balance sheet, your freehold property is actually 5 lakh 50 thousand. Out of 5 lakh 50 thousand, we have just seen that 3 lakhs worth of freehold property has already been given to debenture holders. So that means the remaining freehold property is equal to how much? That is equal to 2,50,000. And question says that remaining freehold property is being valued at rupees 4 lakh. Is being valued at 4 lakh. So remaining freehold property is being valued at 4 lakh. So what will be your entry? I need not require to tell you. Your entry will be freehold property account debit to reconstruction account. And the amount of gain will be equal to 1,50,000. This is the entry which you are going to pass for this. Point number six states that investments were sold out for rupees two lakh fifty thousand. So as far as your this entry is concerned, entry will be bank account debit to freehold property account. To freehold property account. Sorry, to investment account. Investment has been sold for rupees two lakh fifty thousand. Investment in the balance sheet was worth rupees two lakh. An investment has been sold out for rupees uh, for rupees two lakh fifty thousand. So bank account debit so bank account debit two lakh fifty thousand to investment account investment worth two lakh is moving out. So you have a gain this time. That is equal to 50,000. Is it correct? Now question says that 75% of the director's loan to be waived off and for the balance equity shares of two each have been issued. So in order to understand this particular point, what is your director's loan? First of all, you see to it, director's loan account debit. I think it is 3 lakh, but let me check it out. Director's loan is 3 lakh. Yes, it is. So, director's loan is 3 lakh. First of all, you write here 3 lakh. It is written 75% is waived off. That part which is waived off is a gain to you because it is a recorded liability and recorded liability is being waived off. So, it is a gain. So, 2 lakh 25,000 is gain to you. You will transfer it to reconstruction account and for the balance, balance means 75,000. For the balance, we are issuing equity share of rupees 2 each. If you want to know how many equity share you are issuing, divide 75,000 by rupees 2. Further, it is given that 40% of the trade receivable, so we will compute 40% of the trade receivable, 80% of the stock we will compute, and 100% of debit balance or profit or loss account to be written off. We will write them off. Don't worry about that. Further, it is given in point number 9. Companies' contractual commitment amounting to 6 lakh have been settled by paying 5% penalty of contract value. You have heard about contracts. Our enterprise might have taken a contract. This company, our company might have entered into a contract or might have taken a contract. Correct, let us say to construct something. And the value of the contract is rupees 6 lakh. But due to some reason, we cancelled this contract. Because our company has cancelled this contract. So when one party cancels the contract, it 
it is supposed to pay the penalty. So we paid penalty. No treatment of 6 lakh will be done. But the penalty which we are paying, I have already told you <clears throat> so many times, reconstruction expenses, penalty charges, you will make the payment and then you will write it off also. So in this case, in point number 9, actually first I am taking up point number 9 to make you understand. Your entry will be first of all, uh, penalty charges account debit. You will pass the entry for payment of penalty charges. Penalty charges account debit to bank account or cash account, whatever you may like to write. You will compute 5% of 6 lakh. That means 30,000 you had to pay as a sort of fee or fine. Correct? And this will be considered as a loss. So you immediately write it off to reconstruction account. Reconstruction account debit to penalty charges account. And you can pass one entry also if you wish so. If you want to pass a single entry, you can see penalty charges, penalty charges will get cancelled. Your entry will be reconstruction to cash. But it is better to write it in this manner. Right. So these are the things which, are, which we are supposed to do in this particular question. I will quickly go through it now because I have explained and almost solved every question. 8% preference share capital of 100 converted to 80, so 320 and reconstruction has gone up by 80,000. Correct? Further equity share capital in the balance sheet is 8 lakh, came down to 2 lakh and we posted 8 lakh to the reconstruction account. Then we passed the entry for preference dividend, 32,000, 32,000 entry was preference dividend to equity share capital. And then we debited the preference dividend to reconstruction account, reconstruction account debit to what we call preference dividend account. Then 6% debentures were given 3 lakh worth of freehold property. Our entry is 8% account debit to freehold property account. Accrued interest is paid off. So accrued interest account debit 24,000 to bank account. This is the entry which you are going to write. Remaining freehold property, which was worth rupees actually uh, 2 lakh 50,000, uh, not exactly 2 lakh 50, let me see of how much. Two, yes, remaining freehold property was 2 lakh 50 and went up to 4 lakh. So this is the entry. Freehold property account debit to reconstruction 1 lakh 50. Then we sold the investment bank account debit to trade investment to reconstruction account. Then director's loan. S Director loan 75% is waived, we transfer to reconstruction account and for the remaining, we issued equity share capital, correct? Then just a moment ago, I told you about the penalty charges, penalty charges account debit 30,000 to bank, that is 30,000. And then we have written off penalty charges to reconstruction account 30,000, 30,000. So when you will compute the balance in reconstruction account, it is important that, it is important that, you this is the credit balance 80,000 so you will add this is also you are going to add however reconstruction here is getting debited so you must actually subtract the same and then and then and then where is reconstruction account here it is reconstruction add 1 lakh 50 and then again you add 50,000 and again you add 2 lakh 25,000 subtract 30,000 because you have debited penalty charges, so the net balance in reconstruction account will be 12,43. And as per the director of, direction of the question, you will write a 5,25,000 worth of profit or loss account in full. And question has talked about that trade receivables uh, uh, will be written off by 40%. So 40% of trade receivable 180 and likewise 80% of stock and balance you are going to transfer to your what we call capital account. Now, in the balance sheet, equity share capital is 3,7,000. If you want to know how you have got the balance, I have told you now several times. It is not very tough. See here, your existing share capital has become zero. So, presently, your equity share capital is 2 lakh. Simply write somewhere in the rough 2 lakh. Correct? This is the amount which you are going to write off. Sorry, you are going to write 2 lakh. Then you look into the entry. Again, you have credited equity share capital by 32,000. You add 32,000. This is in entry number three. And then somewhere else also you have issued equity share capital. Equity share capital, equity share capital, equity share capital. Here in entry number eight, 75,000 worth of equity share capital we have issued. So 75,000. Then any other entry? 
no further entries. So this total will become that is equal to 7,000 plus 0 plus 3. So 3 lakh 7,000 will be the amount of equity share capital in the balance sheet. This is how you can compute. It's correct. So equity share capital as you can see is 3 lakh 7,000. Similarly, if just one more time, preference share capital, existing preference share capital is debited. So it is cancelled. So preference share capital presently is having 3 lakh 20,000 worth of balance. Now we have to look, check the entries and just see to it that whether we have written preference share capital anywhere else. So nowhere else we have written preference share capital. So 3 lakh 20,000 worth of preference share capital will find place in the balance sheet. So when you will prepare the balance sheet 3 lakh 20,000, as you can see, your total amount will be equal to 6 lakh 27,000. Is it clear to you or not? <clears throat> then capital reserve under the reserve and surplus. As far as debentures are concerned, there were 4 lakh worth of debenture, if you remember, correct? And 3 lakh worth of payment was made to debenture by way of what we call freehold property in part payment. So 1 lakh worth of debenture will still appear in the balance sheet. And of course, director's loan is wiped out and we are left off with only trade payables. Freehold property, correct? Now freehold property will appear at 4 lakh. Because remaining freehold properties was valued at 4 lakhs. So quite obviously freehold property will appear at this value. And plant and machinery you can write. And as far as uh, your inventory is concerned. Now the remaining inventory you are going to write. Trade receivable, remaining trade receivable you are going to write. Now regarding cash at bank I would like to caution you. Because if you look into your original balance sheet there is no cash. Correct? Regarding cash you have to be careful. And how much cash cash bank balance will appear in the balance sheet? You will look, you will have to look into the entries. Find out where you have written bank. First uh, here bank you have made a payment, so it is twenty four thousand. And then you received bank two lakh fifty thousand, so two lakh fifty thousand worth of amount you have received by selling the investment, and anywhere else. And again you paid penalty charges to the extent of thirty thousand. So thirty thousand you will have to subtract. So from 250, you will subtract this and whatever balance you will get, you will write it in the balance sheet. This is what exactly I have 10, 250 minus 24 minus 30,000. So this will be the balance which you are going to write in the balance sheet. So not a very tough one. You can manage this question. Coming over to the next one, 2.3. As far as 2.3 is concerned, in this Balance sheet of ICE and Cube Limited as at 31st of 3, 2023. And this time authorized share capital is given to you, although we are least concerned with the authorized share capital. Correct? It is of no use to us. We are simply interested in what is the issued, subscribed and paid of capital. 50 lakh equity shares of 10 each. So figures are in lakh given to you. 50 lakh shares of 10 each. As far as preference shares are concerned, 8% preference share capital is there. 4 lakh shares of 100 each, 400 it is written. Correct? And then, this is, sorry, this is the authorized share capital. Regarding preference share capital, this is the authorized share capital. But we are concerned with what we call issued capital. 2 lakh shares have been issued, so 200. Profit or loss account is having a balance of 261. And as far as long-term borrowings are concerned, long-term borrowings, under non-current liability, we write long-term borrowings. Under long-term long -term borrowings, there are 6% debentures secured by freehold property and the amount is 200. Secured by freehold property means this entity has given a guarantee to the debenture holder that in case if we would fail to repay your amount, correct, then you have the right to take over our freehold property and sell it and recover your amount. That is the point. Further, director's loan is also given 150, so total current liability 350. Two items are there, 6% 6, 6 debentures and director's loan. As far as current liability is concerned, one is trade payable for goods. Another one is other current liability and under the other current liability, we have interest accrued and due on 6% debenture to the extent of 12 lakh. Then we have freehold property, plant and machinery, and then we have current investments and inventory and trade receivable and cash at bank. This is the question. This question is similar to the last one which we did. Honestly speaking, I need not require to do this question, but you should be in a position to do it of your own. Preference share to be written down to 80 
an equity share written down to 2. I need not require to tell you what will be the entry. If you will look into the balance sheet, if you will look into the balance sheet as far as point number 1 is concerned, your preference share capital, original preference share capital, which you have issued 2 lakh shares, correct? 2 lakh shares of 100 each or 10 each. 2 lakh shares of 100 each. Total is 200. So 2 lakh shares of 100 each, that is 200. And you can see now preference share written down to 80. So you will write here preference share capital and 2 lakh share into 80, that is equal to 160 lakh. And 2 reconstruction, then you are going to write, that is equal to 2 into 20 and that will be equal to 40. Is it clear to you? Then your next entry will be, Entry number B, equity share written down to rupees 2 each. Equity share capital, you will look into the balance sheet, try to find out what is the amount of equity share capital issued. 50 lakh shares of 10 each, 500 lakh. So 50 lakh shares of rupees 10 each. So you are going to first of all write here 500 lakhs. So your original equity share capital is debited. Now the new equity share capital will be equal to 500 into 2 that is equal to 550 so, sorry shares that is equal to 100 lakh 50 into 2 50 lakh shares are there so 50 lakh shares into 200 and then your reconstruction balance will be 50 into 8 that is equal to 40 lakh similar to the last question preference dividend is in area in order to comprehend this particular point point number two First of all, you need to compute preference dividend in area. Total preference dividend in area is how much? Preference dividend in area. Preference dividend in area. First, you will have to compute your original preference share capital issued, as we just saw, is 8% preference share capital. So, 8% of original capital is actually issued capital that is uh, 2 lakh shares of 10 each, uh, of 100 each, 200 lakhs and dividend is in area for 3 years. So first of all, you will have to find out the total preference dividend in area. That will be equal to 200 into 8% into 3, that is equal to 48 lakhs. Now out of 48 lakhs, similar to the last question, this time, 2 third is being waived two-third waived, so we are not going to pass any entry for the same. One-third, one-third will be equal to 16, correct? And this portion is to be paid. And similar to the last question, this question is, even in this question, it is stated that these, this amount is paid by way of equity share. So you will have to pass two entries in it, preference dividend account debit, 16 lakh, which you have paid, and you have paid it by issue of equity share capital 16 lakh and then you will write off this amount reconstruction account will get debited to preference dividend so 16 lakh 16 lakh correct deventure holder agreed to took over freehold property valued at 150. Similar to the last question, even in this question, first of all, you will write Deventure account debit. Deventure have taken over freehold property worth 150 at its book value. So, and in part payment, so just one entry you are going to pass here. And further areas of Deventure interest to be paid. So, your entry number four will be with respect to payment of areas of Deventures, areas of interest on Deventure. Areas of interest on debenture in the balance sheet is equal to 12 and you are going to just pass an entry to bank 12, correct? Entry number 5, similar to the last question, remaining freehold property to be valued at 200. Now your freehold property was 275. Out of 275, 150 worth of property is taken over by the debenture holders. So if I am going to subtract from 275, 275 minus 150, 
I'm remaining remaining freehold property is actually 125. And question says that remaining freehold property is valued at rupees 200 lakh. So there is appreciation of 75 lakh. So as far as your point number 5 is concerned, you will have to pass the entry freehold property account debit to reconstruction account. So there is a gain of 75 lakh. Is it clear to you? Then it is given in the question 70% of director's loan to be waived and balance to be paid by way of equity shares. Correct? So similar to the last question, almost ditto copy of the last question, director's loan in this case happens to be 150. So entry number 6, director's loan account debit. Director's loan account is equal to 150. 150, isn't it? Director's loan is 150. And this time question states that 70% of the portion is paid. In the last question, there was 75%. 70% of director's loan to be waived. So 70% is waived. That means 30% we have to pay it. And that is paid through equity share capital, 30% of 150. That will be equal to 45. And to reconstruction, 70% will be transferred to reconstruction. That will be equal to 105. So this is the entry which you are going to pass. And similar to the last question, 40% of trade receivable, 80% of inventory is to be written off. And then further it is says that capital company's contractual commitment amounted to 300 lakhs and penalty charges were paid. So first you make the payment for the penalty charges. Actually this is point number 8. Penalty charges account debit. Two entries you will have to make penalty charges account debit. Total contract value is 300 lakh and what is the percentage of penalty charges that is 5%. So you simply take 5% of this and write over here 15 lakh. Now this is a loss to you. You must actually write it off to reconstruction account, penalty charges, reconstruction account debit to penalty charges, 15. Similar to the last question now, because I have solved almost everything in this particular question, I need not require to show the solution, but it's still 8% preference share capital 200 reduced to 160, 40 is transferred to reconstruction. Equity share capital account, correct, 50 lakhs into 10. 500, 50 into 200 is the new capital and transfer 50 lakh into 8, 400. Preference dividend we paid and then we debited to reconstruction account. 6% debentures were given freehold property, accrued interest were paid, freehold property appreciated, remaining freehold property appreciated by 75 and then investment in this question are also sold. Investment in the balance sheet are worth rupees 100. You sold it them for 125, 25 will be transferred to actually reconstruction. Director's loan 150, 30%. Uh, this is the balance amount for which you have issued equity share capital. And of course your gain is 70%. And then finally the penalty charges account debit to bank and then reconstruction account debit to bank. Then you will take the net balance 611 and then you will write off according to the direction of the question and then this will be your balance. And balance sheet I have already framed for you and I have already given you an idea actually how balance sheet is to be framed. Correct? So this question you should be in a position to, to do it by yourself. Now 2.4 is the next question which you need to do. Following is the balance sheet of Rocky Limited as on 31st of March 2022. This time share capital is 500 lakh, five, uh, that is fully paid equity shares of 10 each, that means and it is given 500 lakh, that means 50 lakh shares are there of rupees 10 each and total amount is 500 lakh. Under the reserve and surplus we have capital reserve, but there is a debit balance in profit and loss account to the extent of 390 lakhs, that's a pretty high amount of balance. And then 12% debentures are there, debenture outstanding is 48 lakh. And besides that, in this particular question, we have trade payables, director's remuneration outstanding, other outstanding charges and provisions. Correct? So lots of items are given this time. And then 
as far as balance sheet is concerned, we have land and building, plant and machinery and furniture and fixtures. Then as far as intangible assets are concerned, goodwill and under the heading other non-current asset, we have discount on issue of debentures. So many times I have already told you, discount underwriting commission preliminary expense must be written off, even goodwill must be written off and accumulated loss profit and loss account must be written off. Correct? Under the current asset, we have these three items, inventory, trade, receivable and cash at bank. Question states that following scheme of internal reconstruction was framed approved by the court, all the concerned parties and then implemented. All the equity shares will be converted into same number of fully paid share of 2.5 each, all the equity share. Now presently your equity shares are of rupees 10 each and you are converting them into 2.5. What will be your entry? I need not require to tell you. Equity share capital will be brought down by 7.50. Directors agree Directors agree to forego their outstanding interest. Now, directors have agreed to forego their interest. Now, we have seen that outstanding, sorry, director agree to forego their outstanding remuneration. Now, director's outstanding remuneration is this much, that is equal to 10 lakh. So, it will be again and your entry will be director's remuneration outstanding account debit to reconstruction account, correct? Further, it is given in point number three, debenture holders. Debenture holder agree to forego outstanding interest in return of their 12% debenture being converted into 13% debenture. What is the point is here, our existing debentures are 12% debentures. So debentures are simply telling us that please, instead of 12% debenture, issue us 13% debenture. That means convert our 12% debenture into 13% and we will be then forego our outstanding interest. So this interest will be gained to you, correct? But at two entries will be passed, one 12% debenture account debit to 13% debenture account and debenture interest outstanding is foregone now. So it is a gain for you. So your next entry will be debenture interest outstanding to reconstruction account. These two entries you are going to pass. Point number four, the existing shareholder agreed to subscribe for cash fully paid equity shares of 2.5 each for 1,25,000. As far as your existing number of shares are concerned, we have already seen because 500 lakhs worth of equity share capital is given. So that means you must be having 50 lakh members, 50 lakh shareholders. And 50 lakh shareholder, now what they are subscribing some new shares. So your simple entry will be bank account debit to equity share capital account being shares subscribed by existing shareholder. And amount will be 125 lakh. That is 50 lakh into 2.5 each. Then in point number five, it is given trade payables are given the option to either accept fully paid equity shares of rupees 2.5 each for the amount due to them or to accept 80% of the amount due in cash. Then question says that creditors for 65 lakh accept equity shares whereas those for 100 lakhs accept 80 lakhs in cash in full settlement. Now what is the logical, what is the logic of this particular entry? First of all, in this particular question, as far as trade payable are concerned, our trade payables are equal to 165 lakh, correct? Trade payables are equal to 165 lakh. Out of 165 lakhs, before I tell you further things, initially it is given that creditors are being given an option. Creditors are given an option that you can take equity shares, correct? You can take equity shares or you can take cash. But if you will go for cash, we will give you only 80% of what is your claim. But if you will opt for equity share, then we will issue you equity share to the extent of what we call your claim. What does it mean? Question further says that out of 165 lakh worth of creditors, question says that 65 lakh worth of creditors are opting for equity share. 
creditor for 65 lakh except equity shares. So 65 lakh creditors told that, well, we are interested in equity shares. So company will offer them 65 lakh worth of equity share. However, creditors of 100 lakhs are opting for cash payment. And as per the what we call agreement or as per the direction of the question, if you will go for cash, we will not give you entire amount of what we call your claim. We will give you only 80%. So that is why we will give them only 80 lakh rupees and 20 lakh will be gained to the company. So our entry will be creditors account debit 165 lakh to equity share capital that is 65 lakh and then we will write to cash 80 lakh and we will also write to reconstruction. Reconstruction will be equal to 20 lakh because those creditors who were demanding actually cash they were given, instead of 1 lakh, they were given 80 lakh, so 20 lakh is going to the company. Further, it is given to you that assets are revalued as under. Assets are revalued as under. Now, if you will look into the question, land and building, lots of items were there, land and building was 184 lakh, but it has gone up to 2 lakh 30 thousand. That means there is appreciation in land and building. So, we, have, we will have to take care of it. As far as plant and machinery is concerned, plant and machinery has fallen. And as far as stock is concerned, stock in the balance sheet is 142 lakh, but now it is 120 lakh, so its value has fallen also. And as far as debtors are concerned, that is 80 lakh, and their value have also fallen. So this is how we will have to solve this particular question. And if I will solve this question for you, Although it is solved, but still I will solve it for you. 2.4 is the question. Let me keep the question sheet also in front of me so that time and again I need not require to look at the question. 2.3 we have done. 2.4 we will pick up. This is 2.4, right. Now in 2.4, the first information is quite easy. All the equity shares. Okay, 2.4 also we have done. This is 2.5. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Which is the question number? Question number is 2.4. Right, it is. Sometimes sheets get intermingled and that is why it becomes difficult to trace them out. Right. So uh, in 2.4 now is in front of me and 2.4 we take up this. Under the additional information all the equity share will be converted into same number of fully paid share of 2.5 each. Your first entry should not be a big issue for you. Correct. So reduction in equity share capital brought into books if you want to write in full or simply write reduction in equity share capital. Your equity share capital as per the balance sheet if you will look into it is equal to 1 lakh sorry it is equal to 5 lakh shares in fact 50 lakh shares because 500 lakh is written in the outer column so total amount is equal to 500 lakhs. And below it is given that equity shares are reduced to 2.50. So I will write here 2 equity share capital and amount will be equal to 50 lakhs into 2.50. I think it will be equal to 125 lakhs. And we will write here 2 reconstruction. Reconstruction will be equal to 50 lakhs into 7.50 that is equal to 375 lakhs correct so this is how you are going to pass the entry this is entry number a in fact in this particular case only one entry is needed now we move over to entry number two directors agree to forego their outstanding remuneration as per point number two I have already told you it is it is a gain to us and in the balance sheet director's remuneration is given so I will write director's remuneration 
director's remuneration outstanding 10 lakh director's remuneration outstanding is 10 lakh so you will write here 10 lakh and simply transfer this amount to reconstruction and you will write here to reconstruction account that is equal to 10 lakh correct this is how you will do this one and then as per point number three, debenture holders also have agreed to forego their outstanding interest. But they are asking their debenture, 12% debenture to be converted into what we call 13% debenture. So my entry will be 12% debenture account debit. 12% debenture account debit. 12% debenture is equal to 400, and 400 lakhs. And we have simply converted their 12% debenture to 13% debenture. So I will simply write 12% debenture account debit to 13% debenture, conversion of 12% debenture into 13% debenture. However, however, they have also agreed to waive their debenture interest. So next entry in this point will be debenture interest outstanding amount, which is 48 lakhs, 48 lakhs. You will transfer to reconstruction account, 48 lakhs. This is how you are going to pass the entry. Is it clear to you? Then, Point number four, existing shareholder have agreed to subscribe for cash. So existing shareholder are subscribing some more share. Indirectly, it means company is issuing the shares. There are 50 lakh members. 50 lakh existing shareholder are subscribing one share of 2.5 each. So amount will be equal to 125 lakh. and two equity share capitals. So it's a simple entry. Then question says in point number five regarding trade payable and I mentioned what will be your entry and what will, what will be the logic. The trade payable amount given is 165 lakh. I have already explained this point. I will simply write the entry. Total trade payable is equal to 165 lakhs. So first of all, I'm going to write this amount. We had given them two options that one, you can accept equity share or you can take the cash. But if you will take the cash, we will give you only 80%. So out of 165 lakhs, 65 lakh opted for equity share. So we will issue equity share capital to 65 lakh worth of creditors. Balance is now 100 lakhs. They are asking for cash, but we will pay the cash only to the extent of 80%. That is 80 lakh, 80% 80 of 100 lakhs. And we will have some gain in this case to the extent of 20 lakh. Correct. Finally, in point number six, it is given that value of land has gone up. So, our entry will be land and building account debit. Land and building account debit to reconstruction account. Now value of land if you look into the, bal into the balance sheet is given 184 lakh. So from 184 lakh it has gone up to uh, up to actually how much 230 lakhs. So what will be the amount of gain from 100 and 80 land and building from 184 lakh to 230 lakhs. That is equal to where is the calculator? Land and building account is 230 lakh, it is given. So 184 minus 230. I think that is equal to 46 lakhs. That is equal to 46 lakhs. So this is the entry you are going to pass. Correct? Then in this particular question, 
in this particular question, you will now write reconstruction account debit because no more information is given. Now we have to write off reconstruction account. I will have to compute the reconstruction account balance which I will in a short while. But before that, we are supposed to write off as per the direction of the question 1 plant and machinery. Now plant and machinery, if you will look into the balance sheet, uh, plant and machinery in the balance sheet is given as 184 lakh, correct? Sorry, plant and machinery is 286 lakh, came down to 220, so fallen by 66 lakh. After plant and machinery below it is given in last point, point number 6, stock value is now 120 lakh. In the balance sheet, the value of the stock given to you in the form of inventory is 142. So from 142 to 120, 22 lakh. And there is one more item in the form of daters. Daters in the balance sheet are written in the form of trade receivables. That is 80 lakhs, now 76 lakhs, so 4 lakhs. However, there are some other items which we are supposed to write off in this particular question. One is goodwill. Correct. Amount of goodwill given in the question is 15 lakhs. We should not forget to write it off. Besides that, we have discount on debentures also in this particular question. Discount on debentures. Now, discount on debenture is equal to Discount on debenture is equal to 8 lakhs. Now when we will tally our reconstruction account, your balance will be equal to near about 499 lakhs. I haven't tallied. You can tally it off your own. No problem. But your balance will be near about this much. Ultimately, we have to understand the concept. Remember one thing. Now if I will tally this value, correct? And there is another item which I haven't written in I just had a look over the balance sheet profit and loss account is given it's a very heavy amount 390 lakhs 390 lakhs oh my god now what is happening earlier I was thinking there will be capital reserve but now this amount is exceeding this amount is exceeding because if I am going to total this one, it is equal to 5 lakh, 505 lakh. That means I am supposed to write off 505 lakh. In the initial stages, I told you that some of you might be interested in knowing what will happen if the amount which we are supposed to write off, write off would exceed the amount available. Available amount is 499 lakh. Whereas we need, if I will total them up, it is equal to 505 lakhs. That means there is a shortfall in this case. So if there would be shortfall, what you are supposed to do, correct, look into the balance sheet. Now I will look into the balance sheet. In the balance sheet under reserve and surplus, correct, you have got capital reserve. So, so you can utilize your reserves to meet the shortfall. This is your balancing figure. And balancing figure is 6 lakh. Because 505 lakh minus this, it will be equal to 6. This is how you are supposed to actually do this particular question. Originally, when this question came in the examination, only generalization was asked. Correct? And moreover, when question of such length and breadth will strike in the examination, they will ask you to prepare, ask you to pass only entry. So, even this is given in a solved manner to you. Correct? So, equity share capital 500 lakh, to equity share capital, this amount should be written towards the credit side. I will write it here. 125 lakh. And this amount will be 375 lakh. Then, director's remuneration, correct? Director remuneration account debit to reconstruction, then debenture interest is cancelled. Deventure interest account debit to reconstruction and deventure converted to 13% deventure. Then we 
some shares were subscribed 5 lakh 5 50 lakh into 2.5 that is 125 lakh trade creditors see here trade creditors were given actually i have passed one entry and in the solution which is given to you i have shown the entry in a separate manner trade creditor account debit to equity share capital and trade creditor account debit to cash to reconstruction correct land and building here it is written 20 lakh it should be equal to 46 lakh and then you will total up and then you will write all the items which you are supposed to write off there is shortfall shortfall will be met by what we call equity capital reserve or for that instance any reserve so ultimately in the balance sheet your equity share capital after the re reduction equity share capital was 125 then 125 lakh worth of shares were also subscribed and 65 lakh worth of shares were issued to the creditors so that is why the total equity share capital is 315 now as far as 13 percent debentures are concerned their amount will remain same instead of 12 percent now we will write 13 percent debenture other current liability will appear as it is short term provision will appear as it is and director's interest director's loan amount remuneration will not appear because they have foregone similarly debenture outstanding also gone out then land and building the new value is 230 lakh right plant and machinery new value 220 and furniture and fittings no change was there so total 491 and inventories will remain at 120 trade receivable at 76 cash at bank originally we had cash of 27 lakh i think in this particular question Twenty seven lakh worth of cash originally we had, and we have added one twenty five because we passed an entry bank account debit to equity share capital. We received one twenty five and eighty. We have paid eighty lakh worth of cash, if you remember, to the trade payable. So our net balance is equal to seventy two lakh. This is how we are going to actually prepare the entry in this particular question. At least after having done this much of these many questions now you sh i will not do this question at all you must you should be in a position to do this question because there is nothing for me to actually do in this question there is preference share capital equity share capital six percent debentures accrued interest total claim is this much total capital is this much total debenture claim is this much and there are three liabilities over one lakh ninety five thousand and uh, bank overdraft and trade payables total is five lakh ninety five thousand actually it will be creditors i think one lakh ninety five thousand is creditor bank overdraft three lakh and trade payable one lakh then we have been given under the fixed asset that is under property plant and equipment you can say fuel property this much plant this much patents and goodwill total amount is 6,42 trade investment of 55,000 then current under the current asset we have two items and don't forget to write off 5,35,000 profit or loss account debit balance rest of the question is on similar line because we have done so many questions you can see preference share are to be written down to 75 equity share to 2 each preference dividend are in area for four years to be waived off by three fourth you are not going to pass any entry for the same but for one fourth you are going to issue equity share for big first pass the entry for payment then write it off also and this is similar to deventure holder deventure holder agree to take one freehold property at a book value of one lakh at a valuation of one lakh twenty first of all pass the entry for appreciation by 20,000 and then pay 1,20,000 worth of building to the debenture holder pass the entry for the same 1 lakh at 120 in part payment correct of their holding and to provide additional cash of 1,30,000 secured by a floating charge on company's asset at an interest rate of 8% what is the meaning of this particular sentence is debenture holder first of all they are getting one lakh twenty thousand worth of freehold property although the book value of the freehold property is actually one lakh but one lakh worth of property is given to the debenture holder 
and debenture holders are also giving us back 130000 worth of cash so when we will receive cash from the debentures our entry logically seems that should be cash account debit to debenture account but you should not write debenture account you should write cash account debit to loan account because debenture holders are giving 130000 amount to us so that doesn't mean that company is issuing the debentures. So it is better in my opinion to write loan account and this loan is secured loan. So you can write cash account debit to 8% secured loan account. Accrued interest will be paid off in cash. Patent and goodwill will be written off. Inventory will come down by this much. 68,500 you have to provide for bad debts. Remaining freehold property, whatever remaining on remaining freehold property is there. That is now valued at 3,87,500. Trade investment were sold. 90% of director's loan will be settled by allotment of equity share and 5% in cash and 5% will be waived. So your entry will be director's loan account debit, two equity shares, two cash account and two reconstruction account. And then contract value is 250 and it is cancelled by paying a penalty charge. You know the entry. You can easily solve this question because we have done it we have done such questions now so many times correct and similarly similarly you should be in a position to do question number 2.6 you should be in a position to do 2.6 just go through the question we will take five minutes of rest and then we will continue the class class is still on correct
to welcome again and uh, 2.6 we were talking about as far as this particular question is concerned honestly speaking this question is self manageable correct i will give you some hint because we have done so many question or if, and if i am going to solve each and every question there doesn't look nice 35000 equity shares of 100 each 15000 10% preference shares of 100 each 15 lakh you have to write a profit or loss account needless to be added in this question there are security premium also 7% debentures and director's loan and trade payables are also there correct and besides we have land and building plant and machinery and goodwill you need to write off and three items are also given to you now as far as first entry is concerned you can easily manage equity share to be reduced to 25 each what will be the entry i need to require to tell you similarly preference share to be reduced to 75 and exchange for one new 13 percent preference shares of 50 each and one new equity shares of rupees 25 each preference shareholders are reduced to 75 number one that been your preference share capital whatever preference share capital you were having earlier 15,000 shares of 100 each 15 lakh 15,000 shares are there one share is of 100 each correct total 15 lakh worth of share is there now this share is reduced to 75 this share is reduced to 75 that pink share is coming down by 25 whatever is coming down that is considered as a gain so 15,000 into 25 will be your gain no doubt about that but regarding 75 what preference shares are telling that whatever our balance is there now new balance is at the rate of 75 for that you give us 13 percent preference shares of 50 each that mean our entry will be preference share capital account debit 15,000 into 115 lakh then we will write two preference share capital that is 13 percent preference share capital new capital is 13 percent preference share capital and we were having 15,000 number of preference shares earlier so 15,000 shares uh, what they are asking for exchanged for one new 13 percent preference share that means every shareholder is getting one share of 50 each but it is now 13 percent preference share so 15,000 divided by one into one each shareholder is getting one new preference share of 50 each and also they are getting one equity share two equity share capital 15,000 divided by one into one and now one equity share is of 25 that in preference share is coming down to 75 but for this 75 they are receiving 15 percent preference share and equity share capital and this will be transferred to the reconstruction account Preference shareholder have foregone their right to preference dividend in area for four years, correct? And one year's dividend at the old rate is however payable to them in fully paid shares. So whatever payment you are going to give, you simply pass the entry for the same, correct? One year payment, one year payment, how will you compute? You will compute because your earlier preference share capital is at the rate of 10%. So, one year dividend will be equal to 10% of 15 lakh. 10% of 15 lakh. This dividend you will have to pay. You will have to pass two entry. One preference dividend account debit. Two equity share capital for payment. And then reconstruction to preference dividend. Deventure holders are given an option to accept 90% of their claims in cash. Or to convert their claims in full into new 13% preference shares of 50 each issued at par. One half in value of the debenture holder accepted preference share for their claim, the rest were paid in cash. What does it mean? It means if you will look into the figure of debenture, now debenture amount is actually 5 lakh, correct? Debenture amount given to you is 5 lakh, 7% debenture. 7% debenture are worth rupees 5 lakh we are giving them an option similar to the last question wherein creditors were given the option this time the option is that the venture holders were given the option to either accept 90% of their claim in cash 
that means you can take cash but if you will go for cash you will give, we will give you only 90% option to either accept 90% of their claims in cash that means if you will demand cash we will pay you only 90% or to convert their claims into new 13% preference share or you can convert your amount into preference share capital but if you will go for preference share capital we will give you the full amount now question says that one half in value of the debenture holder accepted preference share because out of 5 lakh one half is going for preference share so I will write here two 13% preference share capital account one half of 5 lakh will be equal to 2 lakh 50. I will give them full amount in preference share. And remaining are going for what we call cash. That means remaining amount is 250. So we will pay only 90% of 250. 90% 90 of 250 in cash. That is 2 lakh 25,000. And 10% company will save and it will be a gain to the company. 10% of 2 lakh 50,000. 10% of 2 lakh 50,000, that is 25,000, will be gain to the company. This is how you are going to pass the entry. Actually, this question demands only explanation for this particular point. Contingent liability of 1 lakh 50,000 is payable, which has been created by a wrong action of the director. And he has agreed to compensate the loss out of the loan he has given to the company. Contingent liability means not a liability. However, directors, due to wrong action of the director, this contingent liability has become a liability. Logically, if if a, if any enterprise, if any enterprise would pay a contingent liability, then it is considered as a loss because it is not a recorded liability. I have already told you so many times. Anything which is not a recorded liability and if you we are supposed to pay that, then that means it is a loss. So logically my entry should have been contingent liability account debit to bank account. Contingent liability payable. That means a, a liability has become, in fact we haven't paid, it is not given in the question that we have paid. But a contingent liability has become payable. But point is same, it has become payable means it has become a liability, so it is a loss. So logically my entry should be reconstruction account debit to contingent liability payable account. Logically my entry should have been this because it is a loss to us. If any liability, if there was, there wasn't any liability and suddenly it becomes a liability, then it is a loss to us. But problem is that this liability got created because of wrong action of the directors. So, that directors agreed to compensate this liability. That means, we are supposed to pay to the director because in the question you must have noticed there is director's loan also. I will show you. In this question, director's loan is also given to the extent of 1,50,000. So, he is telling now, director is telling, well, you can get it compensated from my loan. So, instead of debiting to reconstruction, we will debit the director's loan account. That means, this loss is you can say offset against the director's liability so director's liability will decrease by amount of this loan so that way company is getting benefited that means otherwise company had to pay that so, but now indirectly directors are paying that particular liability you can say contingent liability payable so your entry will be director's loan account debit to contingent liability because this liability got created because of wrong action of the directors correct so this is the only thing Goodwill does not have any present value, that means we have to write it off. Decrease in value of plant and machinery, inventory and trade receivable is given to you. So by this amount, uh, plant has fallen down and inventory has fallen down by 1 lakh and trade receivable by 1 lakh. Increase in the value of land and building to 18 lakh. So you, you must write this entry for appreciation in land and building. And 40,000 new equity share of 25 each are to be issued at par payable in full application. The issue was underwritten for a commission of 4%. F regarding point number 7, your entry will be first of all bank account debit. Bank account debit to equity share capital. You are simply issuing 40,000 shares. 40,000 shares of 25 each. Whatever amount is there, you will write it. But 
this issue was underwritten by commission so underwriter sorry so we have to pay some underwriting commission our entry will be underwriting commission account debit to bank account underwriting commission will be computed 4% of your this amount 4% of this amount correct you will pay that amount and then you must write the underwriting commission reconstruction account debit to underwriting commission account that is the point total expenses incurred by company in connection with the scheme excluding underwriting commission 15000 that been in order to adopt the scheme of internal reconstruction company had to spend 15000 so two entries you will have to pass once again reconstruction expenses account debit because this, these expenses are in connection with the scheme reconstruction expenses account debit to bank account first of all you will write this entry and then you will write reconstruction account debit to reconstruction expenses account so i hope now you can do this particular question and moreover it is given in a solved manner correct and there is another question in this particular section 2.7 which you can do it very very easily is it clear to you or not moreover you must give it a try and if you are able to do it, it's fine otherwise i am always there so on such note we take leave of you and as uh, with as always with the promise to meet you again with something new in the upcoming session Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So while leaving the last one, I had asked you to give a try to 2.5 and 2.6 besides that 2.7 also, isn't it or not? So I hope that most of you must have tried to do this question and must have been successful in solving the question. Still, it's still due to some reason actually I'm solving this question. The reason one is that actually here, under current liability, one item is not printed, one is bank overdraft, trade payables, actually the next item is director's loan. This is director's loan. So perhaps some of you might have confronted some difficulty in solving this question. This 1 lakh is actually director's loan. Bank overdraft is 195, 3 lakh, 1 lakh. We have already gone through the questions, correct, in the last session. So I will simply do it for you. And uh, in this particular question, we will quickly have a look what is given to us. So, 4,000 preference shares of 100 each, 4 lakh, and then 75,000 equity shares of 10 each, 7 lakh, 50. We have debentures, 3 lakh, 75,000, accrued interest. And as I, just a moment ago, I told you there are three, li three current liability, bank overdraft, trade payables, and director's loan. Director's loan is 1 lakh. And then we have freehold property, plant and patents and goodwill. Obviously, we are going to write our goodwill. Then we have been given trade investment at cost. And then trade receivables are there, inventory are there. And we should not forget to write off profit and loss account, which is given at 5,30,000. Below the information is that preference shares are written down to 75, equity share to rupees 2 each. This particular line should not give you any trouble. Preference dividend are in area for four years. Three fourth is waived, and one fourth will be uh, discharged by providing them equity shares of two each. Deventure holders agree to take over freehold property at a book value of one lakh at one lakh twenty thousand in part payment of their holding, and they have also agreed to provide additional cash of one lakh thirty thousand secured by a floating charge on company's asset at an interest rate of eight percent. We talked about the treatment of this accrued debenture interest to be paid off in cash. Question states that patents and goodwill should be written off. Inventory will be written off by 65. Amount of 68,500 to be provided for bad debts. Remaining, remaining freehold property valued at 387,500. Trade investments were sold out for 140. And regarding director's loan, which is 1 lakh, 90% of the loan to be settled. Uh, by way of equity shares of rupees 2 each and 5% by cash and balance 5% will be waived. Now, whatever information is given in the question, we have already gone through such information so many occasions now. Actually, this should not pose you any problem. Companies' contractual commitments are 2,50,000 and these were cancelled by paying a penalty of 5% and we have to generalize and prepare the balance sheet as per the demand of this question. So, Actually, I was I received some request from the student fraternity to solve this one out. 
So that is the reason actually I do not know why such request was made because this question should be almost like a cake for you, correct? I mean to say should be almost like a cup of coffee. So 2.5 is the one which we are picking up to start today's this particular session, 2.5. Below, the first information is preference share to be written down to 75. So, our first entry will be with respect to reduction in preference share capital, reduction in preference share capital. As far as reduction in preference share capital is concerned in the balance sheet, there is 6% cumulative preference shares as you can see. 6% cumulative preference shares and 4000 shares are there. 6% cumulative preference share capital account, 4,000 shares. One share is of 100 each. Total amount is equal to 4 lakh. And question says below that preference shares have been reduced to 75 each. Correct? Keep the question sheet in front of you so that time and again you need not require to flip through the pages. That is important. So 4 lakh is the amount as I told you and now Preference share capital has been written down to 75. So, 26% cumulative preference shares. 26% cumulative preference shares. Now, preference share is equal to 4000 into 25. Into 75, sorry. Written down to 75, it is written. So, that will be equal to 3 lakh. And in the reconstruction account, you are going to transfer 1 lakh rupees. That is 4000 into 25. So, preference share capital is reduced by 25. So, 1 lakh will be your gain. Correct? Then, as far as next entry is concerned, next one is related to equity shares. In the first line itself, it is written that equity share came down to rupees 2 each. Now, in the balance sheet, you can see that equity share capital given to you 75,000 equity shares of 10 each. So, equity share capital account, first of all, you write. Equity share capital account, 75,000 and one share is of 100 again. One share is of rupees 10 each. In fact, equity share capital is of 10 each, not 100. So, equity share capital 75,000 into 10. And 7,50,000, first of all, we will cancel the existing equity share capital. Correct, existing equity share capital is cancelled. And now, equity share capital is reduced to, as I told you, 2 rupees 2. Equity share capital account, 75,000 into 2. That is equal to 1,50,000. That is equal to 1,50,000. And balance will be transferred to reconstruction account or capital reduction account, whatever you may like to write, 75,000 into 8. I think it will be equal to 6 lakh. So, this is the entry which you must pass with respect to point number 1. As far as point number 2 is concerned, it talks about preference dividend in area. First of all, you compute the total preference dividend. Total preference dividend in area. Total preference dividend in area. Total preference dividend in area is equal to how much? For that, you will have to actually look at your existing preference share capital. Existing preference share capital is 6% into 4 lakh. 6% into 4 lakh will tell me the dividend for one year and question states that dividend is in area since last four years. So since last four years you haven't paid any dividend so that is why it has accumulated because it is cumulative preference here. 4 lakh into 6 percent into 4 that is 96,000. So total dividend is equal to 96,000. And question states that out of 96,000, 3 fourth is waived and we are not going to pass any entry for 3 fourth. Now, so often we have done such, such sort of treatment. 
So, 96,000 into 1 by 4 will be equal to 24,000. This amount we are going to pay definitely. And 72,000 which is waived, no entry will be passed for three-fourth of the preference dividend. We have given you so many times the reasonings behind that. Correct, because we hadn't received, we had not received 96,000 from anywhere else. Correct, if we had not received anything and that thing get cancelled, then no entry will be passed. However, if something we haven't received and we are supposed to pay, then it is a loss to us. So, our entry in this particular case will be preference dividend account debit. First of all, you are going to write preference dividend account debit 24,000. Since you are paying the dividend by way of equity share capital, you are going to write to equity share capital. Preference dividend account debit to equity share capital account that is equal to 24,000. And so many times I have already told you, you must immediately write it off. Correct? So your entry will be reconstruction account debit to preference share capital account. To preference share capital account. This is the entry which you should preference dividend account. Sorry. Twenty-four thousand. If you will combine these two entries, your net entry is reconstruction account debit to equity share capital. You can write combined entry also, not a big problem. Further in point number three, it is given that the venture holder agree to take over one freehold property at its book value of one lakh. At its book value of one lakh. Now, if you will look into the balance sheet, you will see that freehold property is given to you at rupees 4,25,000. While the debenture amount which is given to you is 3,75,000 towards the liability side. Now question says that below in point number 3, debenture holder agree to take one freehold property at its book value. So out of 4,25,000 worth of freehold property, 1 lakh worth of property is given to the debenture holder at a valuation of 1,20,000. At a valuation of 1,20,000. So first of all, you need to understand that your remaining freehold property is equal to 3,25,000. 1 lakh worth of property is given to the debenture holder at 1,20,000. So first of all, my entry will be with respect to appreciation of this freehold property. So, entry will be freehold property account debit to reconstruction account. 20,000 worth of appreciation has taken place. So, I am going to write freehold property account debit to reconstruction account 20,000. Is it clear to you? Now, our second entry, we have given this freehold property to debenture holders. Now, debentures are 6% debentures. So, our entry will be 6% debenture account debit. Now, debenture holders have been given 1,20,000 worth of freehold property. So, amount of debenture claim will come down by 120. This payment is in part payment, not in full, full settlement. Two freehold property account. That is 1,20,000. Is it clear to you? So, that pin in the balance sheet, debenture will still find place equal to 2,55,000. These are remaining debenture and debenture will find place in the balance sheet because you have settled only 1,20,000. Now question further states later on, later on question in point number, okay, we will do it later on when we will move over to that particular point. Now point number three also contains one more information. Deventure holder, first of all, it is given, have agreed to take over freehold property worth 1 lakh at 120. And it is also given that they have also agreed to provide additional cash of 1 lakh 30,000 secured by a floating charge on company's asset at an interest rate of 8%. Even in the last session, I talked about this particular point that deventure holders are providing us cash. So, chances are there that we may get tempt to write the entry cash account debit to debenture account. But if we are going to put up this particular entry, it would reflect that as if the company has issued debenture, which is not the case. So, that is the reason it is better to write the entry cash account debit to 8% secured loan. We may presume that debentures 
have given us a loan and that is on the security it is given so 8% secured loan 1,30,000 due to this entry our cash balance will increase and in the balance sheet a new liability in the form of 8% secured loan will also take place <clears throat> further it is given in point number 4 in point number 4 it is given that accrued debenture interest is paid in cash so accrued interest account debit accrued interest account debit to cash account first of all you are going to write this entry amount is actually in this particular case 22,500 on account of this accrued interest will not appear in the new balance sheet and our cash balance will get reduced now further question says that patents and goodwill to be written off you can write them off immediately but it is better to write off later on first you try to find out actually the possible gains nine point number six inventory to be written off we will take care of that later on amount of 68,500 to be provided for bad debts we will also write it later on remaining freehold property remaining freehold property has been valued at 387,500 so freehold property remaining your remaining freehold property has gone up again your remaining freehold property was 325000 but now it is estimated at 387500 remaining freehold property so again there is an up valuation and i think the up valuation is to the extent of is to the extent of how much uh, where is the calculator 387500 minus 3,25,000 that is 62,500 so we will write here 62,500 further it is given that trade investment sold out for 1,40,000 this is entry number entry number 7 but this is with respect to point number 9. Correct? Trade investment sold out for 1,40,000. So our entry will be cash account debit. We are receiving a cash of 1,40,000. And what is the amount of investment in the balance sheet? Amount of investment in the balance sheet is just about 55,000. So two investment account, investment worth 55,000 is moving out investment worth 55,000 is going out investment account and then to reconstruction the difference will be credited to reconstruction account 85,000 further it is given in point number 10 actually this is entry number 8 but it is related to point number 10 this entry was related to point number 9 and this entry was related to point number 8. Now, as far as next entry is concerned, director's loan. I told you in the balance sheet, director's loan is given to you at rupees 1 lakh. So, first of all, you write director's loan account, 1 lakh. It is given that 90% of the loan is being actually discharged through issue of equity share. So we shall write here two equity share capital. That is 90% of 1 lakh. 90% of 1 lakh, how much? 90% of 1 lakh is equal to 90,000. And question says that 5% of the loan has been discharged through cash. So you will compute 5% of 1 lakh. Now 5% of 1 lakh, that is equal to 5,000. And balance 5% is waived, that means that is transferred to reconstruction account. So this is how you are going to write the entries. Further, it is given that capital contractual commitments were 250 and these were cancelled by paying 5% penalty charges. This is entry number 11, entry number 9. 
However, it is related to entry number 11. We will pass two entry penalty charges account debit. Penalty charges account debit to bank account or to cash account. Penalty is imposed upon us for cancellation of the contracts and contract amount was 2,50,000. So I will compute 5% of 2,50,000. That will be equal to 12,500. And once the payment has been made, it is a sort of loss. So you will debit it to reconstruction account, reconstruction account debit to penalty charges account. To penalty charges account and the amount will be equal to 12,500. 12,500. This is how you are going to actually pass the entries. Now, finally, we shall have to compute our reconstruction balance. Now, what is the balance in reconstruction account? I want to know that. Reconstruction account debit. Now, in order to compute the reconstruction account, I will have to go through the entries which I have written. Correct? For example, if we will look closely, for example, I will, I am also trying to tell you how reconstruction account is being prepared or how it is prepared. Entry number one, we wrote equity share cap. In fact, first entry was with respect to preference share capital. And there was gain of rupees 1 lakh. So I will write here by preference share capital 1 lakh. This gain is because of preference share capital. Similarly, in point number 1, we wrote second entry with respect to reduction in equity share capital. Again, a gain of 6 lakh took place if you remember. So I will write here 6 lakh. Then in point number two, there was treatment with respect to preference dividend. We passed two entry, preference dividend to equity share capital and then reconstruction account debit, debit to preference dividend. So reconstruction is getting debited due to preference dividend. So I will write towards the debit side preference dividend account. And amount was 24,000, 24,000 worth of dividend was paid. So it was lost and we debited it to reconstruction account. Then the <clears throat> next entry was with respect to with respect to freehold property, correct? Now, as far as freehold property is concerned, an appreciation took place in freehold property to the extent of 20,000 first, correct? And then remaining freehold property also went up by 82,500 or something like this. Let me check it, check it up. Sixty-two thousand five hundred. So remaining freehold property also went up by sixty-two thousand five hundred. Correct. And then we pass the entry for payment to debenture holder. Then to uh, then we paid the accrued interest. Then we took the cash from the debenture holder in the form of loan. And then there was gain because of sale of investment. When we sold out the investment. We had a gain and gain amount was 85,000. So all you have to do in order to prepare reconstruction account to is to simply go through the entries which you have written, number one. And wherever reconstruction is getting credited, you write towards the credit side. Wherever it is getting debited, you write it towards the debit side. After that, we had a loan, we have Another gain because of director's loan 5,000 as you can see. So I will write here towards the credit side director's loan 5,000. And then we paid penalty charges. And because of that reconstruction account is getting debited. So towards the debit side I will write here two penalty charges. 12,500. Now, this will tell me the total net balance of reconstruction account. Now, suppose if I tally it, suppose if I tally it, what will be the net balance that I need to figure out, correct? The net balance, 
1 lakh plus 6 lakh plus 20,000 plus 62,500 plus 85,000 and plus 5,000 minus 24,000 minus 12,500. So at this moment, the balance is 8,36,000. Reconstruction net balance is 8,36,000. Now what we will do, we will start writing off the things as per the direction of the question. Now in point number 5, it is given patents and goodwill to be written off. So as per the direction, we will write here patents. Amount of patents given in the question is 37,500. So I will write here 37,500. Then I will write goodwill. Goodwill amount given is, uh, goodwill is 1,30,000. So I will write off goodwill worth rupees 1,30,000. Then further it is given in the question, Next point, inventory to be written off by 65,000. So we shall write inventory also. By 65,000. And then it is given that 68,500 to be provided for provision for doubtful debts. So I will write provision for doubtful debts, PFDD. That is equal to 68,500. And as such, there is no further direction. Then we will look into the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, there is profit and loss account debit balance. So we must write off profit and loss account. That is 5,35,000. 5,35,000. So these are the things which we are supposed to write off in this particular question. Correct? And then after writing them off, we will see is there any balance or not? Let me tally it. 37,500 plus 1 lakh 30,000 plus 65,000 plus 68,500 plus 5 lakh 35,000. That comes to exactly 8 lakh 36,000. So no balance is there. Correct? Now, in the reconstruction account, suppose if examiner asks you to prepare the reconstruction account, then whatever items which you have written here, because in the entry you have written reconstruction account debit to all these things, so you must mention all these things like patents, that is equal to 37,500, then goodwill, 1,30,000 inventory sixty five thousand then provision for doubtful debts to the extent of provision for doubtful debts to the extent of sixty eight thousand five hundred and profit and loss account. 5,35,000. Total will be 8,36, 8,36. In this case, there is no capital reserve. Now, suppose you are asked to prepare balance sheet in this particular question. Equity and liability. Under equity and liability, first of all, you would write what? Shareholders fund. As far as shareholders funds are concerned, first of all, you will write share capital. Under the share capital, we shall write preference share capital. Now, what is the amount of preference share capital if I want to know? How can I do so? First of all, I will have to look into the balance sheet. Now, as per my original balance sheet, if I will look over, 
you will find that our preference share capital was 4 lakh. Our pre preference share capital was 4 lakh, correct? Now, we will look into the entries which we have passed. Now, 4 lakh worth of preference share capital has been debited. That when preference share capital at this point has become 0. Now, there is 3 lakh. Now, all we have to see to it that whether we have issued any further preference share capital. Now, in this question, we haven't issued any further preference share capital. So, that is why preference share capital in the balance sheet will be 4,000 shares of rupees 25 each. So, uh, sorry, 4,000 shares at the rate of 75 each. That is equal to 3 lakh. Similarly, your equity share capital. Look into the balance sheet. Now, equity share capital is debited, so it has become zero. Now, 750 in the balance sheet, now it is debited, so equity share capital is zero. Now, 150. All I have to do is, wherever equity share is getting credited, I have to keep on adding. So, at this moment, at this moment we are having 150,000 worth of equity share capital. After that, we issued 24,000 further share, I will add 24,000. Then, 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 where else we have issued equity share? Yes, we have issued some more share to directors also, so plus 90,000. And so, after scanning all the entries, I came to know that at this moment, equity share capital is 2,64,000. And if you want to know the number of share, you divide it by 2. Because one share is of 2 each, that means 132,000 shares of rupees 2 each. That is how you will have to prepare the balance sheet. Is it clear to you? So, equity share capital is this. Now look into the old balance sheet. Next item in the old balance sheet, I am talking about the balance sheet which is given to you in the question. Next item is 6% debenture. So, debentures are written under Just wait. Deventures are written under non-current liability, so I will write non-current liability. Yes, I was talking about 6% deventure. Now, 6% deventures are 3,75,000, no doubt about that. They were worth 3,75,000, but you paid 1,20,000. Isn't it or not? So the balance in debenture account will be equal to 2,55,000. Is it clear? After this, we have in this particular case accrued interest. Accrued interest has been paid off. Current liability. Now, as far as current liabilities are concerned, one is bank overdraft. One is bank overdraft. Correct? But no doubt I have got bank overdraft of rupees 1,95,000. I haven't written here anything. Why I haven't written here anything, I will let you know in a short while. Just, just show a bit of patience. Then trade payables. In trade payables, there was no change. So trade payables will appear at rupees 3 lakh. And director's loan is completely debited. So director's loan will not appear in the balance sheet. Is it clear to you or not? However, in the balance sheet, you have to be careful because when you paid off the debenture in that particular line, one line was that debenture holder have, have given us some loan and we have written it as 8% secured loan. So, I will write 8% secured loan also. That is 1,30,000. 1,30,000. Is it clear to you or not? 1,30,000 worth of loan I am going to write. This is how my balance sheet will be prepared. Well, after this, after this, what else we are supposed to write? After this, there are fixed assets. But before that, let me write here assets. Under the asset, we shall write non-current asset. Under the non-current asset, I will write property, plant and equipment. Under the property, plant and equipment, generally we write one tangible. Now, 
फर्स्ट आइटम इज फ्री होल्ड प्रॉपर्टी इट सेल्फ ना एज फार एज फ्री होल्ड प्रॉपर्टी इज कंसर्न यू नीड नॉट रिक्वायर टू स्ट्रेच योर माइंड टू फाइंड आउट दी बैलेंस फोर लैख ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड प्रॉपर्टी इज गिवन टू यू आउट ऑफ दैट एक्चुअली वन लैख वन लैख वर्थ ऑफ फ्री होल्ड प्रॉपर्टी यू हैव गिवन एट वन लैख ट्वेंटी डेट्स ए डिफरेंट मैटर now whatever remaining freehold property was there that was valued at 387500 i think so so in the balance sheet you will write freehold property at 387500 straight away then we have in this case plant as far as plant is concerned there is no change in it so you are simply going to write plant these are tangible assets so total tangible asset if i am going to add it it will be equal to 437500 then there are some intangible also however intangible assets in this case there was patents but it is written off so patents will not appear in the new balance sheet you need not require to mention i am simply just trying to make you understand similarly goodwill has been written off so goodwill will also not appear the next item is trade investment and trade investment also you have sold out non current investment non current investment trade investment you have sold them sold it out so no more balance will be there and then we have current assets as far as current assets are concerned we have trade receivables in this case as far as trade receivables are concerned trade receivables are worth rupees 485000 and we created a provision against them if we remember correct against trade creditors we created a provision i have forgotten how much provision we had created against the debtors i think 68500 so 68500 worth of provision we created so balance in the outer column will be equal to 4,16,500 correct after trade receivable look into the balance sheet we have been given inventories i think in some information with respect to inventory was also there inventory is given to you 4,25,000 and it was given that inventory is to be written off by some amount let me look into the entry yes inventories has into inventories have been written off by 65000 so i will subtract 65000 from it so the new value of the inventory will be equal to 380000 is it clear to you now we come over to cash account last item actually last item is profit and loss account which has been written off and after this there is no cash balance as per our old balance sheet as per, as per our old balance sheet opening balance is zero because cash balance is not given in the balance sheet however if we will go through the entries which we have just written correct i will tell you in this manner if you will go through the entry you must remember that you have received some cash also and you have paid some cash also for example when you issued sorry when you took the loan of 130000 from the debentures in the form of 8% secured loan we received cash of 130000 so first i will add 130000 after that we sold trade investments for 140000 so we sold trade investment for 140000 if we will look into the entries then we are not getting cash from any other sources so these are the two sources from where we are receiving the cash isn't it or not however we have made some payment also for example we pay 22500 for accrued interest if you remember then 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 we made payment for directors loan also 5% was paid to them in cash so i will subtract 5000 and then any other payment yes penalty charges we paid to the extent of 12500 so 12500 worth of penalty charges were paid so this much of cash we have received and these three payments we made 
logically my cash balance at this particular moment is equal to this much that is 130000 plus 140000 minus 22500 minus 5000 minus 12500 so at this moment i am having a cash balance of 230000 my point is that i can write here 230000 and i can also write bank overdraft because bank overdraft in the question was also given if you will look into the balance sheet, in the balance sheet, you will find that bank overdraft given under current liability is 1,95,000. But as you must have seen that under the scheme of internal reconstruction, we are trying to give a very strong picture to our financial position. So it would be better and it doesn't look nice that you are having a cash and still you are reflecting bank overdraft. So if you are having sufficient cash, that is 2,30,000 and it is more than bank overdraft, it is better you set off bank overdraft from here. That is the reason I did not write earlier 1,95,000. So 1,95,000 you subtract it from here and then in the outer column you write 35,000. So in this manner you better do this particular question. So it would be better. Is it clear to you? So some of you demanded this question from me. So I told you, okay, well, I will solve it for you. And then next question we'll pick up. The next question is 2.6. Even in the last session, we had a bit of discussion with respect to 2.6, I remember. Two point six. Well, this is two point six now. We will take care of this question. Two point six. The balance sheet of Rebuilt Limited as on 31st of 3, 2021, 22 is given to you. 35,000 equity shares of 100 each, 35 lakh. 15,000 preference shares of 100 each, total amount is 15 lakh. We have profit or loss account debit balance. This time we are also having security premium. There are two non-current liabilities, 7% debentures and director's loan and one current liability in the form of trade payables, correct? As far as property, plant and equipment are concerned, tangible, land and building, plant and machinery, 15 lakh, 10 lakh. We have intangible goodwill also, we will have to write it off. And as far as current asset are concerned, there are three current assets, stock in trade, traders and cash at bank. No dividend has been paid on preference shares in last five years. Board of Directors, Board of Directors of the company decided upon the following scheme of reconstruction that equity share capital will be reduced to 25 each. Existing preference share capital will be reduced to 75. And then after the preference share capital is reduced to 75, they have then, then means preference shareholder then have exchanged for one new 13% preference shares of 50 each and one new equity shares of 25 each. We talked about this particular thing in the last session and I will explain it also. Then there is information with respect to what we call preference dividend. Preference shareholder have agreed to forego their right to preference dividend in area for the last four years. However, one year's dividend at the old rate is payable to them in fully paid equity share. That means one year's dividend we have to pay. Deventure holders have been given the option to accept 90% of their claims in cash. We discussed this point in the last case also, in the last class also. So they are given what we call two options. One option is that they can take the cash. But if they will opt for cash, they will be given only 90%. However, they can also convert their claims in full into 13% preference shares of 50 each issued at par. And out of total debenture, one, ha one half decided to go for preference share and one half decided to get the cash. Then this is with respect to contingent liability. Contingent liability of 1,50,000 is payable. And this liability got created due to wrong action of the directors. We discussed this particular point in the last session also. Goodwill does not have any present value. And decrease in value of plant and machinery, inventory and trade receivable is by this much respectively. However, land value has gone up. And then 40,000 new equity shares of 25 each are to be issued at par. Uh, at the same time, we will have to pay underwriting commission. So this is the question. Correct? 
So we start 2.6. Now let me keep the question sheet before me so that I need not required as I keep on saying look at the question time and again. The first information is each equity share to be reduced to 25 each. Now in the balance sheet we find that equity share capital is given to us 35,000 equity shares of 10 each. So this is point number one and in point number one which is related to equity share only. So our entry will be equity share capital account debit. As I told you, 35,000 shares are there and one share is of rupees 100 each. Total amount is 35 lakh. 35 lakh. So you would write first of all 35 lakhs. And it is given that equity share have been reduced to 75 each. So two equity share capital account. 35,000 into 75. 35,000 into 75 will be equal to 11,25,000. And then I will write here two reconstruction account. 35,000 into 25. 3, how much it will be equal to? I think this value is wrong. It's not 1175. 35,000 into 75 is equal to 26,25,000. 26,25,000. And 35,000 into 25 is equal to 8,75,000. In point number two question is talks about in point number two question talks about that each existing preference share reduced to 75 each. Our existing preference share capital are 10% preference share capital. 15,000 shares are there. 15,000 shares of rupees 100 each. So total is equal to 15 lakhs. And question talks about this particular fact that preference share capital is reduced to 75 each. So 15,000 into 75. 15,000 into 75 is equal to 1125. And then reconstruction account, two reconstruction account. 15,000 preference share capital into 25. 15,000 into 25 is equal to 3,75. However, preference share capital now reduced to 75 each. Preference shareholders, it is given in the question that they are telling that after being reduced to 75, what they are telling to the company, 10% preference share capital. Now, 15,000 after after reduction, 15,000 into 75, that is equal to 11,25,000. Now, preference shareholder, once they have been reduced to 75 each, they are being given new preference shares and then exchanged one new 13% preference share of 50 each. That means these preference shareholders are now being given a 13% preference share, 13% preference shares they are being given and there are 15,000 preference shareholder. Each share will get one new share, but the new share will be of 50 each. So 15,000 into 50, that is 7,50,000. And they are also getting these preference shareholder, they are getting new preference shares and they are also getting equity share also. So you shall write here equity share capital, 15,000 shares. Each share will get one equity share and one equity share is of 25 each. So 15,000 into 25, that is equal to 3,75,000. 3,75,000. Is it clear to you? And then it is given in point number 
three, preference shareholder have foregone their right to dividend. So as far as your second point is concerned, third point is sorry, third point is concerned, preference shareholders. So no entry for foregoing of preference dividend. However, one year's preference dividend we will have to pay. So our entry will be preference dividend account debit. to equity share. We are paying preference dividend to equity share capital. Now point is that what will be the amount of preference dividend? For that I will have to look into the existing preference share capital. My existing preference share capital is 10% preference share capital in the balance sheet and it is of 15 lakh. So one year's dividend will be equal to 1 lakh 50,000. So preference dividend account debit that is equal to 1 lakh 50,000. Correct. And so often I have already told you, you must write it off also. Reconstruction account debit to preference dividend account. That is equal to 1 lakh 50, 1 lakh 50. Is it clear to you? Right. Point number four is debenture holders were given an option to accept either 90% of their claims in cash or to convert their claims in full into 13% preference share. So now in the balance sheet under the non-current liability 7% debentures are given to you. Now 7% debentures are worth rupees 5 lakh. One half of the debentures are willing to get preference shares. So, 13% preference share capital will be given to one half of the debenture holder because they are opting for what we call preference share capital. Because one half are going for share capital, that means 2,50,000 worth of debenture holders are willing to get the preference share holder. They will get entire 2,50,000 in preference share. However, balance one half are willing to have cash. But we are not going to give them full 2,50,000 worth of cash. We will give them only 90%. So 2,50,000 remaining debentures, they are being given cash, but they will be given cash only 90%. That is equal to 2,25,000. And 10% will be transferred to reconstruction. 2,50,000 into 10%. Settlement of 7% eventures. Then this, then the point was contingent liability, 1,50,000. We talked a lot about this particular point in the last session. Contingent liability is, is generally not considered as liability because it is not recorded in the balance sheet. However, now this contingent liability has become payable. Logically, if contingent liability has become payable, that means you are, that means a new liability is getting created. And if a liability gets created and you are not receiving anything against the same and liability is getting created, then it is considered as a loss. For example, if I happen to purchase a furniture on uh, credit, this time also liability is getting created, but it is not a loss because this time due the creation of liability is also what we call having a corresponding asset. But here only liability is getting created. So that is why it is a loss. So if liability is getting created, I will have to write two contingent liability payable. Now this contingent liability has become payable. So contingent liability payable. Now I will have to record this liability. So I have recorded this liability. My liability has increased. I will credit it. Logically, it is a loss to us and I should debit it to reconstruction account. But because this particular liability got created because of wrong action of the director. So directors told us that, well, we will compensate this uh, uh, loss to the company what you do, you compensate instead of what we call debiting it to reconstruction account, you simply debit it to director's loan account. Because in the balance sheet, you can see director's loan is also given to the extent of 1,50,000. So, 
director's loan that means this liability is met out of director's loan so, and director's loan will not appear in the new balance sheet it is debited now so that is the reason you did not debit it to reconstruction account because this liability is debited to director's loan rather than reconstruction because this liability got created because of wrong action of the directors 150000 this contingent liability will also appear in the new balance sheet now we have to goodwill does not have any value so we will of course write off this item and after this actually in point number six in point number six there is a gain also so first we will record the gain because value of land is going up so land account debit to reconstruction account the value of land as per the balance sheet was 15 lakh and now it has gone up to 18 lakh so 3 lakh worth of gain is also there so 3 lakh worth of gain you must record and after that it is also given that 40,000 equity shares have been issued at par so you write point number 7 this is also our entry number 7 bank account debit to equity share capital account we are simply issuing equity shares and 40,000 equity shares have been issued so 40,000 into 25 because one equity share is of 25 now how much it is 1 lakh 40, 40,000 into 25 that is equal to 10 lakh in fact not 1 lakh 10 lakh On account of this entry, your equity share capital will increase and also your cash balance will increase 10 lakh. Question also says that when you issued these shares, you also paid underwriting commission. So underwriting commission account debit, underwriting commission. Underwriting Commission Account Debit to Bank Account. Underwriting Commission, you will compute 4% of 10 lakh. 4% of 10 lakh. That is equal to 40,000, I think so. 40,000. And this Underwriting Commission must be written off immediately. Reconstruction account debit to underwriting commission account. 40,000 should be written off to reconstruction account. This is how you are going to pass this entry. And then total expenses incurred by the company in connection with the scheme of underwriting commission were 15,000. Now some reconstruction expenses have also taken place. Again, two entries you are going to pass. Reconstruction expenses account debit. Two bank account or cash account. Whatever you may like to write. 15,000 worth of expenses you incurred. Again, these expenses must be written off to reconstruction account. So, reconstruction account debit to reconstruction expenses account. Reconstruction expenses account. 15,000. Then nothing else is given in this particular question. Correct? So, after this, let me check up the balance in the reconstruction account. First of all, we have 8,75,000. I will write 8,75,000. Then 3,75,000 credit balance is there, so plus 3,75,000. And then, then reconstruction is getting debited by 1,50,000. I will subtract 1,50,000. 
then reconstruction is getting credited by 25,000. I will add 25,000. Then reconstruction is getting credited by 3 lakh. I will add 3 lakh. Then underwriting commission we paid and it got debited. Reconstruction got debited. And again debited 15,000. So 13 lakh 70,000 is the balance. Correct? 13 lakh 70,000 is the balance in this particular question. Let me check all the entries which we have passed. 2.6 Well, our first entry 2.6 is with respect to 10% preference share capital 1125-375 fine then 1125-750 and 2,75,000 it is also fine Preference dividend we debited, sorry, we paid by way of equity share. Then preference dividend debited. And then 7% debentures account to preference share capital account to bank account. And director's loan 1,50,000 and contingent liability 1,50,000. It seems all the entries haven't been done over here. Because after this there are so many entries. After the contingent liability equity share capital have been issued and total expenses so you will have to go through this solution <laughs> director's loan 150 and contingent liability account land account debit to reconstruction account then bank account debit to equity share capital account underwriting commission to bank and then reconstruction to underwriting commission account reconstruction expenses to cash and reconstruction expenses account debit to this and finally then you will have to pass this entry reconstruction account debit now we have to write off lots of item in this case in the question it is given that where is the question sheet? That is the problem. Goodwill does not have any value. So, goodwill which is given in the balance sheet, you must write of 3,50,000 is the amount of goodwill. 3,50,000. Correct? Further, it is also given decrease in value of plant and machinery decrease in value of plant and machinery is 4 lakh and it is given that inventory is falling falling down by inventory inventory is falling down by 1 lakh so you also write 1 lakh and trade receivable are coming down by to trade receivable. Trade receivables are coming down by 1,50,000. Increase in value of land and building, we are already incorporated it. And 40,000 new equity shares, we have incorporated it. So these are the items which you have to write off. Besides that, in the balance sheet, you have to check whether you have any loss. Yes, profit and loss account loss is there. Profit and loss account, heavy loss, 19,50,000. So this is the amount which you have to write off. This much of amount which you need to write off, that is equal to 3,50,000 plus 4 lakh plus 1 lakh plus 1,50,000 and plus 19,50,000. Total amount to be written off is 29,50,000. Now I will have to check again the total available balance. In the reconstruction account, we have 8,75,000 as per entry number 1. Correct? 
where we pass the entry for this. 35,000 equity shares. Okay, 8,75,000 equity shares came down, reduced 2 rupees 75. Equity share capital reduced to 25. Now, this was the point which was creating a problem. Actually, new equity share capital is 8,75 and reconstruction account will be 26,25,000. That is the reason actually I was thinking that we have to write off so much of amount and where we will have the balance. Actually, it is given in the question equity share capital has been reduced to 25 each. So, new equity share capital will be actually 35,000 into 25 and reconstruction will be 35,000 into 75. Correct? Extremely sorry. 26,25 anyway plus 3,75 and plus 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 any reconstruction no there is no reconstruction however there is debit balance less 150 we have written off dividend then plus 25 then plus 3 lakh minus 40,000 underwriting commission Thirty one lakh thirty five thousand some and then fifteen thousand further expenses I have to write off. So thirty one lakh twenty thousand is the net balance as per my calculation. You also check it down, please. Net balance is thirty one lakh twenty thousand, and this total is twenty nine lakh fifty. Twenty nine lakh fifty I will subtract. So one lakh seventy thousand will be your capital reserve. So, this is how you will have to do this particular question. So some student demanded these two questions and what about the next? There is still one more question of this particular topic left. Correct? 20, 21, 22, 2.7 in fact. So, as far as 2.7 is concerned, just pay attention. Regarding 2.7, what is given in this particular question? At least this question, actually no one demanded this question. So, I think that you should be in a position to the, do this question. And this question is absolutely ditto copy of what we got 2.6. Correct? This is ditto copy of 2.6. You should be in a position to do this particular question. So, I will meet you in the next session. Correct? Uh, I am not well today. So, intensity is a little bit on the lower side you must have noticed it also uh, we will meet you then in the next session and we will uh, quite obviously take up the remaining part of this particular chapter hello and welcome again to this particular session and in this one which is going to be the final session of this particular chapter internal reconstruction and in the last three attempts that is December 21 and then December 22 and of course June 23 the whatever questions have struck now we are going to discuss that correct so all these questions are from your recent examinations I'm talking about what we call CFR final so given below or this is December 21 this question is from December 21 unfortunately in the examination five alternatives were asked but only two alternatives were related to this particular question and three alternatives were not at, at all related to this particular question. So, anyway, these are the mistakes created by the institute so often that is a big problem. Anyway, we have to do this particular question, so we shall do it now. And this is the summer 21 paper. And this question is of internal reconstruction. Given below are the extract from the balance sheet of sickness limited as on 31st of 3, 2021. As you can see, equity shares are 8,000 shares of rupees 100 each, 50 paid up, total equity share capital is 4 lakh. Then we have 11% cumulative preference shares of 100 each, 4 lakh. And besides that, security premium is there, general reserve is there, 
trade creditors are given to you in fact current liability are given to you as 3 lakh 10000 and in this 3 lakh 10000 there are trade creditors 1 lakh 36550 besides that tangible fixed assets are given to you at 8 lakh 50 and less depreciation 2 lakh 70 suppose if i am going to subtract from 8 lakh 50000 8 lakh 50000 minus 2 lakh 70 i will be left up with 5,80,000. That means the net balance of your tangible fixed asset is equal to 5,80,000. Further, goodwill, uh, goodwill is also given to you at 40,000 rupees and uh, investments are 25,000 and inventories 2,15,000, trade traders 250 and cash and bank balance happens to be 1 lakh. This is the situation of this particular question. Then further, the question states that contingent liability not provided and contingent liability is in the form of preference dividend which are areas which are in area for three years including the current years that mean till till the end of the current year three years of preference dividend is in area. The funds of the company are sufficient to discharge its liability including preference dividend in area. However, the company does not want to however the company does not want to deplete the resources and it would like to reflect the value of some of its assets in a realistic manner and the board of directors of the company decided and proposed the following scheme of reconstruction so all in all nutshell is that company is going for a scheme of internal reconstruction on 1 4 2021 the cumulative preference shares are to be issued in exchange of their holding 13% debenture of the face value of 100 each at a premium of 10% and fractional holdings are to be paid in cash. Cumulative preference share are to be issued in exchange of their holding 13% debenture of the face value of 100 but these debenture will be issued at, at the rate of 10% premium. That means the debenture which the company will issue to the existing preference shareholder will be at the rate of 110 and question says fractional holdings are to be paid in cash what does this particular line mean that i will explain here see here 11 percent cumulative preference shares are 4 lakh as per the balance sheet which is given in the question that is 4000 shares of hand of 100 each 4 lakh correct and we are giving them debentures how we have computed the amount of debentures which we are going to pay them it is given in the question that preference shareholders will be issued preference shareholder will be issued debentures so 11 percent cumulative preference share account debit to 13 percent debenture account the entry will be but problem is that we are issuing the debenture of 100 at the rate of 110 so if i am going to divide it by this value it will come to 36 36 point something correct that means I will issue 3636 three, debentures of 100 each that is equal to 363600 and because debentures are being issued at a premium of 10 so 3636 three, debenture into 10 36360 will be your premium and the balancing figure will be paid by way of cash known as fractional payment because we cannot issue debenture for fractional preference shares is it clear to you or not so this is the reason actually this payment will be by way of cash. This is what we mean by this particular sentence that fractional holding are to be paid in cash. This was point number one of the question. Now as per the point I have given you the solution. Now second point of the question is areas of preference dividend to be converted into equity shares of ended each 50 per share paid. Areas of preference dividend areas of preference dividend to be converted into equity shares of 100 each rupees 50 per share paid up first of all you need to know what is your area of preference dividend 11 percent preference share capital is there so 11 percent preference share 11 percent of preference share capital your existing preference share capital is this much and it is stated in the question that dividend is in area since last three years if I am compute, if I am going to compute the amount, that will be equal to one lakh thirty-two thousand. So, areas of preference dividend will be converted into equity shares of hundred each, but the equity share are of fifty paid up as it is given in the balance sheet, eight thousand shares of hundred each, but fifty paid up. 
that means 8,000 shares are there, of 100 each is there, but so far we have called up 50 and 50 have been paid up. So we are issuing, first of all, we are making the payment to the uh, whole amount of areas of what we call preference dividend, correct? Total areas of preference dividend are 1,32,000 and we are making the payment for 1,32,000 but by way of equity share, so preference dividend account debit 1,32,000 and two equity share capital 1,32,000. But how many sh equity shares I will issue? In order to pay 1,32,000, because equity share is 50 paid up, I will divide it by 50 to know the number of equity share which will be equal to 2,640. So my entry will be two equity share capital, 2,640 shares of 100 each, 50 paid up. Is it clear to you or not? You must also understand that in the balance sheet, in the balance sheet, you are having 8,000 shares. Their face value is no doubt about that 100. However, their paid up value is 50. And you have just issued to pay the preference dividend 2640 share as I told you, 132,000 worth of amount we need to pay by way of equity shares. For the same actually we are giving in this particular case 2640 worth of equity shares. So that means after entry number 2, my number of equity share will be equal to this much. My number of equity share will be equal to 10,640. Of course these shares are, for, these shares are of 100 each and 50 paid up. Correct. Now, after making the payment to the preference dividend, so many times we have told you now that it will be debited to reconstruction account. So, your next entry will be reconstruction account debit to preference dividend account. Now, third point of the question states that after the issue of equity share mentioned in second above, mentioned in second above, the paid up value of all the equity share is to be reduced to rupees 25 each. Now, what does it mean? That means after having issued shares for preference dividend, now you have got total number of shares 10,640 as I told you. Now, question is telling that these shares are being reduced to now 10,640 shares of 150 paid up. They are now being reduced from 50 to 25 paid up. 50 to 25 paid up. That means that means my entry will be equity share capital 10,640. Please pay attention. Question says that after the issue of the equity share, paid up value of the equity share will be reduced to 25. So because equity shareholders are coming down by 25, so 10,640 into 25 to reconstruction 2,66,000. Is it clear to you? That means after this entry, we have only 10,640 shares of 100 is 25 because these shares have been reduced to 25. So it is your gain 2,66,000. Is it clear to you? Now the question states that the face value of all the equity share to be reduced to 50 each. Now, please pay attention. You will not pass any entry for this particular sentence. The face value of the equity share is reduced to 50 each. It means it means now my now after entry number three we have 10640 shares of 100 is 25 because these shares were reduced to 25 so present position is that my equity shares are 10640 shares of 100 each at the rate of 25 now only thing is that what we are doing we are changing the face value because we have called up only till up to 50 earlier and those 50 even were reduced to 25. As per this sentence, now we are reducing the what we call well, face value. Because you are reducing the face value, that means it will not have any effect. It will not have any effect because you haven't called up more than 50 so far. Is it clear to you or not? Because so far, as per the balance sheet, you had 8000 shares, one share was of 100 and you had called up only 50. And even 50 per shares have been reduced to 25, as I told you. So this entry will not have any effect. But only thing is that now, after, after this information, we can say that we have 10,640 shares of 50 each at the 25 paid up. Correct? However, question says that 
the balance of the unpaid portion is to be called up fully the balance of the unpaid portion because now your share is 50 and you have called up 25 because you have you reduced because you have reduced your share to 25 that means your share is 25 called up so unpaid portion will be 25 this 25 will become your unpaid portion so this portion is being called up now so when you will call up this your entry will be bank account debit 10640 shares 266000 two equity share capital 266000 so after after this entry because we have called up 25 now so position is that we have 10640 shares of 50 each because we have called up 25 now called up value and paid up value is also 50 each Point number five states that goodwill lost its value and has to be written off. And market value of tangible fixed asset is determined at 4,99,250. Because goodwill is lost out, so for, you will write to goodwill account 40,000. And tangible assets, if you will go through the balance sheet, I told you that your tangible fixed assets at gross value is 8,50,000 and less depreciation. Their net value is 5,80,000. So tangible fixed asset as per this information, as per this information have been reduced from 5,80,000 to 4,99,250. That means 80,750. So you will have to write off your tangible fixed asset by 80,750. So good to goodwill account two tangible fixed asset account and question also says that in point number six question says that investments have no market value now in the balance sheet investment is given to you at 25,000 and it's it is not having any market value that means its market value is zero so you will have to write off 25,000 worth of investment also so the total of this is equal to 1,45,750 so reconstruction account debit to all these items now point number seven of the question states that inventory is valued at 110% of its book value. Now if we will look into the balance sheet we will see that inventory is given to you at 2,15,000. And if I will take 10% of this it is equal to 21,500. Question says that inventory is valued at 110%. That means 10% more than what is written over here. So that means the value of inventory is going up by 21,500. So my entry will be inventory account debit to reconstruction account 21,500. Further, it is also given that trade daters are discounted by 5%. And if you will look into the balance sheet, once again, your trade daters are 2,50,000 and trade daters are coming down by 5%. That is equal to 12,500. Correct. So your entry will be reconstruction account debit to datas because value of datas has fallen down. Now, if you if we are going to look into the question, what items we have written off? We have written off datas to the extent of twelve thousand five hundred. Correct. We have. Uh, written off investments to the extent of 25,000. We have written off tangible fixed asset to the extent of 80,750. And we have written off goodwill. These are the items which we have written off. If I will total them up, the total value is equal to 40,000 plus 80,750 plus 25,000 and plus 12,500. The total value is 158. That means this much of amount you need to have to write them off. Correct? 158,250. But let us see what is the balance in the reconstruction account. In entry number one, reconstruction is getting debited. Correct? In point number two, sorry, reconstruction account is getting debited in entry number one. There is no reconstruction. So at this moment, there is minus 32, now 266. So 266,000 minus 1, minus 1,32,000, 1,34, 1, 
and then reconstruction account again is debited by 145750 now balance is 11750 negative and here reconstruction is getting credited 21500 and 21,500. So we find ultimately that there is negative balance. That means the balance is not enough to the extent of 2,750. To the extent of 2,750, there is shortfall. And I told you in one question earlier, if there will be shortfall, you are going to utilize your reserves. So you will utilize your reserves by 2,750 reserves account debit to reconstruction. I have solved this question point wise for better understanding otherwise you can write off the items later on as most of the time we generally do correct however you are also supposed to prepare the reconstruction account in this particular question see here equity share capital is getting credited by 266 in because inventory has gone up further by 21,500 I will write 21,500 we have written off preference dividend we have written off goodwill, we have written off tangible fixed asset, we have written off investment and datas. So this will be the shortfall and this shortfall will be taken from the general reserve. So this reconstruction account also provides you the complete picture. Further in the question it was also given, the scheme as approved by the director is duly accepted by all the authorities. The scheme as approved by the director is duly accepted by all the authorities and put into effect. During the working of half year ended 30th of September 2009-2021. Remember one thing. On 1-4-2021, correct, because balance sheet is given to us as at 31-3-2021. And we have implemented the scheme on 1-4-2021. Just pay attention here. 1-4-2021. On 1-4-2021, you have passed this all these entries correct and prepared your reconstruction account further the question states that the scheme is approved and during the working for the half year ended 30th of 9 2021 that mean from 1 4 2021 till 30th of september 2021 some more information is given correct the information is that during this particular period it is noticed that the trading for the period has resulted an increase in bank balance to the extent of 55,100. So during this particular period, what is happening? Increase in bank balance to the extent of 55,100 is taking place. Trade daters are also going up by 20%. Trade creditors are also going up by 20%. And decrease in inventory is also taking place by 6%. Correct from 1 4 2021 till 30th of September 2021, these things are happening. And further, depreciation on fixed asset is to be provided at 10% per annum. Question states increase in bank balance was prior to company paying the half yearly interest on debenture and redeeming the half on the debenture on 30th of 9 2021. It means between 1 4 2021 and 30th of September 2021. Deventure interest is also paid and one half of the debentures were also reduced. And question is asking us, what is the balance in profit and loss account as on 30th of September 2021? This is something extra which was asked in the question. Now, in order to know that, what you are going to do, as I've already told you, from 1 4 2021 till 30th of 9 2021, question says that our bank balance has gone up by 55,100. Remember one thing. So, in order to know the profit and loss account balance, increase in bank balance always means increase in profit. Correct? So, increase in bank balance, first of all, I have written here 55,100. Indirectly, it means it is increase in profits. And during this particular period from 1 4 2021 till 30th of September 2021, daters have decreased. So daters have decreased. Our daters, if you will see, as in the balance sheet were 2,50,000. And we wrote off 12,500 from daters earlier. If I will show you the entry, daters were written off by 12,500. Here you must have seen. Correct. That mean on 1 4 2021, datas were 2 lakh 50. 
but they were written off by 12,500. That means exactly the balance in debtor's account is actually 2,37,500 on 1 4 2021. You can see. Correct? 2,50 minus 12,500, that is 37,500. And now the question says that from 1 4 2021 till 30th of September, debtors have gone up by 20%. So you will compute 20% of 2,37,500. So increase. So, debtors have gone up. So, increase in asset is always considered as increase in profit. That is why we are going to add 47,500. Similarly, question says that trade creditors increased by 20%. Now, trade creditors were written under the current liability 1,36,550. They have gone up by 20%. Now, increase in liability means decrease in profit. So, 27,310, it will decrease the profit. Question also says that in between 1 4 2021 till 30th of September 2021, increase inventory has decreased by 6%. But inventory as per the balance sheet was 2,15,000 at the time of internal reconstruction scheme, which we implemented on 1 4 2021. We found that inventory went up by 21,500. That means logically on 1 4 2021, inventory was this much 2,36,500. And in between 1 4 2021 till 30th of September, it has dipped down by 6%. So 6% of 236,500 2 will be equal to 14,190. It will decrease your profit, correct? Decrease in asset. And further, the question says that depreciation on tangible fixed asset because Question says that so far depreciation is not debited to profit or loss account because it was clearly written that increase in profit was prior to pay prior to payment of interventure interest and redemption or venture. So depreciation on tangible fixed asset, first of all, I will write. Now the value of tangible fixed asset is 4,99,250 on 1 4 2021. So we will charge 10% depreciation for six months from 1 4 2021 till 30th of September. When we will charge the depreciation, we will profit will reduce. And also, interest on debenture interest has been paid. Now you might wonder, sir, in the balance sheet, there were no debenture at all. When we will look into the balance sheet, there are no debentures. However, in the first entry, when you discharge the preference shareholder because you converted preference shareholder into debentures, you have issued this much of debenture, 363,600. These debentures have been issued on 1 4 2021. So 13% debenture of 363,600 for six months you will compute, and interest on debenture will be 13% of 363,600 for six months will be equal to this much. So our profit will reduce. So we may say that on 30th of September, balance in profit and loss account is actually 12,504. Is it clear to you or not? So this is the balance. This was one question which was asked in the examination. Next question was compute the amount of cash balance on 30th of 9, 2021. Now how to compute the cash balance? Now first we will take the balance which is given in the balance sheet that is 1 lakh, no problem. Now, increase in bank balance is 55,100. Question is clearly stating that from 1 4 2021 till 30th of September, bank balance has gone up by actually 55,100. Then I will subtract the payment of preference shareholder because we have written off the entries and we have made fractional payment of rupees 40. I will subtract it. Not only that, I have also called some amount unpaid portion of equity share capital we wrote the entry bank account debit to equity share capital that means you will look into the entry wherever you will find bank being debited you add and wherever you find bank is getting credited you subtract now the main thing is that interest on debenture you will subtract here because when we pay interest we pass two entry interest on debenture account debit to cash that is why i am writing uh, the debenture interest over here for calculating cash balance and then we pass profit and loss account debit to interest on debenture. That is why I have written interest on debenture here also. Correct? Now, redemption of debenture is not written while computing profits because when we redeem the debenture, it doesn't affect the profit. However, it will, it will affect the what we call uh, your cash payment. You have issued 3,63,600 worth of debenture and question says that on 30th of June to on 30th of September 2021, 
one half of the debentures have been redeemed. So you will redeem the debenture and this will be your balance. Besides the normal entries, these two things were asked. So this is how you are going to deliver the answer. Then this question is from June 23 old course paper. Correct. And this is not a tough question. Amla Tulsi Limited provides you the following information as on 31st of 3, 2023. And in the balance sheet, you find that we have equity share capital. Uh, and figures are in lakhs. So we may say 50 lakh, 50 lakh shares of rupees 10 each. Similarly, cumulative preference shares are 6% and their face value is 100. Total amount is 100 lakhs. So that means 1 lakh preference share of 100. We can say 1 lakh shares. Profit and loss account debit balance is there, 15 lakh. We will have to write it off. There is capital reserve also. And then first debenture, then second debenture, the debenture interest outstanding. What we mean by first debenture and second debenture? If you remember, and if you have gone through the earlier sessions of this particular chapter, I told you earlier also regarding this particular point, because generally when a company issue the debentures, the debenture holders are not quite keen or willing to actually subscribe to the debenture of a particular company. The one reason and the basic reason is that debentures do not carry any voting rights. So that's the reason in order to lure the debenture, in order to attract them to actually purchase the debenture, we give them so many incentives. And one among them is that, please subscribe to our debentures and we give you a security that we are going to repay your amount at the stipulated date. And in case if we fail, we will, you can take the security of this particular asset. That being, we are assuring the debenture, let us say we are assuring the debenture that we are giving a we are giving you security of plant and machinery and we are issuing the debentures to you and if we would fail, you can sell off this particular asset and can recover your amount. Let us say a particular company has issued, let us say 5 lakh worth of debenture and given them security of this particular asset. Then after some time, again this company issued debenture and even to these debenture holder, the security of this asset is given. So these debenture will be known as first debenture. These will be known as second debenture. However, these debentures will have first claim over this particular security. And whatever is left over there, the claim of second debenture will be there. So that is what we mean by first debenture, second debenture. Is it clear to you? Now. In this particular question, company has issued 10% first debenture of 60 lakh as is given to you. And then we have issued second debenture and debenture outstanding is 16 lakh. Now please pay attention. 10% first debenture are 60 lakh. So 10% interest of 60 lakh is equal to 6 lakh. And 10% interest of 100 lakh will be equal to 10. So total will be equal to 16 lakh. That is why debenture interest outstanding is given to you as 16 lakh. And then we have been given in this case trade payable creditors also. Again in this question, dividend on preference uh, shares are in area since last three years. A scheme is approved. All the equity share will be converted into same number of equity shares of five each. Rupees 2.50 paid up. Now, your first entry will be pay attention here. You have 50 lakh equity share of 10 each. So first you write here, equity share capital 500 lakh. Now equity share are being reduced to 5 because it is given that equity share are being reduced to rupees 5 each. So equity share capital 50 into 5, 250 lakh and 2 reconstruction account 250 into 5, sorry, 250. However, if you have gone through closely, your equity share capital is equal to 50 lakh. One and question is stating that 50 lakh shares of 10 each. Question is stating that equity share capital is being reduced first of all to 5 and then 2.5 paid up then 2.5 paid up. Logically, it means equity share capital is being reduced from 10 to 2.50. But this is the way to pass the entry. First, you bring down the equity share capital to 5 each and now from 5 to 2.50. So your next entry will be equity share capital 50 into 5, 250 lakh 
and equity share capital 50 into 2.5. So now equity share capital is this much and two reconstruction 125. You can pass a single entry also, but this is for better understanding. Correct. Then regarding preference uh, preference share, it is given that preference shares are converted from 6% to 15%, but revalued in a manner in which total return on them remains unaffected. First of all, we will consider this particular line. Now, if we will look into the balance sheet, we will find that preference share capital, 6% cumulative preference share of 100 each is equal to 100. That means 1 lakh shares are there of 100 lakhs, of 100 each. That is why it is given 100 lakhs. Correct? I have written here 6% preference share capital account. 100 lakhs means 1 lakh share into 100. Correct? 1 lakh shares of 100 each. So that is equal to 100 lakhs. Now 6% preference share capital is being issued to the preference shareholders. 6% preference share capital is issued to them. Uh, sorry, 6% preference shareholders are being issued 15% preference share. But in such a manner that the return for them remains unaffected. What does it mean? For example, presently our preference share capital is worth rupees 100 lakh and rate of dividend is 6%. So your present dividend you are earning is equal to 6 lakhs. Your earnings are 6 lakhs. Now we have we are issuing you 15% preference share. So 15% preference share of what value should I issue so that you still get what we call return of 6 lakh. So in order to find that, in order to find this value, I will write in this manner, 15% of x is equal to 6 or 100 into 6 divided by 15 and that will be equal to 40. That means our company will issue you 15% preference share capital, 1 lakh share of 40 each. That means 40 lakh worth of preference share capital we will issue you. If you will compute 15% of 40 lakh, it will be equal to what we call your present dividend of 6 lakh. Correct? And then rest will be transferred to reconstruction account. And I have shown the calculation here also. Is it clear to you? The next point is with respect to preference dividend. Four equity shares of five each, rupees 2.50 paid off will be issued for each rupees 100 of preference dividend. First of all, obviously, you will have to compute the amount of preference dividend. And so many times I have told you, when you compute the areas of preference dividend which are in area for three years, you must look into your existing equity share capital. This is your preference dividend calculation I have shown here. Total preference dividend in area. Present preference share capital is 100 lakhs. 6% is their rate of dividend. And for three years, total preference dividend in area will be equal to 18 lakhs. So we have to make a payment of 18 lakhs. Now question is telling that how we are making the payment. Total preference dividend is 18 lakh for every 100 divided by 100. For every 100, for every rupees 100 of preference dividend, we are offering four equity share of rupees 2.50. And that will be equal to 1.80. That means we are paying only 1.80 worth of preference dividend. Although preference dividend in area is 18 lakh, but we are paying only 1.80 lakhs worth of preference dividend. Regarding the rest, we need not require to pass any entry. That means whatever remaining balance of preference dividend is there, you consider it as waived off. But what we have paid, we are going to pass the entry first. Preference dividend account debit to equity share capital, and then we will. Transfer this amount to reconstruction account. Also, reconstruction account debit to preference dividend account. This will be your entry. Now, the next part of this question says that Mr. A holds 10% first venture for rupees 40 lakhs and 10% second venture of 60 lakhs. If you will look in the balance sheet, your first ventures. First debenture were 60 lakh and second debentures are 100 lakh. 
first debentures are 60 lakhs and your second debentures are worth rupees 100 lakh. I think so. Let me check it also. 60 and 100. Correct. Now, question says that Mr. A holds 10% first debenture. Out of 60 lakh worth of debenture, Mr. A holds 40 lakhs. Correct. And out of second debenture, Mr. A holds 60 lakhs worth of debenture. He is also creditor for rupees 10 lakh. Now, if we look in the balance sheet, the total creditors are 165 lakh. Out of 165 lakh, Mr. A, hold, Mr. A has given us 10 lakh worth of what we call credit. That means out of total creditor, 10 lakh amount is due to Mr. A. Now, question says that Mr. A is to cancel 60 lakh of his total debt and to pay rupees 10 lakhs to the company and to receive new 12% debenture of the balance amount. What does it mean? First of all, let, let me check how much amount is due to Mr. A. Correct? See here. 10% first debenture account. You must write because Mr. A is having 10% first debenture. 10% second debenture also he is having. And I have written here interest on debenture. You should not forget to write it off. Because Mr. A has subscribed to 40 lakh debenture. And these are 10% debenture. So interest on 40 lakh debenture must be 4. And interest on second debenture must be 6. That means total interest due to him is equal to 10 lakh. So that is why interest on debenture 10 lakh. And he is also creditor for 10 lakh. That means this much of debt our company has taken from Mr. A. So that is why I am writing this entry. All these debts account debit to Mr. A account. So all these debts have been transferred to Mr. A. Now, next entry is Mr. A account debit. That is total debts of Mr. A. What Mr. A is telling? Mr. A is telling that out of 120, I am going to cancel 60 lakhs of my debts. So that is why I have written here to reconstruction account. And Mr. A is also paying us 10 lakh worth of cash. Correct? Mr. A is also paying us. Mr. A is to cancel. Mr. A is to cancel 60 lakh of his total debt. And he is paying actually 10 lakh amount to the company. And he will receive new 12% debenture for the balance amount. That means total debts of Mr. A were 120. And he has given us 10 lakh worth of cash. That means the total amount which our company owes to Mr. A happens to be 130 lakhs. And out of 130 lakhs, he has now cancelled 60 lakh of his debts. That means it is a gain to the company. And for the balance, the balance is 70. So for the balance, we are issuing him new 12% debenture account, 70 lakh. Similar is the situation with respect to Mr. B. Out of total debenture of 60 lakh, Mr. B holds 20 lakh debenture. Out of 100 lakhs, 60 lakhs worth of debenture were held by Mr. A and the balance have been held by Mr. B. It is written in the question. I will, I will go through that line. Don't worry. And the total interest will be because 10% debenture, 10% of 20 will be 2 and 10% of 40 will be 4. So total interest due is 6. And it is also given that Mr. B is also creditor of 5 lakh. That means total debts of Mr. B is equal to 71 lakh. Now what Mr. B is telling, he is telling I will cancel 30 lakhs of my debts. Similar to A, Mr. B is not paying any cash. Correct? He is simply telling that out of my total debts, I am going to cancel 30 lakhs. So, and please let me issue that new debenture for the balance amount. I will go through this particular line also. Mr. B holds, Mr. B holds the remaining 10% debentures and is also a creditor of 5 lakh. This is what I have told you. Out of 60 lakh worth of debenture, A holds 40. So, remaining 20 must be held by Mr. B. Similarly, out of 100, A holds... 60, 40 must be held by Mr. B. Is it clear to you? And Mr. B is also creditor of 5 lakh as is given. And now it is also given in the question that Mr. B is cancelling 30 lakh of his total debt. 30 lakh is total debt. And new 12% debenture will be issued to him for the balance amount. I hope you got this particular entry correct. So this is how you are going to 
pass the entry. First take into account all the debts, transfer to that person and then debit that person and whatever he is cancelling, take it to the reconstruction account and for the balance amount, new debentures are being issued. Now in the next line, the question says that trade creditors other than Mr. A and B. Now if you will look into the balance sheet, total creditors are 1,65,000, sorry. And out of that 10 lakh are held by A, 5 lakh worth of creditors belong to B. So that means the remaining creditors is equal to 150 lakhs. Remaining creditor is equal to 150. And this, this sort of line we have done so many times. Trade creditors are being given an option that they can take equity shares and they can take cash also. But if they will take the cash, we will give them only 80%. Trade creditors other than A and B are given the option either to accept equity shares of 5, 2.5 paid up for the amount due to them or to accept 80% of the amount due to them. 40% of the creditor accepted equity share where balance decided that we will opt for cash. That means out of 150, 60% decided we will go for equity shares sorry, 40% decided we will go for equity share and 60% decided we will go for cash. This is the question. So, your entry will be like this. Trade creditors account debit that is 150 lakh. 40% of 150 is equal to 60 lakh. These creditors will be given equity share capital. Then I will compute because 40% are going for uh, opting for equity shares rather and 60% are the remaining they are going for cash. First you compute 60% of 150 that is equal to 90. But you will not pay them 90 because you have given them the option that if you will go for cash, we will give you only 80%. So 80% of 90, you will pay only 72 and 18 will be transferred to reconstruction account. Finally, you will find out the reconstruction balance that will be 541.20 and then you will write off your profit and loss account and it was given in the question, whatever amount is remaining, that will be used in writing of our property, plant and equipment. Here you write plant and machinery. This is plant and machinery. And you can prepare the reconstruction account also. I have prepared it and shown everything over here. Is it clear to you? And finally, we come to the June 23 paper. June 23 model paper, new syllabus. June 23 model paper. And if you will go through this particular paper, it is very easy. And item wise, I have solved this particular question. This should not pose you any trouble. Correct? I solve this question completely and comprehensively, but still I will do it for you. Just give me five minutes of time before we finish it off. Just five minutes, correct?
So welcome again to this particular part of the session. The class is still on and I have already told you today I'm not quite well. So intensity is quite low on my side. I do agree to it and you must have noticed it also. But anyway, I just want to wrap it up today and that's the reason. Mm, just. Okay. So June 23 paper. And this is this question has been taken from the model paper of new syllabus, correct? It's here towards the equity and liability side, we have been given share capital. So when you will notice the share capital, 8 lakh, you must notice that this time note number is given. That means some more information is given below. That means we have share capital, 2008% preference share capital of 2 lakh and 60,000 equity shares of 10 each, correct? Similarly, we have been given reserve and surplus. Note number two is given. So that mean information below must be given. There are general reserves to the extent of 150 and negative balance in profit and loss account. That is why the net amount is written over here, 30,000. Then we have 6% debentures of 100 each current liability, property, plant and equipment to the extent of 3 lakh. And then we have inventories to the extent of 3 lakh 25. Trade receivable two lakh seventy five and cash and cash equivalent to the extent of thirty thousand. Correct. Then during the last few years, the company is passing through very bad times, and it is now puts following a scheme of reconstruction. The scheme is that each existing equity share will be converted into one equity share of nominal value of rupees three per share. Now, what will be the entry regarding this? I need not require to tell you. Presently, your equity share capital is 60,000 into 10, so 6 lakh. And now equity share capital is reduced to rupees 3 each, 1 lakh 80. And your gain will be 60,000 into 7, 4 lakh 20,000. Correct? Then point number 2 states that 8% preference share capital are to be converted into such number of 16% preference shares of 100 each as to generate the same amount of dividend as before. I told you how to compute this. Your 8% preference share capital presently is 2 lakh. Correct? Your present preference share capital is 2 lakh. That means at the rate of 8% on 1 lakh, on 2 lakh, sorry, you are getting a dividend of 16,000. Now our company is going to issue you 16% debenture. So what will be the value of the debenture? I will take the value as X. What will be the value of the debenture which our company should issue you so that you still get 16,000 worth of dividend? So similar to the last question which we did, 16,000 into 100 divided by 16. This will tell you that your company will issue 1 lakh shares, 16% 1 lakh share. So that is why I have written the entry here. You can see 16% preference share capital, 1,000 into 100. 1 lakh worth of preference share capital you will issue and obviously your gain will be 1 lakh. Then in point number 3, it is written that each 100 debentures are to be exchanged for 150 new 12% debenture and 6 new equity share. Now we will first of all have a look over the amount of debenture first of all. Deventures total are 1 lakh, one deventure is of 100 each as you can see and there are 6% deventures. Correct, that means total deventures are 6,000 deventures. That is uh, 1 lakh and one share is 100, 1,000 deventures. So, right now we are having 1,000 6% deventures. 6%, 1,000 deventures of 100 each. Amount is equal to 1 lakh. Amount is equal to 1 lakh. And as per the direction of the question, each 100 debentures are to be exchanged for 1, for 1, rupees 50 new 12% debenture and 6 new equity shares of 3 each. What does it mean? That means we are issuing them now debentures, new debentures, 12% uh, debenture, new debenture 12%. So 12% debentures we are issuing. And we are issuing them equity shares also. But how many debenture and how many equity share? Question says that there are total 1000 debenture. Each debenture, each debenture will get one debenture now, but of rupees 50 each. 
So that means 50,000 we are giving them 12% debenture and question is stating that each debenture is also getting 6 equity share and 1 equity share is of rupees 3 each. That is equal to 18,000. So balancing figure will be your gain to reconstruction account that is equal to 12,000. This is the entry I have written over here. 6% debenture account debit 1 lakh and 1000 into 50 this is better way of understanding it and equity share again this is the better way of understanding it I have written 12,000 actually it is 32,000 32,000 is your gain is it clear to you 32,000 is your gain not 18 and then finally you have to write off the things in this particular question and in order to write off the things first you will compute your reconstruction account balance which will come to 552 then you will start writing off you will start writing off profit and loss account 120 profit and loss account is actually 120 that inventories you have to write off by 60 percent it is given in the question daters also and property plant and equipment you also need to write off but before that one more line is given in the question here the reduction of capital balance and reserves are to be utilized for writing of losses 60 percent of the inventory and debtors and balance if any is to be writing down by proper writing down property now question says that reduction of capital that mean reconstruction account balance and reserves that mean in this question you are utilizing the reserves also that is why i have written here prof reconstruction account debit and general reserve account debit so you you may say that this is the total balance available with you to write off out of that you have written off these three items and now question says that whatever balance will be there you will use it for writing down property plant and equipment so balancing figure will be two lakh twenty two thousand you will use that to write off property plant and equipment and i have also framed the balance sheet which you can go through very easily all the working notes are also given and even reconstruction account i have also prepared for better understanding and similarly there is another question here june 23 new syllabus question it is a new syllabus question and you can easily do this question in this question 500 lakhs and then profit or loss account balance is given first eventure i think this question got got typed twice this question got typed twice so we have already done this question correct so you simply do till up to this particular point so we have covered every facet of this particular chapter not only that but we have covered the past attempt question. Remember, Institute hasn't delivered any solution to the past papers. And we have given you complete solutions. Hope our efforts must, must have brought a bit of relief and a bit of what we call mileage to you. So, on such count, now we take leave of you with the promise, as always, to meet you in the next session with something new.